Umagang kay ganda sa lahat ng ating minamahal na guro, estudyante at mga coordinators ng iba't, sa iba't ibang pani ng ating bansa. Sa Luzon, sa Visayas at Mindanao. Welcome to 2020 Uwiska Children's Forest Program Second National Webinar Series. Ako nga pala si Sir Mark, guro mula sa San Agustin Elementary School, isa sa magsisilbing moderator sa ating webinar. Bago ang lahat, nais muna natin i-acknowledge ang ating mga participants mula sa iba't ibang probinsya. Magandang umaga po mula kay Ma'am Marilyn Apubo, yan, kay Ma'am Nora Sarmiento, sa ating mga participants ngayon sa YouTube. Pwede pong pakilagay ang ating kumpletong pangalan, eskwelahan, grade level, division, region, at pwede rin po kayong mag-shout out sa ating comment box. Yan po, binabati po namin si Ma'am Gladys Opel Bragado from Sausau Elementary School, Wahab, Dabao de Oro. Magandang umaga rin po, wala kay Ma'am Maydin Abubo. Yan, kasama rin natin dito. Good morning. Um, Jose Manuel F. Concepcion, Grade 6 of South South Elementary School, Wahab, Dabao City, D. Oro. Laika M. Abubo, Oliver Donair, and Ella M. Abubo. Good morning, everyone. From Anibogan National High School, Carmen, Dabao del Norte. Good morning po. Kasama rin natin ngayon si uh, R.G. Labanon. Yan. Joel M. Abubo and Nathaniel L. Siagan. Good morning everyone from Anibogon Elementary School, Carmen, Dabao, Del Norte. Good morning po sa ating lahat. Kasama rin po natin ang mga participants natin mula sa Lukbanan Elementary School, Kapalonga District, Camarines, Norte. Yan, sa pangunguna ni Ma'am Lady Lynn Francine Capira. Si Teacher Boyet, good morning po from San Agustin Elementary School, Quezon City. Good morning Sir Boyet. Yan, kasama rin po natin si uh, Joey Clete. Good morning po. I am a fourth year student from Kapalonga College Incorporated. Good morning po sa ating lahat. Yan. Yan, so ito po ang ating uh, second national webinar series. Handog sa atin ng Owiska Children's Forest Program. At ito po ay... Uh, kakalohokan ng mga estudyante mula sa iba't ibang panik ng ating bansa. Ayan po. So, meron na po tayong mga participants na kasama natin sa YouTube. Ayan po. So, muli po sa mga kakapasok pa lamang po sa ating live streaming, pwede po nating itype sa ating comment box ang ating pangalan. Ang pangalan ng ating school, grade level, division, region, at yung shoutout nyo po, pwede rin po kayong mag-shoutout. Yan, nakikita ko na si Casey Malap Malapre. Yan. From San Felipe Elementary School. So, good morning, Casey. Yan. Kasama na rin natin si, si Emor Villanueva. Good morning po Jasmine Kate Villarreal from San Felipe Elementary School. Dami nating participants mula sa San, San Felipe Elementary School, Camarines Norte. So good morning sa ating mga estudyante, mga teachers at mga participants natin sa Camarines Norte. Ayan. Muli po sa mga kakachun-in pa lamang po sa ating live streaming sa YouTube, 
Pwede po natin i-type ang ating pangalan, ang ating school, grade level, division, region, at yung shoutout na rin natin. Morning po, uh, Mark Samuel M. de la Trinidad from Dalagan Elementary School, Padre Burgos, Quezon. Good morning, Mark Samuel. At sa mga kaklase mo na nakatune in na ngayon sa ating MP Live. Ay sa ating YouTube pala. Ayan. Good morning din kay Angelico Gonzalez. Ayan, kasama na rin natin si Kuya Jeric Priba. Ayan, good morning everyone. Ang pinakamasipag na staff ng Uwiska, Philippines. Good morning Kuya Jeric. Ayan. Good morning po Nico James Maceda from Sagkahan National High School Grade 7, Tacloban City. So magandang umaga sa ating mga kababayan sa Tacloban City. Kasama na rin natin ngayong umaga si Siljon Gumapa. Good morning, sir. Yan, si Siljon, pwede natin ilagay kung saan school, anong grade level, anong division, at anong region tayo kamila. invite na speakers na talaga naman marami tayong mapupulot na aral. Ilan sa ating mga speakers ay mga suki na natin sa OWISCA. At mamaya makakasama natin si Dr. Roger, ang Education Program Supervisor mula sa Sagay City. Kasama rin natin mamaya si Professor Nelson M. Papolina mula sa UP Los Baños. Yan, so gusto ko po munang patiin si Ma'am Geraldine Isip, ang dati po namin kasamahan sa Science Department mula sa Cubao Elementary School. Good morning po, Ma'am G. In-invite po nila yung mga estudyante nila sa Cubao Elementary School. Maraming salamat, Ma'am G, sa pag-join sa ating webinar series ngayong umaga na to. Yan, mga kasamahan ko sa Quezon City, maraming maraming salamat sa pagsuporta sa webinar na ito. Good morning din po mula kay Jennifer Doma from Kapalonga College, uh, Camarines Norte. Good morning po, ma'am. Good morning po, Ralph Maceda from Sangkahan National High School. Good morning, uh, Ralph. Kasama na rin natin si Casey Malapre. Yan. Casey Nicole Nieva Malapre from San Felipe Elementary School, Basut, Camarines Norte. Yan. Kasama na rin natin si um, Ma'am Tessa. Yan. Good morning po sa lahat. Si Seal John Gumapak mula sa Basut, Ele uh, San Felipe Elementary School, Basut, Camarines Norte. Grade 5 daw siya. Yan. So, makakasama natin mamaya ang mga grade 5 to grade 10 pupils natin mula sa iba't ibang panik ng ating bansa. Yan, isa sa pinakamasipag na coordinator ng UWISCA Philippines, si Kuya Ronald. Good morning po, Kuya Ronald. Ganun din po si Ma'am Day Juebes. Yan, good morning po. I'm watching from Glocbanan Elementary School. Kapalonga District, Camarines Norte, Region 5. Ayan. So, mga kasama nating mga teachers. Ayan. Kasama ang kanilang mga estudyante. At sa 
Pinapadalain ko na rin po ito para patiin ang ating mga kasamahang teachers na nagtuturo sa Agham ng Happy Science Month. Yeah, dahil lang September, sineselebrate natin ang buwan ng Agham. Sige po, sa mga kakapasok labang po sa ating live streaming sa ating YouTube, maaari po natin itype ang ating pangalan, ang ating school, ang ating region. Kung ating mga estudyante naman ay magpo-comment, pakilagay ang grade level para ating babasahin sa ating acknowledgement. Kasama rin po natin si Mary Joy Sarmiento. Good morning po, sir. From Kapalonga College Incorporated, first year college po. Yan. So, ang dami nating mga estudyante. Good morning, Mary Joy. Kamusta naman ang mga signal natin sa Camarines Norte? Yan. Ang dami na nating mga participants sa Camarines Norte. Meron na rin po tayong participant mula sa Tacloban. Yan. Yan. Good morning, Dave Andre Trino from San Felipe Elementary School, Grade 6, Camarines Norte. Good morning, Andre. Yan. Ito, napakasipag din ito ni ating Catherine. So, lasito. Good morning po sa lahat. Erica Jane uh, Matunhay from Napuntoran, Dabao de Oro. First year of CS, ato, CBSC. Yan. Good morning po. Kasama na rin natin si Angelico Gonzalez. Good morning po sir from Kapalonga College Incorporated. Good morning po sa ating lahat. Maya-maya lang po ang ating mga participants mula sa Benguet hanggang uh, Mindanao ay makakasama na rin po natin sa ating uh, webinar series. Muli po sa mga kaka-tune in lamang po sa ating YouTube, pwede po natin itype ang ating pangalan, ang ating school, ang ating division, ang ating region, at ang ating shoutout. Kung gusto nyo batiin ng mga kapatid ninyo, mga kaklase ninyo, mga teachers ninyo, pwede natin gawin to. Kasama rin po pala natin sa ating screen ang pinakamasipag na director ng uh, Uwiska, Philippines. Walang iba kundi si Ma'am Mabet. Ma'am Maribet Reboton. Hello, Ma'am Mabet! Yan, mamabit. Ang dami na natin mga participants sa ating uh, YouTube. Yes. Good morning po, mamabit. Ayan, mamabit. Kasama rin na po natin uh, si Angelico Gonzalez. Good morning po, sir, from Kapalonga College. Si Maribic Loserio. Maribic Loserio from Kapalonga College. Ayan. Good morning po, LMAC Escapio from Paliri Elementary School, Grade 6 daw siya. Good morning, Ella May. Yan, kasama na rin po natin si Ma'am Karen Mandagosa. Good morning po from Kapalonga College. Shoutout po kay Ma'am Bibien. Yan, maraming maraming salamat Ma'am Bibien sa ating mga participants mula sa Kapalonga College. Shoutout po kay Ma'am Bibien. Yan, maraming maraming salamat Ma'am Bibien sa ating mga participants mula sa Huwag po nilang kalimutan mag-subscribe sa ating YouTube channel ng Wisco Philippines Manila Office. So please subscribe. Exactly, Ma'am Mabit. Yan. So sa ating mga kasamahan, mga estudyante na nakatune in na sa ating YouTube, Huwag po natin kakalimutan na i-click ang subscribe button at huwag kakalimutan din i-click ang notification bell ng ating uh, YouTube channel, ang Uwiska Philippines. Yan. 
kung saan natin nasusubaybayan ang ating webinar ngayong umaga na to. Good morning po kay Rika May Pasyon. Yan. So, lagay natin. Pwede natin ilagay kung anong grade level tayo at anong school tayo kabilang. Yan. Good morning po, Sir Mark and Ma'am Mabit. Good morning, Ma'am Datu. Ah, kasamahan po namin na Master Teacher mula sa San Agustin Elementary School. Good morning po. Very supportive ang ating mga kasamahan sa San Agustin Elementary School. Kasama ang kanilang mga estudyante, ang kanilang advisory class. So, good morning po sa ating lahat. Ngayong umaga na to ay marami tayong matutunan mula sa ating mga speakers. At meron po tayong apat na episodes na matutunghayan ngayong maghapon na ito. So, tune in lang po tayo. At mamaya meron din tayong mga break sessions po. Muli po sa mga kaka-tune in lang po sa ating YouTube Pwede natin ilagay ang ating pangalan I-type sa ating comment box Ang ating pangalan, ang ating school, ang ating grade level Ang division at region na ating pinabibilang Good morning, Rika May Pasyon Ma'am and Sir, from Kapalongga College. Kapalongga College, first year. Ayan, first year siya mula sa Kapalongga College. Good morning, Rick kami, Pasyon. Okay, so, yes, okay. So, Sir Mark, uh, let me acknowledge the, the presence of our resource person this morning. At ito na rin po siya. So, wow, nandiyan na pala. Yan. Good morning, Sir Roger. Ayan ang ating speak first speaker. So, basahin ko din ito, Ma'am Mabit. Pa-shout out, pa out po sa aming mahal na school president ng Kapalongga College, Lolo, Mr. Arturo Q. Retiro. Good morning po, and Ma'am Vivian Laborte. And the rest of and the rest of the staff o yung pako thank you po yan so yes, sir. salamat sir Joey good morning po and mga yes. and the rest of and the rest of the staff o yung pako thank you Philippines All right sa ating mga estudyante na naka-tune in na sa ating YouTube. Okay, merong inihanda ang ating uh, Uwiska office na three questions. At alam ko naman, napaka-generous ng Uwiska office at magbibigay tayo ng mga papremyo sa lahat ng mga naka-tune in ngayon sa ating YouTube live streaming. So, paunahan tayo mga bata sa pagsagot. Ha? Ready na ba kayo? Ayan, ready na sila mamabit. So, ipa-flash na natin ang ating unang tanong. Sa mga magsasagot po, pakilagay po natin ang ating uh, pangalan at cellphone number. Ayan, sige. Una nating tanong ay... Sige, paunahan tayo magsagot ha, ng letter. When did Owiska CFP started in the Philippines? Ulitin ko. When did Uwiska CFP started in the Philippines? Letter A, 1991. Letter B, 1995. Letter C, 1999. And letter D, 2004. Sige nga po, tignan natin ang ating mga participants. Pakitype ang sagot sa ating comment box. Yan. Very good ang ating mga participants, mga estudyante natin at mga teachers natin. Nag-research sila sa ating uh, mga background ng OVIS kasi FP, Ma'am Mabe. Yes. So, yung sabihin po, sila po ang interesado sa yes, ating po. mga gawain. So, Sir so, Mark, kumpisa na po. Ma'am Mabe, 
Ah, yes po. So, ang ating first question, ano po ang sagot, Ma'am Mabe? Okay, so nandito po, naka-flash. That is letter A, 1991. Oh, 1991, nagsimula ang CFP sa ating bansa. Thank you, Ma'am Mabe. Salamat po. Flash na natin ang next question po. Yan. In what country did Uwiska CFP started? Letter A, Japan. Letter B, Africa. C, Korea. And letter D, Philippines. Sige nga, tingnan natin ang ating mga participants. Yes, I'm sure, Sir Mark. Alam nila yan. Yes, Ma'am Mabit. Nakikita ko na tama yung mga uh, participants natin, Ma'am, sa paglagay ng tamang sagot. Yung pangalan nila at cellphone number nila. Yes, opo. Okay. Kailangan yeah. po nakasulat ang cellphone number. Otherwise, hindi po natin sila makokonta. In yes, case, po. sila po ang nanalo. Tama po. Yan. And the correct answer is... Yes, letter B. Yan. proud tayo na ang Uwis ka CF, ang CFP pala ay nag-originate sa ating pansa. Yan. Yes, sir. Last question, Ma'am Mabit. Okay. In 2021, CFP Philippines is celebrating its blank anniversary. Ulitin ko, in 2021, CFP Philippines is celebrating its blank anniversary. Letter A, 24th. B, 30th. C, 40th. Letter D, 41st. Alright, nakikita ko na ang mga sagot nila sa comment box natin, Ma'am Mabit. Okay. So, wala po po dito sa, yan, pumapasok po ang kanilang mga kasagutan. Yan. And the correct answer is letter Letter B, 30th. Letter B, 30th. So, isang taon na lang, Ma'am Mabit. Next year na po yung 30th oh, anniversary oh, oh. na ng Uwiska, ng CFP mo, Philippines. Ang taon na tayo dito sa Pilipinas, ang ating pong Children's Forest Program. Yes po, tatlong uh, dekada na. Yes, tatlong dekada. At sana po ay madagdagan pa ito ng maraming dekada sa tulong po ng ating mga kabataan na nandito ngayon na magpapatuloy ng ating mga gawain. Yes, tama ka dyan, Ma'am Mabit. Kasama rin ang ating mga teachers na katuwang yes. natin Opo. sa pag-conduct po ng ating mga projects sa Uwiska CFP. Yes, Yan, Ma'am Mabit. Ma'am Ma Mabit, uh, ipa-flash ko lang po yung ating screen, Kuya JM. Yan. So, tingnan natin kung gaano kahanda ang ating mga participants ngayong umaga na to. Okay. So, kailangan ko ng inyong mga kasagutan sa ating comment box. Nakikita na po ba, Ma'am Mabit, yung aking po screen? Wala pa po, sir. Ha, ito na Ayan. po. Okay po. So, pag-temperature check muna tayo sa ating mga estudyante at ating mga guro na kasama ngayong umaga na ito. Okay. So, magsasagot lang tayo ng letter A, letter B, or letter C sa ating comment box. Okay. Nag-flash na po ba? Sir, wala pa po yung tanong. Apo, ah, ito po. Yan po. Okay po. Sige, tingnan natin ang ating mga participants kung Ano ang mood and energy nila ngayong umaga na ito? Handa ka na ba sa ating webinar? Kung sakto lang, pakitaip ang letter A. Kung yes naman ang iyong sagot, pakitaip ang letter B. At kung yes na yes, pakitaip ang letter C. Yan, marami na kami nakikita sa ating comment box. At mostly ang na nakikita natin ay yes na yes, ready na ready na po sila mamabit sa ating yes, webinar. Yes, Yan, nakakatawa oh, naman, nakaka-excite naman po. Yan. 
mga pinakaabangan natin sa araw po magkakasama po tayo. Yes po. At next naman po, ano ang gamit mong device? Kung ang gamit mo ngayon ay laptop, pakitay pa yung letter A. Kung gamit mo naman ay CP, pakitay pang letter B. At kung parehas mong gamit ang laptop at CP, pakitay pang letter C. Yan, nakikita ko na ang inyong mga sagot. At mostly sa ating mga participants mamabit ay gumagamit ng cellphone. At ilan ay laptop. At ang iba ay parehas. Yan. And last, kumusta ka today? Kung ayos naman, pakitay pang letter A. Kung hopeful, pakitay pang letter B. At kung excited ka sa ating webinar ngayong umaga, pakitay pang letter C. Yan, mamabit, nakikita ko ang kanilang mga kasagutan. Marami ako nakikita ang letter, letter B and letter C. Letter. So, ibig Yan. sabihin po ay... Excited na sila, mamabit. Excited po po. Yan. So, thank you po. Once again, good morning and welcome to our 2020 OISCA Children's Forest Program Second National Webinar Series with the theme, Nurturing Good Moral Values Among the Children, an Approach to New Norman. To, formal, to formally start our program, let us all stand for a prayer to be led by Andrea Bat Beatriz Alejandro, a grade 6 pupil from San Agustin Elementary School, and to be followed by the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we offer you everything we do today. This webinar, our prayers, our times with Uwiska family and friends, our difficulties, problems, distress, this COVID-19 pandemic which we shall try to bear with patience. Join these, our gifts, to the unique offering with Jesus Christ, your Son. We pray by the Holy Spirit and the United to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Our life, our work, may be service to you and to your children and obtain for us the wisdom to value and respect God's creation, the environment and ecology. Amen.
Thank you, Andrea. And pwede na po tayong makaupo. Nais ko po sa inyong ipakilala ang makakasama natin ngayong maghapon na ito, ang pinakamasipag na direktor ng Uwiska, Manila, Ma'am Maribeth Reboto. Let's give her a virtual clap. Yan, upag ipakilala ang magbibigay ng opening remarks. Ipapakilala ito ni Ma'am Mabe. Okay, so, so Mark, so to give us an opening remarks, may I call on Mr. Ishibashi Yokihiro. Let's give him a virtual clap. Okay, that's all. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning to all of you. Ohayo gozaimasu. I am... Uh, uh, resident representative of OISCA to the Philippines, uh, Ishibashi, Yokihiro Ishibashi. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, being with us uh, for this event uh, today. I'm very happy to be with you. One thing I want, just I want to say at the beginning is the importance of the tree planting. OISCA started uh, this program, Children's Forest Program, last 1991. And that is true. And one thing I want to add is this idea is brought from Japan by myself. But truly, Ms. Mabet told you that uh, implementing of the project was started in the Philippines, in the Philippines. And now uh, spreading to 35 countries, more than 5,000 schools are participating in this project. And it is very nice to have this project for the good environment of, the, uh, of our Mother Earth. That is also true. But the story is not the end. This is just the beginning. If you feel success of this event, please plant trees, even one tree. Concept of the this project is tree planting by the children, even one tree. One children, one tree. To plant. That's the beginning of the concept. So after after this uh, event, please go out and let us plant trees. Everything to uh, solve the global warming and some other disasters. One of it is tree planting. And one of the best way for tree planting is children's forest program. Please believe it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ishibashi, for gracing our today's webinar. And now, to share with us the overview and objectives of this webinar, the woman behind this national webinar series, the indefatigable, hardworking, and dynamic director of OISCA Manila, Mrs. Maribet N. Rebota.
na description para po sa iyong ate. Okay, so good morning again, once again. So for this year, we cannot hold our annual gathering to our national seminar workshop because of the pandemic. Many sectors of our society are struggling to make ends meet. Months after, many are still lost about how to move together or live with the pandemic. Last September 1 to 4, Wisco Philippines conducted its first webinar series entitled Stressing Communities Amidst Pandemics Options for Health and Environment, which ended successfully. Thanks to our educators, resource speakers, and the WISCA coordinators. WISCA has been supporting our communities through our own ways by utilizing different plat platforms of social media for educational purposes and relief distribution to those who are in need. For this year, given our situation and experiences with the pandemic, would like to aid the larger part of our nation through the digital world. This year's second webinar series will focus on nurturing good moral values, especially on our current situation, also called the new normal. These persons will share their specialties and experiences as well as tips for adapting better to a new normal. And we have eight objectives uh, to achieve. So one, to better explain to children what our current situation is. To connect participants with other participants who may be experiencing similar struggles in the new normal. To assist participants to adapt to this new learning environment to nurture good moral values, to encourage the participants to demonstrate their values despite our current situation, to understand the importance of environmental conservation, to develop human well-being while preserving the environment, and to appreciate the art and science of backyard gardening. So Wiska hopes that we can achieve the objectives of our webinar series. Thank you, Mama Beth. At ngayon naman po ay ipakikilala po natin ang ating kauna-unahang speaker this morning. Our first resource speaker this morning is an education program supervisor at DepEd Sagret City. He was also a DepEd writer for senior high school primal supplementary learning materials. At present, he is the focal person of DepEd Sagay City television-based instruction. A co-founder, Amazing Girls of the World, a non-profit organization promoting the welfare and support for young women and girls around the world. And when it comes to Uwiska family, he was the 2014 Uwiska CFP Goodwill Ambassador of the Philippines to Japan. And today, he will be sharing with us his expert's opinion entitled, You and Time, Creating Meaningful Learning at Home. Today, we are pleased to welcome Dr. Rachar, our speaker from Negros Occidental, who always makes himself available for Uwiska. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Dr. Roger Sarzuelo Rochar. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to all the students. I know that this, um, this um, training is intended for students because last time, we had a training intended for the CFP coordinators. Um, and today, uh, we will be doing this for the students. We usually the Children's Forest Program every year um, outdoors. Okay, last, if you remember, those who participated, we've been to Nueva um, Vizcaya many, many times already. And um, 
I've always had as one of the facilitators in the training. Although um, I must admit that this is my first time to really handle a topic for children because usually I just facilitated the trainings and then one time I was told that the only thing that I taught children was to <laughs> do the cheering. <laughs> so this time I, 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 I hope that I can give something that the children would always um, we have a lot of challenges so i hope that the children who are listening right now because we have actually intended this training for um children or students uh, from grades five to grade 10 and then i was surprised earlier that i saw um that there's already somebody who's in college is participating but i'm sure that even if um you're already in college you still be you will still be able to make use of what i will be discussing to you because this is very um this is very essential especially for students who would be doing distance learning um in um, in the upcoming okay Okay, I'm sorry. Um, it seems that my internet is not um, very stable because a lot of people are using the internet. Right now, um, we are also doing another training at the other room, so I requested if I can be transferred here um, so that I would not have interruption because last time I was interrupted by people moving around um, during the training so i requested for a uh, <clears throat> for a more um peaceful peaceful um room so that's why i'm here in the office of the superintendent the lobby of the office of the superintendent so um the reason why i'm i um i'm invited here is to speak about one of the very important uh, skills that um, people should learn, and not only students, I think generally all of us should learn about this, um, should master this skill because um, this would bring us, um, to, bring us uh, to greater heights if we are able to master this. And more importantly, this is going to um, be very relevant in the new normal, especially that we will be um, doing a lot of self-learning. So uh, we would not have face-to-face -face classes um, this year because of the absence of the vaccine. So I would not um, waste time because I'm only given one hour to do this. So um, let me share to you my presentation. So I hope that you can see my um, presentation. So this is our first day of our webinar for the National Children's Stories Program. This is actually our second national webinar series because our first was for um, the CFP coordinators. Our focus um, for this webinar is on nurturing good moral values or good values among uh, children, which is going to be an approach to the new normal um, I have discussed this with uh, Ms. Mabeth, and um, we have um, agreed that this is going to be perfect for um, the setup that we're going to have. Okay. Um, so if you look at the screen, you can see that we have our... Um, Education Secretary Norbert Nutolis Briones, who said in, uh, in June that um, 
education kind of way. So there's been a lot of challenges when it comes to education, particularly the opening of classes, because um, a lot of there's a group who's pushing for an academic freeze. And um, there's also another group pushing for the postponement of the entire school year. Or there's another group saying that the school year should open in January. So um, according to our deputy secretary, education cannot wait. And then she's right because um, we also have um, parents, we also have students who have already established goals um, for, for academic um, development. So uh, they cannot also wait, okay? So that's why um, based on the recommendation of the, the Congress, and um, which is also um, vouched by our president. So our secretary, the normal police Briones, has finally uh, uh, agreed to open the opening of the school year on October 3rd. So because of that, um, since um, it's also ordered by our um, President, uh, President uh, Rodrigo Roa Duterte, that um, we cannot have face-to-face -face classes um, unless a vaccine is available. So I have, uh, I, you can see that in the two pictures, um, we have the new, the normal and the new normal. When we, you, when you look at the first picture, um, there's, there's an actual interaction between a student and a teacher inside a classroom. While in our new normal, um, there's there's already um, an interaction between, um, in this particular case, between the television and um, the student, because um, the students you cannot go to school um, to do face-to-face -face classes. So this is this is the this is the difference and. I think that this is the, the challenging um, part, particularly on your part as a student. And um, this is really going to test how you uh, manage yourself, manage your um, time and the values that you believe in. Because if you are not wise enough, then you might get lost in the process. So remember, in the new normal, you will get very uh, limited um, intervention um, coming from your teachers. You would have to get that support from your parents. But most of the time, you would be doing things on your own. So if you have not prepared yourself for this, so this topic is really for you. This is the challenge. If you remember in the face-to-face, -face, um, classes are direct, okay? So you can really see the teacher um, in front of you. The classes are direct, synchronous, verbal, and typically one-to-many, okay? Students can ask questions and receive answers instantly. Teachers, on the other hand, can evaluate or simply send students' level of understanding instantly so the teacher in the face-to-face -face setup controls the student turn taking and discussions so that's that's what we've been used to do in the previous years now comes this um, pandemic situation and everyone should be on a distance learning modality so when we say distance learning modality we have two types we have the modular distance learning modality where you would be um, taught, you would be self-learning using your self-learning modules or your SLMs. Or you also have your online distance learning where you would be um, participating in lessons via online, just like what we're doing now. It's like attending a series of webinars every day. Okay, so. In distance learning, the teacher and students usually do not see each other because we also have very limited screen time. Okay, especially in online uh, lesson, you only get to see your teacher 
like an R and then the rest of the time you would be um, doing lessons on your own. The interaction is limited in both asynchronous and synchronous discussions, like in the case of online, and that can be hard to follow. I remembered one time when I also participated in distance learning back in 2005, when I was taking my, um, when I was taking up my master's degree, because my master, uh, it, it was on distance learning modality. And sometimes it's very difficult. It's very difficult to, to cope especially with the typing, if you're very slow with typing, so you will get lost in the discussion. So um, in, 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 in asynchronous discussions, there is delay in getting feedback from classmates or teachers. And typically in distance learning, you are studying alone. So this the challenge, okay? How do we shift from face-to-face -to, -face to distance learning and what um, adoptive characteristics are we going to have in order to survive in the distance um, learning modality. Okay, which brings us to the first episode for um, this year's webinar, and we titled it You and Time. Okay, so it's always between you and time. It's that you versus time. You and time, you need to say, you have to go hand in hand with time, okay? Uh, creating meaningful learning at home. How do you maximize time while you're learning at home? So if um, you look at the title alone, so what comes into mind? So basically, our episode would be about how you can manage your time, okay? There's even a book that I've read. The, the title is um, The Timekeeper, um, written by Mitch Album. And then the character that said, who invented this time? Because he really hated um, time. But actually, um, I believe that um, time and the person should go in and end. And um, since time cannot adjust for a person, then the person must adjust his ways. Okay, what are our objectives for this first episode? Our first objective is um, determine the importance of time and explain, the second would be explain the essence and importance of time management in distance learning and provide ways on how to manage time as a distance learner, and then list down values related to time management. Why did we put on um, the letter D here? Because, again, as I said on the first part during the introduction, that our focus here in this webinar is to nurture positive values among you, particularly values related to how you manage your, your time. Okay, so these are our objectives for this episode. So I hope that um, after this episode, you would be able to realize how you actually manage your time and then whether you have positively uh, make use of the time um, given to you and how you can apply this skill in uh, distance learning. And it is also our hope that since uh, we cannot have everyone participate in this webinar, I hope that you would also share this, um, the lessons that you will gain from this webinar, or particularly in this episode, to your friends, or to, to your family members, or even to your brothers and sisters, so that they would also be able to make use of their time wisely. Okay. To begin, it says that time doesn't wait for anyone which is actually very true, okay? Time would just move, okay? So since time cannot, time doesn't wait for anyone, if you don't use time, it is not used wisely, okay? Well, if you don't use time, or if you don't use time wisely, it flows away 
and you will not be able to do things appropriately as planned. So um, that's that's um, that's one of the most important things um, to remember. Okay, so you need to use your time wisely. I have highlighted the word wisely because this is going to be one of our values for um, time management, the, to make um, use of time wisely. Okay, so inefficient use of time will delay goals, interrupt study schedule, leave you behind in terms of lessons, and if you're already behind and you are already cramming, then it will make you highly stressed. Right? So even if you're given multiple tasks at one time, if you're able to manage your time wisely, then you would be able, you would not um, get that much stress. So, of course, stress is natural, highly stressed in situations. Okay, let me continue. So let us define what is time management. Okay, time management for you, for students, and even for everyone else, no? And for adults, even for professionals. It is about being purposeful. So you have to know what is your purpose, being purposeful with your day. Then ask yourself, what am I going to do today? What purposeful activity am I going to do today? So you have to exist with a purpose each day. So let, I, I'm sure that you're familiar with a purpose-driven life. There's always purpose. It's about taking control of what time you do have and optimizing it for productivity, focus, and above all, balance. Okay, so you have to be. So if you look at the three key words: purposeful, optimized to time management. Okay, sometimes we say that we're busy, but at the end of the day, if you look at how productive we have become, we see very little productivity. It's because um, we are not able to. Then, of course, um, this should always be focused. So that's why later on I will give you tips on how to make sure that um, your time is utilized well and you have focus. Okay, so, and of course, there should be balance. When we say balance, it's not just like, for instance, in your case, as students, it's not just study, study, study. You should also have, you should also give time for yourself. You have to give time to your family. You have to give time for, um, to, to, to pray and then to praise. Okay, so it, it's always about um, striking the balance. And balance can only be achieved if you're able to, find, to manage your time properly. Okay, so... Why is it that time management is important? What is the essence of time management? Learning time management is not an easy task. For sure it's not. In fact, I'm still struggling with time management up to now. Um, sometimes I couldn't sleep very well because I've been thinking about a lot of things that I still need to do. So that's why I would have a very long checklist for the things that I would do because as much as possible, I want to accomplish all of those things on the list. So it is not an easy task. You need to be strongly devoted. Again, our key word here would be devoted to spare time for your studies. And sometimes it's very tempting, especially when you are studying at home or you're learning at home, it's very easy to say that, ah, oh, I will just open my books, I will just open Open a module. I would just um feel tired. So that's that's not that's not a good excuse. 
Oops. You can only. Yan, Mama Beth, parang nagkaroon ng uh, technical uh, problem lang tayo sa internet connection. So while waiting for Dr. Roger, uh, hayaan po muna natin panuorin ang uh, hinandang video presentation ng ating Manila. Kuya JM, take it away.
All right, habang hinihintay po natin uh, si Dr. Roger, so hayaan niyo po muna na i-acknowledge natin ang ating mga participants mula sa iba't ibang panig ng ating bansa. So nandito na po si Ma'am Bibien mula sa Kapalongga sa uh, Kapalongga College Incorporated. Kasama rin po natin si uh, Imron Nandut. Good morning, Norma Tundan from Palawan. Ah, si Ate Norma. Good morning, watching from San Agustin Elementary School, Quezon City, John Paul Scruder. Sir Estudyante ko po ito. Shout out kay John Paul. Ellen Joy Perlas and Chanel Lorraine Perlas po from San Felipe Elementary School. Good morning, Ellen. Si Rubilin Siagan. Hello po everyone watching from Anibogan Elementary School. Good morning po. Good morning. Maria Ana Minyosa, third year college student from Kapalongga College. Good morning, Ana. Yan kasama rin po natin si Miel Andes. Good morning po. A uh, grade 6 student from Yesmo Orena Elementary School. Kasama rin po natin ang ilang mga estudyante mula sa Cubao Elementary School, Delphine Heraldes Elementary School, at kasama rin po natin ang mga estudyante mula sa San Agustin at San Bartolome Elementary School. So, good morning po sa ating lahat. Kasama rin natin si Ma'am Ellen Joy Perlas, Princess JC, yan, watching from Kabidyanan Elementary School. Pa-shoutout po from Kabidyanan Elementary School, Dabao de Oro. Yan. So, ito naman po, panuri natin ang deforest, uh, reforestation project natin sa Nueva Vizcaya. So, panuri po natin. Yan, so nakita po natin yung ilang mga video presentation po na hinanda sa atin ng Uwiska, Manila. So kung nakita ninyo po yung pag-ubatan, personally, personally po nakarating po ako dyan sa 
Aritao sa Nueva Vizcaya mula po sa mga lecturer po namin sa mga uh, inatinan po namin na seminar at simul Yan. Tunghayan po natin yung ilang mga uh, audio visual presentation po na hinanda ng WISCA uh, office. Sir JM? So, na tunghayan po natin ang uh, video presentation ng UWIS office. So, kasama na po muli natin ang ating speaker, si Dr. Roger. Dr. Roger? Okay. Um, sorry for the interruption. I wasn't aware that I um, got disconnected. So, hopefully, I would not get disconnected this time. So like what I've said, um, why is time management, um, what is time management? Time management 
for students and for everyone else. It's about being purposeful with your day. It's about taking control of what time you do, what you do have and optimizing it for productivity, focus, and above all, on balance. Okay, so learning time management is not an easy task. You need to be strongly devoted to spare time for studies and one cannot learn time management in one go I and mean, then you have to be you must be in regular practice so as to make it a habit so um, in order to ace time management you should be determined first and foremost um persistent and highly motivated so there are three key words there um which are very important um determined persistent and highly uh, motivated. So next. Okay, so in that particular case, you should plan your schedule well, and um, you should be determined to effectively follow the planned schedule so that the time is um, utilized appropriately. So whatever you put in the plan, you should be able to uh, utilize um, appropriately. So in the new normal, you would be given a learning plan um, by your teachers. So you have to strictly follow this learning plan so that you would still be able to, um, you should be able to perform uh, the task given to you. Next. As a student, um, you must uh, keep yourself motivated to achieve time management uh, goals and the accomplishment of various goals of time management itself acts as the main source of motivation. You will feel good about yourself if you are able to accomplish what um, goals you have set um, for yourself. Like for example, if you are able to finish a task um, given, even if you're able to finish a reading a book, you will feel good about yourself. It means that you've been able to um, manage your time uh, properly. You can actually um, try making a checklist and um, of the things that you would like to do. And you will find out that if you're able to do those things on the checklist, that you will feel good about yourself. Next, please. So why is time management important in distance learning? Because you have to study independently. So that is the, that is the challenge. You, know? you are not in the classroom to study with other um, learners, with your classmates. So you would be studying independently. So because of this, distance learning may be more challenging than traditional classes. So in that case, you must have dedication, self-motivation, good study skills, and first-rate time management skills. So there are four um, values that you should have within yourself. That is dedication, self-motivation, good study skills, and first-rate time management skills. If you're able to have all of this, then you're able to succeed. Next, please. Next, please. Okay, so distance learning is all about self-study. And since you have the flexibility to study anytime and at any place, you can take control of your studies. What you have to do is to organize your daily tasks and prioritize learning. So uh, that's the that's the uh, good side of distance learning. Next. How can you manage time as a distance learner? First, you have to look into your environment and find a time and a place when you can study without distractions. This is um, this is very important. No? 
is sometimes when you're studying at home, then there is a likely possibility no? that you would have distractions. Your brothers or your sisters would be running around, so you will not be able to study well. So you have to find a place in at home where you can study without any distractions. Because it is worthless to study at ours when there are lots of distractions. As you gain nothing in terms of knowledge. Next. So, plan your lessons each day and study accordingly. So, if your teacher has given you the schedule or the learning plan, then you have to be able to follow it religiously so that you don't waste time. Allocate time for each module to ensure that you learn effectively while managing time. Next. Okay. So here are a few tips that I would like to um, share to you um, on how to master time management. There are actually 10. So I hope that you will remember, remember all of these things. First, um, use a daily schedule template to plan your day. Your teacher will be providing you this. But actually, you can also do this on um, the, the schedule template. Um, I'm sure that some of you have been doing this already. It means that it's like a calendar, actually. Um, you put, it's like a planner or a calendar that, where you have like the days of the week. And then for each day of the week, for each column, you have the time slots. And then you have to list down the things that you would do on those time slots. Others would call this as time blocking. So you're able to um, block uh, the time for your activities. So have a daily schedule template in place will help you stay organized, focused on what matters most, and even help you overcome procrastination. Procrast procrastination is when you spend more time on not so very important things than on important things. Like you spend more time with social media rather than st studying your lessons. That is a form of procrastination. Okay, next. Second tip, you have to understand how you're currently spending your time and where you're losing it. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you understand how am I using my time right now? How am I spending my time right now? Without a clear understanding of where your time goes each day, it's impossible to build better time management strategies and stay focused. So sometimes um, we tend to cram, we tend to cram, especially on examinations, because we don't know, we, we, we forgot how we spend our time. So you have to be able to understand clearly how you use your time each day. Next. Okay, the third is set proper goals to measure your progress. So make your goals realistic. No, do not put goals that are too high or do not put goals that are too easy. Okay, just the minimum goals um, that you can realistically do for yourself. Goals are a great way to get motivated to do schoolwork and not just the end result. It means focusing on consistent progress and building better habits. Okay? So, next. Break large projects into small actionable tasks. So this is related to well, number three. So sometimes we are not able to perform um, a task, especially if it's very complicated, if it's bar big, because we think that it's impossible or it, it's very difficult to do. So if that's the case, then you have to break 
um, this task into small, okay? Small tasks, because when you do um, small tasks, then you, you would be able to realize that you've actually accomplished something big, okay? So time management expert, uh, Laura Vanderkam says, the best thing you can do is to start very small, decide what's the smallest, most doable step, doable, do, doable. Next step is on a big project and then list out all the next steps along with a deadline for each. So if you're able to um, chunk it into, into, into small steps, then for all you know, you have already accomplished the bigger goal, okay? Then number five, we have number five. Can we go back to number five, please? Uh, yes, yeah. Beware the planning fallacy, okay? Sometimes we are also very tied, you know, we are, we are tied or we are in prison to our plans that we no longer consider what we can personally do, what we are capable of doing. So if this is the case, you have to work a buffer into your schedule. When we say buffer, you have to put um, an allotment, a time allotment okay into your schedule based on your familiarity with the task there are tasks that are easy to do and that are tasks which are difficult to do so for easy tasks you have to give it a little time and for bigger tasks you have to double um your time do not put or do not give time equally the same to all the task you have to analyze is this task easy then you have to give it a shorter time is this task familiar to me can i do this then you have to give it um a little more, a little time compared to the things that are new and you would be doing for the first time that you have to give it a little more time so it's not necessarily that when you put what you put on your plan you have to um strictly follow just um make sure to um give it a buffer it's just like um subject you no know? there are so many subjects that will be given to you and there are already subjects which are easy for you so for subjects which are easy for you then you can give it uh, just a little time but for subjects that are new to you and maybe difficult to you as well then you, i think you have to give it more time okay so that's what we call um time buffering next okay so you have to also consider your body's natural energy you no know? okay because we, our our body has a natural high and a natural low you know? so you should do your most important work when you have the most energy this means scheduling writing or more intense projects during energy highs, no? So if your energy is very high, then you do the difficult task. If your energy, low, if your energy is low, then you, you do um, the other more positive activities, okay? So you have to listen to um, your body. Okay, next. Okay, you need to also take a break. Take a break at the right time. Right? So according to um, sleep researcher Nathaniel Kleedman, our minds naturally crave breaks after every 90 minutes of intense work. No? So that's why I told Ate uh, Mabit uh, that um, I told Ate Mabit uh, Miss Mabet, that um, we have to make the topics shorter because um, your screen time is shorter 
um, than anyone else. So every 90 minutes of intense work, or like for example, in a webinar, for instance, then you have to give um, your mind a chance to um, take a break. Even if you don't keep a timer going, your body will tell you when you need a break by becoming hungry, sleepy, fidgeting, or lo losing focus. So now, if you're losing full focus, then you would not be very productive. Next. Okay, number eight. We have beat procrastination with the five-minute rule. Okay, this is suggested by Instagram founder Kevin Sistrom. Okay, he calls it the, the five-minute rule. The five-minute rule says that you have to tell yourself you're only going to do the task for five minutes. Okay, what is important is that you just get started. You tell yourself, I will just give this five minutes. And then, because once you put, um, you, you start using your five minutes, then uh, in most cases, uh, that would be enough to get you motivated. You will, you, you will never know that you're not just actually working on your modules or your lessons for five minutes, but you're already enjoying it and you're already staying on it longer. So all it takes is for you to be in it for five minutes. So that's the five minute rule to beat procrastination. Like for example, I will not touch my cell phone for five minutes. Okay, so you, oh, you would be able to get yourself away from the destruction of the cell phone if you follow that. Next. Okay. Optimize your study time for flow. Okay. Um, here are the things that you can do. Remove distractions. Okay. Turn off your phone. No, or turn off the data on your phone so that you will not get notifications for your Facebook or for your Instagram or for your Twitter. Move destruction. Start small and set a timer, even five minutes of destruction pre work time because it is beneficial. And then, of course, you have to take a break in between each session. Next. The number 10, we have build better habits and routines for long-term success. It says, we are what we repeatedly do. Okay? The best time management strategy for students and everyone else is simply to develop habits and routines that promote the kind of actions you want to do more of. So if you're able to do a particular routine for at least eight days straight, then you would be able to develop that as a habit. So later on in the next session that I will be giving you, then I will be introducing some the habits that make highly effective, highly productive um, kids. Like. And then next, so in summary, okay, time doesn't wait for anyone. Always remember, inefficient use of time will delay your goals. Time management is about being purposeful with your day. Time management must be a regular practice so as to make it a habit. And you should be determined, persistent, and highly motivated. And in distance learning, you must have dedication, self-motivation, good study skills, and first-rate time management in order to succeed. And of course, the last part of today's um, episode 
is on the ways on how to master time management. I hope that you have remembered all of those. Okay, next. So before I end, I would like to leave you with this saying, quotation from Michael Aljuler. He says, the bad news is time flies. The good news is you're the pilot. So you have to, I hope that you would be able to put that in mind. So you can have the power to control your time. Okay, let time work on your favor and not against. So next, our sources for this presentation are the following. So I think that ends my one hour um, for today. So thank you very much. If ever you have questions, um, please feel free to ask. I will be. I will try to answer them if that I can. So dagan salamat. Thank you very much to everyone. With that, thank you, Sir Roger, for sharing your knowledge and expertise to our dear, dear learners. Good job, Sir Roger. Yan. So, tutulungan po tayo ni Kuya JM na i-flash yung ilang mga katanungan ng ating mga participants ngayong umaga na. So, dear participants, yung po mga comments po ninyo, pakitisend po kung may katanungan po sa ating magaling na resource speaker, si Sir Roder, my kuya ever. Tama. Kung may mga katanungan tayo, mga bata, ating mga participants, pwede po natin i-type sa ating comment box. Napaka-timely ng topic na diniscuss ni Sir Roger, creating meaningful learning at hope. Lalong-lalo na po dahil we are embracing the new normal kung saan karamihan ng ating mga estudyante ay nag-aaral sa kanilang mga tahanan. Paano natin mamamaximize yung oras na yan sa kanilang pag-aaral? So meron na po ba tayong mga tanong mula sa ating mga participants? I think Kuya JM and Ma'am Mabit, wala yatang mga tanong at Clear na clear na na-discuss ni Dr. Roger ang ating episode 1. Siyempre, si Dr. Roger yan. Outstanding. Excellent. One of our excellent first in the world and in-depth and of course, Sir Roger. Ayan po. The pride of Sagay City. Negros Occidental. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for Mark. Thank you, Ms. Mabit. Thank you so much. With okay. my other um, topic, I just have to fix um, some of the slides because I got I lost the presentation. I didn't know what happened to the computer, so I have to rearrange the slides. Yes, and uh, preparation for the for preparation for the ten thirty, right? Ten thirty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Roger. Ten thirty to eleven thirty. So, if you have questions in mind, or like for example, if you have a request, like, baka kasi ganito eh kasi um um hindi ako nag baka kasi gusto ng iba na magtagalog o kasi ang teacher na teacher yung dating ginito yung mga duro o magtish yung talaga English talaga yung medium of instruction so. Um, yeah, sana kung if, if, if there are, I don't know, if there, if there are requests, like for example, Sir Roger, bakit naman pwedeng i-ano, i-tablish, or lagyan ng Tagalog, lalong-lalo na yung explanation. So, pwede naman yan. Pwede kapag kapag Tagalog, hirap din kasi akong 
Magtagalog, remember I'm from the Visayas. Hindi naman kasi ako pwede mag-Visaya. So anyway, you still have um, the 10.30 schedule for your questions. If ever you have questions for time management, ito lang ang gusto kong ipaalala sa nung isudyante, ngayon ang perfect time na masubukan yung sarili ninyo kung papaano ninyo i-manage yung time ninyo. Remember, wala na si teacher. Diba? So, nung nakaraan, nung doon sa, sa old, old normal, no? Marapit tayong pinagsasabi ng teacher, gawin niyo yung assignments, ano yung assignment ninyo, at wala pa itong sagot, etc., etc. Ito, huli ka na sa ganito, ganyan. In this particular time, walang magyayari yung ganyan. So, sasagutan mo lang yung SLM o kung ano man yan. Pagbalik ng SLM, iti-check ng teacher, i-record. No? So, yun yung, yun yung challenge. So, kailangan na huwag kang umasa sa nanay mo, nagisingin ka. No? No? Kasi kung minsan, nagpapagising ka, anak, alas 9, natagutan mo na yung SLM. No? So, ikaw ay grade 5 na. Ikaw ay grade 9 na. Ikaw ay grade 8 na. Huwag ka nang magpagising. So, kailangan na i-master mo ang pag-manage sa time mo. So yung mga tips na ibinigay ko sa inyo kanina, those are tips provided by experts on time management. Pag ma-follow niyo yung sampung tips na yan, I'm sure even if, if, the, if you become an adult, pag maging matanda na kayo, katulad namin, ni Miss Mother, <laughs> madadala niyo yan as a life skill. Kasi yung time management ay talagang life skill talaga yan. Hirap tayong lahat sa time management. Pero if you're able to manage your time properly, kahit na magkasabay pa yung napakaraming trabaho ang ibibigay sa atin, naman-manage pa rin natin because we know how to manage our time properly. So yun lang. Yes. Thank you po. Yes. Since ma'am Mabit, wala pong mga katanungan mula sa ating episode 1, hayaan niyo pong basahin ko lang po yung ilang mga comments. Sabi po ni Dr. Maria Geraldine Isip, mula sa Cubao Elementary School. Uh, la, uh, ano daw po, care daw po yung ating uh, talk sa ating uh, episode 1. Yan, isa po yan sa mga master teachers from Cubao Elementary School. Yan, maraming salamat ma. Loud and clear explanation daw po. Yan, tapos sabi po ni Ma'am Padayo, thank you so much Sir Roger. The topic is not only for the students, for for us two teachers do, doing multitasking at home. Yan. Correct. So, yan. Hindi lang pang bata, pati pang teachers din kasi ang mga teachers din work from home na rin. Yan. So, yan mga mabit. So, see you mamayang. Yes, mga mabit. Mapa. Yes, sir. Okay, okay Riz. Riz Gabriel. Thank you very much, Riz. So, ating mga, so, Riz mga mabit. Yes, Yes, it's not bad. Is it possible na bigyan din yung mga participant ng like notes or slides ng presentation para ma-review nila even if yes, they're all yes, especially doon sa mga tips like simple how to master the online Yes sir. Siguro po mamabit, i-share na lang po natin siguro yung link para sa ating mga materials na ipoprovide ng Uwiska, Manila. Yes, sir. So, uh, after receiving the evaluation form, after na completed, the evaluation form po ay bibigay po namin ng link ng mga lahat po ng resources. Okay po ba, Sir Roger? Thank you po, Sir Roger. It was very clear, especially to our pupils. Ayun. So, mamaya po magkita-kita po muli tayo, mamayang 10.30 para sa ating episode 2. And don't forget to click, um, subscribe sa ating uh, YouTube channel ng Uwiska Philippines. So, kita-kita po tayo mamaya. And Thank you, Sir Roger. Yeah, may, I have a question. Mag, Mag-leave ba tayo? Are we going to leave the video? Yes, Sir Roger. Pasok na mga ako. Ini okay. Yes po. Ini-invite din namin habang uh, break po natin na panoorin natin yung mga audiovisual presentation na inanda ng ating Manila office. Yung history 
and mga activities ng Uwiska Philippines. Yan. Maraming okay. salamat po. At see Maraming you at 10.30. Yes. Yeah. At 10.30. Uh, mag- hindi po niya mamimiss si Kuya Rogers or Rogers coming back. So makakasama po ulit natin siya at 10.30 today. Maraming salamat po ulit at magkita-kita po ulit tayo. Salamat po.
Mga bata, plant a tree. Get air for free. Welcome, mga bisita o bayong pag-abot sa Mungkayo Central Elementary School. Saan man ninyo? Biyaan ra ba ninyo? So, bubuan ninyo siya at kung dyan ninyo siya, no? Tagadlaw! I tell you, children, The moment you plant those trees, makapil good mo of the sacred responsibility nga dapat ikapod mismo sa imo ang kabatanon na akay na himong part alang sa tuang talikasan. So at least once a week, we will be visiting our trees kay para makita nato ang status sa growth nila. Good evening, my... Ito nang eskwilahan ng mga kong asa na yung mong risk recipient na na-assign po ko. No? So, ang katong na mga nanglabay na kong mga stasyon, puros to sila recipient o uh, risk ka. Pero, mas labay akong kalitay nga uh, karong higayon na naka as a school head is na-experience ko na ko. No? Makaingundi kong uh, kining nahitabo ng kalihukan diri ining grupuha Ngayon mo niya ako na siyang murag batawag na legacy, no? Gatanin po kami ng punong kahoy para po mailigtas ang ating inang kalikasan at maprotektahan po ang ating kalikasan. At nag naging tahanan din po ito ng mga iba't ibang ibon at insekto. At nagbibigay din po ito ng oxygen para tayo ay mag mabuhay. Punong kahoy rin po ay nakatutulong po sa atin para tayo ay gamot yan dahil ang punong kahoy nagbibigay sa atin ng gamot. Simula, ang area na to ay isang taniman ng mais. Tapos napakalaking area ang lilinisin ng mga bata araw-araw. Pagdating ng wiska, nag-offer sila na magbigay ng mga puno na para itanim. So, parang nasiyahan ang aming principal kasi ma medyo maminos-minosan yung ano yung paglilinis ng mga bata. So sa pagdaan ng mga panahon, lumaki ang puno at napansin namin na parang malaking na itulong kasi kung napakainit ng panahon, ang lahat ng mga bata dito naglalaro sa ilalim ng mga puno. Ilaha daw ni Gitanom 1991 hangto 1993. Then Atong ihapon, hantog ka ron is mga 26 years na siya. So, nagtindog lang niya po siya. Ang mga katawahan, yung hinakabinipisyo sa iyahang gihasan. Nga, kabugnaw. Um, ang panit sa bunga sa mahogan yung ilahang ginagamit sa ilahang pagluto. So, daghan sila nga gakulit sa. So, niya, nagapod o gakwa sa wild game. Aroon nila hapong itanong sa ilahang yuta. Ang mga Japanese volunteer, gaan si Dinti, aron mutabang pagtanong ani dito. Gitawag din ni siya din nga love dream mini forest. Pero niwan po sa mga nauna po namin na ipat na ipatarim na, na malalaki na mga puno, na kailangan na po lagyan ng building dahil sa dumadami na po yung populasyon ng kanilang mga bata. Eh ginagamit na po sa mga kuha ng ating building at saka sa mga table, cabinet din yan po. Kaya napakalaki po ng tulong ng ating po mga puno na itinanim po na kasama natin dito ang mga hapon na sila po ang siyang sumuporta sa atin. Inga Children's Forest Program Coordinator, ako yung nakikipag-coordinate sa mga school activity. Pero marami kami activity sa mga schools like uh, replanting, uh, environmental workshop, 
and uh, environmental education ni nagpupunta kami sa mga schools nagkakandak mga environmental education sa mga eskwelahan years ito na na realize na but that that is not so easy without funds coming from Japan ang mga tao dito na patulong ko na nagtanim nagprotect kaya naging gubat na rin to so bumabalik na ngayon yung mga ano mga wild birds wild chickens mga snakes dito na malapit nang maging ano uh, diverse ang lugar na ito so at the beginning uh, of the year 1991 we have only four provinces uh, 15 schools are participated but after 25 years past only in the philippines more than 336 provinces 1100 schools are participated ini-invite ko po lahat ng mga magulang mga anak nila uh, na magtanim po ng puno sa kapaligiran para po dumami po ang mga puno nagpapasalamat po kami dahil napili ang aming paaralan na maging kalahok sa OISCA International at sa lahat ng bumubuo nito <laughs>子ども新鮮体制プログラムですが、あの近年は年3回行っておりまして、今年は2回目になります。主な目的としましては、現在36の国と地域で行っている子どもの森計画のあの活動に参加している子どもたちが日本に来日をしまして、まあサポートいただい
ကျွန်တော်တို့မြန်မာနိုင်ငံကိုရောက်တဲ့အခါမှာအမိုက်ဒီကိုလည်းစနစ်တကြားစွတ်ပစ်ပါမယ်စွတ်ပစ်စွတ
フィリピンホセパンガニバンここに広がるマングローブの森は多くの二酸化炭素を吸収し命を育み人々の生活に豊かな恵みをもたらしていますマレーシア・トゥアランでは枯れてしまった森をよみがえらせるためにベトナム・ティエンエンでは放棄された土地の再生にインドネシア・ドゥマックでは波による侵食や海面上昇から人々を守るために1999年から東京海上日動が続けているマングローブの森づくり100年先にも安心安全を届けたいマングローブ植林は地球の未来にかける保険です共に未来へ東京海上日動
มาปลูกปลากับผมนะครับおいすか50年の歩みおいすかは本部を日本に置き現在27の国と地域に組織を持つ国際 NGO1961 年10月6日に設立され世界の空は一つ全ての人々がさまざまな違いを乗り越えて共存し地球上のあらゆる生命の基盤を守り育てる世界を目指して作られました。1995年には国連経済社会理事会より NGO として最高位の諮問資格であるジェネラルに認定され半世紀を経た現在はアジア太平洋南米地域を中心に農村地域開発や環境保全活動に力を入れ青年が地域のリーダーとなれるように研修を通して人づくりを行っています。はい、これすごいな。すごい大きいですね。これ雪で作ったつまるですね。半ジャパス雪ですね。これは全部雪の業をやっていました。はい。それはワイナルのスペシャルだ。スペシャルです。オイスカから学び、立派な地域のリーダーとなった人たちは各国で活動しています。そんなオイスカが誕生した背景とは。第二次世界大戦が終わり広大な焼け野原を前にした日本国民が戦後復興へ向け一心不乱に突き進みましたその結果目覚ましい復興を遂げ高度経済成長期を迎えた日本は物質的にとても豊かになっていきましたそんな時代のさなか後にオイスカを創設する中野与之助王はある思いを抱きました日本人は物質的な豊かさを得ることはできたかもしれないがその代償として日本人が本来持っていた精神面の豊かさが見られなくなってきたのではと精神産業産業精神というのは体的的にあり精神的にありということであって。そうしてこれはいいようにできているものであります。この精神はすなわち宇宙の意識であるのである。人間としての大使命がこれであることを知らねばならないと思うのであります。えー、この産業というものの、そしてこの産業精神というものの本当のこれを理解すると。で、産業生活ってことを行わなければいかない。その産業生活を行えば自然に、えー、その彼というものは樹になるで産業というものは種になる1961年5月から中野与之助王の呼びかけで世界各地の有識者を集めて精神文化国際会議が開催されましたこれには多くの賛同者が出席この会議をきっかけとして人間の精神を豊かにすることを目指す精神文化国際機構が誕生しましたそれはやがてオイスカインターナショナルに発展し中野与之助王が初代総裁に就任することになったのですフーードファースト人が飢えることなく生きるために。
1960年代中頃アジア各地で干ばつが継続的に発生し何十万人もの餓死者が出ることになりましたそこでオイスカはまず食料を生み出す農業が大切だという考えのもと農業協力に着手したのです農業に精通した日本人のボランティアを募りインドを皮切りにフィリピンバングラデシュなどに派遣しました彼らは農村へ入り現地の人々と共に働きながら安定した食料生産と農業発展を目指して活動現地にモデル農場を開設し農業の改良普及に努めましたこの経験からある教訓が見えてきたといいます当時を経験した第2代オイスカインターナショナル総裁中野よし子はこのように語っていますまず食,食べるものが大事だとそれを自分たちで作るということをこれをあの実質まあそれが自助努力っていうそういうにつながっていくんですけど。自助努力自分たちの食べるものを持続的に作るためには自分たちで努力して作らなければならないと痛感しましたそのために農村の中で青年リーダーの育成に力を注ぐことにしたのですグラスルーツ自立に向けた人づくり1960年代後半オイスカは自立した青年リーダーを育てるためまず国内外に研修センターを設け独自の農業研修の中で人づくり活動を開始海外から研修生を受け入れるために日本でも西日本四国中部富山研修センターが開設され周辺地域の住民が参加する形での国際協力活動も始まりました。1969年には財団法人オイスカ産業開発協力団の設立が日本政府から認可されました現在は In five, minute, in five minutes po, mag-start na po tayo ng ating episode 2. So, bago po tayo mag-start, i-acknowledge ko po muna ang ating mga participants mula sa iba't ibang panig ng ating bansa. Yan, kasama po natin si Miss Messi Chu, still watching from King Gowin National High School. Si Diana Lynn Labordo, grade 6, Magnisio, kay Mang Blaza Escobar. Wala po ito sa San Agustin Elementary School. Hello, Diana. Kasama din natin si Missy. Ayan. Grade 7. Ayan. Sabi po ni Ma'am uh, Christy Bridino, congratulations on WISCA. Ayan. Hello, Ma'am Rubilin. Ayan. Good morning po from San Agustin Elementary School. Thank you, Ma'am Christy. Kasama din po natin ang ating mga viewers sa ating uh, Padre Burgos Central School. Ayan. Si Ma'am Elizabeth Nogon. Ayan. Good, after Good morning po, Ma'am, and welcome sa ating episode 2. And Ayan, uh, I'd like also to acknowledge... Uh, Sila Kuya Awad Sulaiman, galing po sa Mindanao. Mga kasamahan po sa Uwiska. Uh, 
Good morning po sa atin sa mga taga Mindanao po. Good morning po. Yan kasama rin po natin mga mabet si Samia Florido. Thank you for watching from Dagayan National High School. Yan kasama rin natin mga mabet si Jane Lynn Abad. Good morning, Kylie S. Siblag, watching from Sitio Kabyaw Elementary School. Good morning. Yan. Sinyal Mans, thank you po sa Roger. Topics are applicable not just for the teachers and students, but for us coordinators too. Thank you so much. Yan. Maraming salamat daw po, Doc Roger. Si Pitia, Geraldine, Austria, Grade 6 Magnesium. Yan, kasama na natin siya ngayon. Good morning, Pitia. Yan, si Ma'am Messi, still watching from COVID. Yan, nabasa po natin yan. Yan, sa mga kaka-tune in po ulit para sa ating episode 2, pwede po natin i-chat ang ating mga pangalan, eskwelahan, region, and division na kinabibilangan natin. Still watching pa rin po, Sir Mark, from San Felipe Elementary School. Good morning, Silvio. Gumapa. Yan. Okay, so welcome back to our 2020 OISCA Children's Forest Program, second national webinar series. With the team, Nurturing Good Moral Values Among the Children, an Approach to New Normal. So, kumusta sa ating mga participants? Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notification bell para ma-update tayo sa mga bagong activities ng OVSCA CFP. So, we have prepared another three questions for this episode. Iba mga mga bet, kapag ready na tayo ng tatlong katagungan at syempre, ganoon tayo pa-premium sa mga estudyante natin at mga viewers natin sa YouTube. So, ready na ba tayo mga bata? <laughs> Ready, ready na po sila. So, Kuya JM, pwede na natin i-blast yung ating mga katalungan. Huwag niyo pong kakalimutan na ilagay ang inyong sagot at inyong cellphone number dahil ngayon ay tatawagan namin kayo mas isaan man po kayong panic ng Pilipinas. Okay. So, get ready sa ating unang katanungan. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Yan. So still watching si Ate Norma Tundan Yan, from Palawan Si Norma, ingat po kayo dyan Good morning, uh, I'm Jasmine Jasmine Samia watching from Isturas, Navaca Elementary School Kapalonga, Camarines Norte Yan, meron tayo mga kasama mula sa Davao del Norte Yan, Kuya JM, flash na po natin yung una nating question <laughs> Yeah, still watching din po si Ate Leonie Santos, ang ating isa sa pinakamasipag na coordinators ng OWISCA. Ate Leonie, good morning po. Yan. Still watching from Anipoga National High School, Beverly Celandes. Okay? So... 
Sige po, ngayon naman ipapakilala ni Ma'am Mabet yung ating um, magpe-present, magbibigay ng intermission number ngayong episode 2. Ma'am Mabet? Yes, Sir Mark. Uh, now let's watch an intermission number from Lemar Joy, Eugenio, grade 10, pupil from Morong National High School, Bagabag, Nueva Vizcaya. Siya po ay uh, grade 6 pupil of uh, from Morong National High School. Sa bataan po? Bagabag, Nueva Vizcaya. Nueva Vizcaya. Ayan, kila Dok Mario. So, ang galing. Ayan. Thank you, Lemar. Ayan. So, thank you po sa ating intermission number. And ngayon po, uh, tatawagin na po muli natin ang ating napakahusay na speaker ngayong umaga na ito kung saan i-discuss na naman ang you and your habits, fixing your eyes on the go. Muli, tinatawagan ko po ang pride ng Sagay City, Dr. Roger Rochar. Good morning once again. Ito na naman ako. So, I hope that our participants, yeah, are, I hope that our participants are still there um, for this presentation. So this is episode two. If you remember, episode one is about time management. And I have repeatedly mentioned in episode one, the importance of building habits. So that's why I've mentioned earlier also in episode one that when you are able to um, uh, manage time properly then you begin to develop habits that go with that go with your time management so that's why um i would like to believe that episode one and episode two are very related to each other so i i have given episode two the title you and your habits because who you are what you do what makes who you are Okay, so what you do every day, what you do constantly, your actuations, the way you speak, the way you deal with people, the way you react on situations, creates your own identity, creates the personality that you have, and creates the vision of what you, your family, your friends, other people, your school, your community, look at. So you and your habits, fixing your eyes, on the go because if you're able to develop these habits you have to put these habits in mind and practice these habits daily then if you practice these things daily then you develop a habit and you become successful so next slide please 
Okay, so for our objectives, let's tell what a habit is. We have to, de to define what a habit is. Okay, um, explain the essence and importance of building good habits and then list down the seven habits of highly effective kids. The presentation that I am preparing that I will be presenting to you right now is not actually mine, but this is coming from the presentation of Stephen Covey on the seven habits of highly effective teens. Seven, um, Sean, Sean Covey, um, next slide please. Yeah, um, Sean Covey is the son of um, Stephen Covey, the writer who wrote, uh, the author who wrote the book, um, Seven Hi Habits of Highly Effective People. And his son, Sean Covey, also wrote his own version and he titled it, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. So this, this um, the book is actually intended for young people like you. So I have gotten um, fragments of this book and then I will be sharing to you um, this um, morning. Okay, so let, before, before that, before the discussion of the seven habits, let us try to define first what a habit is. When we talk about a habit, it is anything that you do as per the routine, anything for which you don't have to think, which just happens in a programmed way. So that's that's what we call a habit. So you're not prompted, you're not you're not told. It automatically you automatically do this because it's already built in in your system. Nandu na siya sa sarili mo. So para lumalabas na lang siya naturally kasi nga tinatawag siya na habit. Habit is different from mannerism. Okay? When we say habit, these are practices that you do almost um, every day. So there are actually two types of habits. We have good habits and bad habits. So dun tayo sa good habits, wag tayo dun sa mga bad habits. So um, what we are trying to aim here is for you to develop um, good habits. So next slide, please. So our discussion is taken from the book by Sean Covey. As I've said, um, Sean Covey is the son of Stephen Covey, the one who wrote the very famous, the bestseller book on seven habits of highly effective people. So for Sean, the son of Stephen Covey, the version is different. It is seven habits of highly successful teens. So um, this is, I, I, I chose this because I know that the participants of this webinar are actually um, young people ages um, 11 to let's say eight, 17 or 18. So you are you belong to that um, category of teens. And we want you to be highly successful as teenagers, not only during the pandemic, but at all times. No? If you're able to develop these habits within you, then surely you would become very successful teens. Next. Let us begin with the first habit because we only have one time, one R for this. The first, the first habit is be proactive. What is that? Be proactive. When we say be proactive, it means that you do not blame others for your wrong actions because usually if something wrong happens, then we are always triggered to blame others. Ah, siya, siya kasi eh. Siya kasi yung may gawa. Kaya nagkaganit ko. So, when you say you are proactive, you don't blame others for the wrong actions, but you take the initiative. Okay? You choose your actions, attitudes, and moods. Okay? So, you always take responsibility. If ever something went wrong, and you believe, and you believe that you were the one who made a mistake, then own the mistake. Own the mistake and uh, promise not to repeat that mistake. Okay, so um, that is being uh, proactive. Next slide. Take a look at this. Hmm. 
What can you see? Children are actually shaking their soda bottles. Okay? So what do you think happens when a bottle of soda is shaken up? How do you Pag inanun mo yung ano, yung soft drink, nasarapa, di ba? What will happen? It will burst, right? It will explode. So next slide. Okay. Next. Okay. Sometimes things go wrong. I have to admit that, no? Sometimes nangyayari ang mga di inaasahan. Kaliwas sa iyong plan. Far from what you have planned. Far from what, how you have planned things to happen. And you feel shaken up. As a result, you might we might explode on someone or something. Sumisigaw tayo. This is, this is what we call being reactive. Reactive. Okay? Diba? Naapakan lang ng classmate mo yung paa mo. Kusigaw ko na kaagad. Mm -hmm. Nawala lang yung limang piso mo. Sumikaw ka na agad. Hindi ka lang, nagkaroon ka lang ng dalawang mistake sa exam, parang magunaw na ang mundo mo. So you tend to explode. Next. So, when you are proactive, you make a choice about how you react to the things that happen in your life. For instance, pag naapakan ng classmate mo yung paa mo or any member of the family mm -hmm. para nabunggo ka or something okay? You always have a choice pa paano ka mag-re-react Sisigaw ka ba? O mag-re-dal ng kita? O sa sabihin, aray, ano ba? Pwede ba next time? Tingnan mo naman yung ginadaanan mo Okay? Hindi yung nanununto pa ka agad Okay? If you are proactive, you act like a water bottle. You might get shaken up or mad, but you stay calm and don't explode. Okay? So, teenagers, adults, pwede mo gamit ito. Be proactive. Next. Next slide. Okay. So what is the difference between being proactive and being reactive? When you are proactive, you make good choices about how you respond to something happening. You are always ready with a calm attitude. You do things to make sure that the right things will happen. You are prepared for anything that might happen. When things don't go your way, you aren't happy, but you stay calm. Katulad kanina, nagsasalita pala ako, tapos hindi na pala ako naririnig. No? Nawala na pala yung connection ko. Did I feel um, concerned or nagpanik ba ako? Nataranta? Hindi, I just stayed calm and asked for people to give me a good connection para makabalik ako. So that is the end. Proactive. When you are reactive, you could explode at any minute. Things happen and they catch you off guard. Ito talaga, no? Ito talaga natin mahuhuli. Yung mga weaknesses natin, no? Mm -hmm. Ito yung inaabangan sa social media. Kung ano yung magiging reaction. Halimbawa, may isang, ano, may isang patahero na ano, na ano yung biker. Tapos, Medyo nasabi lang yung sasakyan. Tapos pinagalitan na kaagad yung bicycle um, rider. Tapos napunan sa social media. Lumabas doon. No? Yung bangayan. Yung sigawan niya. Yung kanyang pag-aano. So that would create the impression for other people. Ay, ganyan pala siya. Ang pangit pala niya. Ang pangit pala ng kanyang ano. 
ng kanyang asa. No? Even if you're not like that naturally. No? So, if you are reactive, you are caught off guard. No? So, you aren't ready for things that might happen and you deal with things when they happen instead of being prepared. So, the key is always to prepare. Always prepare that something wrong might happen. No? Especially in a webinar. Okay? You have to expect that you might lose the connection. So, if you lost the connection, you have an option on what to do. Ano bang gagawin ko? Kung sakasakaling mawawala yung connection ko. Mag-leave na lang ako sa meeting. So, that is very important. You have to choose between proactive and then reactive. But, kailangan doon ka sa pagiging proactive. Okay, next. Yes, the second habit. Again, you need una, be proactive. When you say proactive, stay calm, think clearly. Alam mo kung ano ang gagawin mo. Okay? Habit number two. Begin with the end in mind. Yung tao, yung bata, yung isudyante na marunong magplano, mas nagiging successful kaysa isudyante na hindi marunong magplano. Plan ahead and set goals. Alam mo na na next week, magsisimula na yung klase, handa ka na ba? Handa na ba yung mga gagamitin mo? Okay? Ano ba yung goal mo? Yung goal mo ay matapos mo yung grade level. Pag nag-goal ka pa ng additional na matatapos mo yung grade level na magiging with honors ka, okay naman yun. Pero tingnan mo naman yung sarili mo. Kaya mo ba? Kaya ba ng mental capacity mo? You have to accept things that you can change. You have to um, have the serenity to do the, to do the things that to change the things that you can change and to have the humility to accept the things that you can. Okay? So, do things that have meaning and make a difference. Always have that begin with the end in mind. Kailangan yung mga end natin in mind are mga positive. Okay? Positive. Yung ating for personal growth. Huwag natin gawing end yung ah, pagka-graduate ko ng junior high school, magka-asawa na ako. Hindi ba yun? Is that a productive end in mind? Hmm. So if you think about that, think about the other people who rely on you. Think about your family, think about your friends, think about yourself. Okay? If you do this, what will happen to you? For example, if you decide to get married after junior high school, do you think you can carry the responsibility? Mm. So it's like also the choice of um, the course that you would like to take. So also look at your capacity. So begin with an end in mind. Kasi pag nandiyan na siya, nandiyan na siya sa isipan mo, mas madali mo na lang siya mapalo. So that's why if you have an end in mind, it's easier for you to plan things out. Next. Hmm. Okay, ito yung statement. I plan ahead and set goals. I do things that have meaning and make a difference. Oh. Gaya ng pagiging, ano, pagiging member ng Children's Forest Program no, sa inyong school. These are activities, these are programs na, may, na makabuluhan that have meaning. And you can make a difference in the environment by your participation. So doon ka. Huwag ka doon sa mga naglalakwat siya, nagbubulakpul, nagbudroga. Hmm. Go with, go for things that have meaning and that allows you to make a difference. Always think of yourself as an important part of your class an important part of your family, an important part of your society. 
because pag yan ang ilagay mo sa isipan mo, nagawa, gagawa ka ng paraan on how to become a good citizen. So remember, if you begin with an animal, always make sure that that end is meaningful and relevant to you. Next. Hmm. So try to consider answering the statements when you're alone. If my future had no limits, I would choose to be anything. I want to be a person who. I want to be a person. I want to be a student who. I want to be the child who. I want to be a CFP member who. Try to try to make that self reflection. Next, hmm. habit number three. So, um, tapos sa tayo sa habit number one at habit number two. Yung habit number one is be proactive. And habit number two is begin with an end in mind. Okay. Habit number three, put First things first. Hmm. So, ang ibig sabihin niya? You have to set priorities, make a schedule, and follow your plan. Because you are disciplined and organized. Ito yung sinabi ko kanina, doon sa unang episode, sa first episode na, You and Your Time. Okay. Yan. Next. Oh, ito yung statement. Ay, nawala ako. Yes. I spend my time on things that are most important. This means I say no to things I should not do. I set priorities, make a schedule, and follow my plan. I am organized. Okay. Now, take a look at this. You can do this at home. Hmm? What are your at-home goals? And what are your at-school goals? Hmm? Set two to three goals for at-home and for at-school. Hmm? Plan things out. Hmm? Okay? So, ano yung pinaka- dapat mong gawin. Ano yung pinaka-urgent mo na dapat mong gawin? At home, sa school, ano naman, sa pag-aaral, ano naman yung pinaka-urgent, pinaka-importante mong gawin? So try to practice um, writing that. Hmm? Next. Okay? Yan. So, you can also do this exercise at home. No? Big things and little things. Putting first things first means planning your time around the most important big things in your life. Then you get the little things that take your time. Okay, so when we say big, ito yung mga mahalaga. These are very important things. Okay? And yun yung mga small things. Ito yung mga less important thing. Like for example, big thing. Study seven modules within one week. Small thing. Small thing. Chat with my friends. Oh. Huh? So, mo yung difference. 
between big things and small things. Again, yun yung essence ng two things, first things first. Okay? That is very important. Limbawa, for example, your classmate is celebrating her birthday. On time for your examination. Ano yung pipiliin mo? Yung mag-study ka for the examination or yung mag-attend ka ng birthday party? Okay? So you have to be able to decide on that. Dalawang mahalagang bagay. Mahalaga naman yung birthday kasi a birthday only happens once a year. No, baka debut pa yan. Very important milestone in one's life. Pero yung exam mo, kung saan nakasalala yung future mo, mahalaga din naman yan. Mas mahalaga. So you have to be able to prioritize. Ang yung importante sa iyo. Okay? Next. Okay. So we have habit number four. So number four na pala tayo. So ano yung first natin? Be proactive. Second is, ano yung second natin na habit kanina? Can you remember? Okay. Begin with an end in mind. And then third, put first things first. And then we are now on habit number four, think win-win. Okay? And sometimes in a situation, somebody will really get disadvantaged. May mas lalamang. So in this particular case, as a person, try to find a solution kung paano yung dalawang panalo. Okay? Think win-win. When conflict arises, you always look for alternatives. Next. Hmm. So ito yung statement. I want everyone to be a success. I don't have to put others down to get what I want. Ano okay. tayong ganito nangyayari? Kung minsan sa classroom, nagsusumbungan din kay teacher. Yung teacher, alam mo si ganyan, 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 ganyan. Ganyan, ganyan. Just to get the favor from the teacher, hindi yan maganda. If you are in one class, it is expected that everyone in that class must be successful. No? Kung pwedeng gawing first owner, lahat ng tao dyan sa class niya gagawin. When I was in a classroom teacher, that has always been my goal. Ayoko yung may maiiwanan na estudyante. I want everyone to finish the grade. I want everyone to be successful. No? Kasi, kung saya-saya kaya, pag maraming successful, no? It makes me happy to see other people happy. Oh, walang inggit-inggit, no? I like to do nice things for others. When a conflict arrives, I help brainstorm a solution. We all can win. Okay? Yan. Okay? Kaya nga siguro ni-remove na yung mga first owner, second owner, third owner. Kasi parang it distinguishes people, it's labeling people. Okay? So, kaya ginawa nila, uh, category, category, pag ganito yung average mo, uh, tapos wala kang ganitong grade, uh, with high honors, with high at all. Pag ganito naman yung average mo, tapos wala kang ganitong grade, with high honors. Uh, pag ganito yung grade mo, tapos ganito yung average, you know, with honors. Everyone is given an equal chance to shine. So, yun yung ginagawa natin dito sa OISCA. No? binibigyan natin ng chance lahat-lahat na mag-shine. Okay? Kaya nga sinabi ko kay Miss Mabet, 
mga Miss Margaret, baka pwede naman tayong mag-invite ng ibang mga speakers. No? Kasi I'm sure marami naman dyang magagaling. Kaso, parang ano lang talaga si Miss Margaret, confident na confident. Nakaya ko daw talaga i-deliver yung talk. Thank you for that. No? But I'm sure in the future, you can also apply win-win by putting the bottle to all. Okay, next. Uh, ito yung mga win-win roadblock. Ito yung nagpipigil. Okay. Okay. I'll step on you to get ahead. Ano yung maganda? I am a loser. I can't do anything. Yun na naman yun. Yung isip mo kalagi. Ay, sila lang naman yung magagaling. Hindi naman ako magaling. Oh, sila na lang yan. Sila na lang leader parati. Sila lang parati ipaparticipate sa mga contest. Kasi ako, wala naman akong talent. Wala naman akong kaalam-alam tungkol dyan. Or, masyado kang believe sa sarili mo. No? At least, I am better than him or I am better, better than her. No? As if, you exist alone in the world. No man is an island. No man stands alone. Each man as my brother, each man as my friend. May kantang ganyan, di ba? No man is an island. No man stands alone. Each man's joy is joy to me. Each man's breathe is my own. Yeah. So you have to all think that we supplement, we complement each other. Yung yung tinatawag na win-win. Or I let someone else win again. Okay, parati na. Wala ka na believe in it. Wala ka din believe sa sarili mo. So this, if you have to think all of these four, ito yung magbablock talaga on how you can become a successful person. Always think win-win. Next. Mm -hmm. Habit number five. Seek first to understand, then be understood. No? Ito parati yung ano. No? Kanta ito. Eh. Nasa kanta ito ni St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis of Assisi. Yung make me a channel of your peace. Narinig mo ba yung kanta ng yung kanta ni St. Francis? Na make me a channel of, of your peace? Kasi sinabi doon sa kanta na, O Master Grant that I may never seek hmm, so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Yung sinabi doon sa kanta, no? Hmm. Oh, Master, grant that I may never cease so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. Good. Listen to others without interrupting. We listen to others without interrupting. I am confident in voicing my idea. I look people in the eyes when talking. I try to see things from their viewpoint. To always wear the truth of the other person. That is seeking first to understand and be understood. Kasi kung minsan, gusto natin tayo ang una muna ang maintindihan kesa tayo ang umintindi. Okay? Next. Hmm. So, ayan ito. O, mga listening roadblocks. O, kasi feeling mo, ito na talaga yung tama. So, magkakaroon ka ng spacing out. Pag nagsasalita yung isang tao, parang tumitingin ka nga sa kanya, pero yung isip mo naman kung saan-saan lumilipad. So, ito yung tinatawag na spacing out. Para sinasabi mo sa sarili mo, kailan pa kayo ito matatapos? Nako, kung ano-ano na pinagsasabi nito. 
Hmm? Okay. Or you have pretend listening. Hmm? You don't really pay attention to the other person, but just pretend to say, yeah, uh-huh, I'm cool. So yan yung mga pretend listening. Hindi naman sincere. Hindi naman sincere yung pakikinig. Okay? And then, selective listening. You only listen to parts that interest you. Kagaya nito siguro aking episode. Yung mga parts na hindi niyo nagustuhan, hindi niyo pinakikinggan. Joke lang. Ay, alam ko naman makikinig talaga. Kaya mabibit, mababait naman yung mga, 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 mga children ng CFP, Children's Forest Program. So I'm sure na nakikinig talaga sila intently. And selfish listening. So you always bring the conversation back to you and your life. No? I think ikaw yung bida. Ay, alam mo dun sa akin. Ay, naku, dahil kayo ng lolo ko. Yan. Lolo ko talaga napakagaling. Ay, naku, wala kayo talaga sa bahay namin. Naku, just po, hindi kami umuulang na ganyan. Hindi po ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Ikaw parati ang bida. No? Bida ang saya. Yan. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, yun yung... So, yun yung mga listening road blocks. Okay? So, listen with your eyes. Again, ha, pinag-uusapan natin dito ay speak first to understand than be understood. So, listen with your eyes. So, paano ba tayo nakikinigamit ang ating mga mata? Sometimes you have to listen with your eyes as much as you listen with your ears. Ako, ito talaga yung ano ko eh. Hindi ako pwedeng mag-usa kung kapag hindi ako pwedeng magsalita sa tao na hindi ako tumitingin doon sa mata niya. Hmm? Gusto ko talaga tinitingnan yung mata para malaman ko yung sincerity so that the other person could also feel na nagkukunik ako doon sa kanya. People say a lot with their body language and facial expression. Yung mga bagay na hindi sinasabi ng bibi pero nakikita mo doon sa mga galaw. Hmm? So sometimes you have to listen with your eyes. Next. Synergize. Okay, habit number six. So the different type of process of cooperation. Synergy. Because we believe na two are better than one. Hmm? I seek out other people's ideas to solve problems because I know that my teaming with others, we can create better solutions than any one of us alone. Again, babalik na naman tayo doon sa ating kanta na No man is an island. Yeah. Okay. Next. Next slide, please. Uh, statement. I value other people's strengths and learn from them. I get along well with others, even people who are different from me. I work well with groups. Ah, nakikita ko ito during sa mga CFP. Ah, ilang, ilang CFP national workshop na yung atinan ko. Meron talaga mga bata hmm? na pumupunta lang doon para mag-sightseeing. So, kailangan ko pang piliting na mag-participate. Meron na ibang mga bata doon na yung iba hindi na nakapag-participate dahil sila na lang. Sila na lang parati. Okay? So, synergize. Kaya nga dinala, dinadala kami, kami kayo doon sa oo, CFP National Workshop sa Biscaya. Meron tayong mga team building activities because we want to find out whether you can actually work with a team. O baka gusto mo ng solo flight. No? Pag gusto mo ng solo flight, huwag ka na sumali doon sa national workshop kasi team building talaga yun. Okay? I work well in groups. I set up people's ideas, solve problems. I know that two heads are better than one. I am a better person when I let other people into my life and work. Next. They say that two heads are better than one. Do you agree or disagree? Hmm. Yes, dito sa, alam nyo, dito sa ano, sa ating national workshop, 
hindi lang si Ate Mabit ang nag-iisip. Marami kami. Marami kami nag-iisip. We have to brainstorm kung ano yung maganda. Ang maganda lang talaga is kung magbigay ka ng idea kay, kay Miss Mabit, talagang ina-appreciate naman niya. Pero hindi naman siya nag-i-say yes ka agad. Pinag-iisipan pa naman niya. Then I think that's the beauty. You brainstorm, you discuss, and then you come up with a decision. Yun yung dapat. Kahit nasa bahay yung dapat. Next. Okay? And the last habit. Ito ito tayo talaga sa last, no? Sharpen the saw. Okay? Ito na yung tinatawag natin. Practice makes perfect. Huh? Oh. So pag ulit-ulit mo siyang ginagawa. Okay? Hmm. I take time to find meaningful ways to help others. Because you want to sharpen the soul. Yun yung may, meron gang, ano, meron gang saying na once thou a thing is not done, it is forgotten. No? Gaya ng iba, nung maliit pa, marunong pa magbisikleta. Nalimutan na magbisikleta. Ngayon ay kapandemya, no? Nababalik na naman sa pagbibisikleta kasi nga wala nga mga public transport. Hmm, hindi na marunong magbisikleta kasi hindi na practice yung pagbabae. Nagaya na din yan ng pagkanta. No? Nung, nung maliit ka pa, ang galing-galing mong kumanta, superstar ka sa bahay mo. No? Nahiya kang kumanta dahil, dahil nag-change yung vocal cords mo. Nung matanda ka mo, ay parang hindi ka na marunong kumanta. No? So kasi hindi mo na practice. Okay? So, you have to sharpen the saw. Ano yung saw? Okay. Lagari. Paano ba mo, sa paano ba mo siya sharpen yung lagari? Pag nilagay ba yung lagari sa ilalim ng, ano, ng cabinet at hindi siya ginagamit, magsha-sharpen ba siya? Hindi. Talaga. Mag, ano yan, maglalagay yung kalawang. Hmm? You have to sharpen the saw. Next. So what are our ways in sharpening the saw? Next slide. Hmm. Okay, next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Hindi ko na yung babasahin. Okay. So, ito. So, how do we sharpen the saw? You take care of your body by eating right, exercising, and getting sleep. I spend time with my family and friends. I learn in lots of ways and lots of Places. So that's how you sharpen the saw. Next. Let's try to explain that further. Next, please. Ito na. Hmm. Paano ba natin siya sharpen yung ating body? Oh, exercise. Ako nag-exercise ako dati. Ngayon ako, hirap mo talaga ako sa exercise. Hindi na kasi pwedeng mag-jog. Na hindi naka-mask. Ayoko naman. Ayoko talaga. I cannot, I cannot jog. With a mask on, parang hindi ako makahinga. But you have to be healthy, you have to sleep, and you have to relax. To exercise, to sharpen your brain, you have to learn, basta, you have to read, and then you have to write. Practice writing, write, write poetry, write anything. Um, you can think of doing, you know, writing. But for your soul, um, You can write your diary, journal, you can think, or you can pray, no? Dasal, basa ng Bible, you participate sa mga Bible study. Magsimba, because that would sharpen your soul and to sharpen your heart. You have to serve. No? Maglingkod, lalong-lalong na sa mga nangangailangan. To love, so, kailangan maging tumawa kung minsan-minsan. No? And in order to sharpen your heart, you have to be a friend. So ito yung mga paraan kung paano natin ma-sharpen ang soul. Okay? Do things that would nourish and improve your body, your brain, your soul, and your heart. Next. Okay. Alam. So ito, pwede rin yung gawin ito as an exercise. 
What makes your song sharp? Ano yung mga ginagawa mo? Para talagang ano? Parang mag-improve ka? Parang mas lalong gagana yung mga system mo? What makes your song dull? Siguro na, dyan yung mga procrastination, yung mga ano, yung kapamaray, no? Yeah. Mga barkada-barkada, mga lalong hindi naman makabunuhan. That would make your song dull. So yun, you can, can use that and do that exercise at home. So again, in summary, let us try to review our seven habits. Seven habits na pwede ninyong i-improve. No? Pwede ninyong i-develop sa sarili ninyo. Next slide. Ito na tayo sa summary. So number one, to be proactive. Being proactive is the key to unlocking the other habits. Help your team take control and responsibility of your life. You have to be responsible for your life. Proactive people understand that they are responsible for their own happiness or and happiness. They don't blame others for their own actions or feelings. And you be proactive. Always think na kung ano man yung kasiyahan na nandyan sa'yo, ay dahil din yan sa'yo. No? Dahil you have chosen to be happy and you have not chosen to be sad. Sometimes nga, di ba? Marami tayo mga teenagers na nagkakaroon ng depression. Sometimes nakikita natin na baka nga, baka nga din choice din nila na maging depressed based on how they interpret the circumstance. Second, begin with the end in mind. If you are, if you are not clear about where you want to end up in your life, about your values, goals, and what you stand for, you will wonder, waste time, and be tossed to and fro by the opinions of others. Kasi hindi ka, hindi clear eh, kung ano talaga yung gusto mo sa sarili mo. Sasabihan ka lang, alam mo, babay sa'yo maging dancer. O, oh, sasabihan mo na kagad sa sarili mo. Oo nga, no? Maging dancer niya lang ako, tapos pagdating doon, alam mo, babay sa'yo maging singer. Oo nga, no? Ano, singer lang ako. So you will end up not doing or accomplishing anything. So para kang pumunta ng kolehiyo, na umabot ka na lang ng 15 years, wala ka pa rin natapot. Para kang magna, magna 9 years sa college. Or suma, suma sampung taon. Because you don't have that. You don't begin with an end in mind. So you have to make a personal mission statement which will act as your roadmap and direct and guide in your decision making. And the third, you have to seek first to understand than to be understood. Yeah? Because most people don't listen very well. One of the great frustrations in life is that many don't feel understood. Hindi talaga nila ako naanawaan drama yung mga friends ko. Hindi ako naanawaan ng mga friends ko. No. Ganun. So, seek first to understand. And be understood. This habit will ensure that you learn the most important communication skill there is. And that is active listening. You have to listen actively kung may nagsasalita or nagpo-pour out ng kanilang mga problema sa'yo. Next. Put first things first. This habit helps teens prioritize and manage their time so that they focus on and complete the most important things in their lives. Putting first things first also means learning to overcome fears and being strong during difficult times. It's living life according to what mo what matters most to you. Next. Sharpen the saw. 
things should never get to be seen. Giving to take time to renew themselves. Uh, synergize pa pala. So when we say synergize, it's achieved when two or more people work together to create something better than either good alone. For this habit, you don't have to be, you don't always have to have your way or my way, but rather a better way, a higher way. Synergy always allows teens to value differences and better appreciate all. Of course, the last thing, sharpen the saw. Teens should never get too busy leaving to take time to renew themselves. When you sharpen your saw, you keep your personal, your personal life sharp so that you can better deal with your life means regularly renewing and strengthening the four key dimensions of your life your body your brain your heart and your soul so always remember that am i giving my body enough to sustain it am i giving my brain enough to sustain it am i giving my heart enough to sustain it am i giving my soul enough to sustain it so those are the seven habits of highly effective teams and maybe also the seven habits of highly effective people. I hope that you got all the seven habits. Let's try to memorize, let's try to remember those seven habits once again. So again, our first habit is uh, B, row, Active. Next, we have begin with the end in mind. Third, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Next, put first things first. And then number five, think win win. And then the last, synergize and sharpen the soul. So if we are able to develop all of these habits, you, as a teenager, would become highly successful in the future. You would become highly successful. You know why I'm saying this? Because this is the same program that we follow for the NGO that I have been part of as a co-founder and the Amazing Girls of the World. So we always, the Amazing Girls of the World project. So we've always told, our, we even have a special class for our girls um, and teach them about this, to master these seven habits. Because we believe strongly that if all teenagers would be able to master all of the seven habits. We expect them to become highly successful adults. We, we expect them to become highly successful um, professionals, highly successful parents, highly successful citizens in their respective communities. So in your case, highly successful CFP members. So next slide. Before I end, let me leave you with this quotation. We first make our habits, and then our habits make us. That's according to John Dryden. Again, we first make our habits, and then our habits make us. Thank you very much. Next. With that, thank you, Sir Roger. Dami po namin natutunan from F.
episode 1 hanggang episode 2. Thank you for sharing the 7 uh, points in the uh, 7 habits of highly effective things or people. Yan, maraming maraming sala- salamat sa Roger. Yan sa ating mga participants, sa ating mga studyante na nakantabay sa ating live streaming sa YouTube. Pwede kayong mag-comment ng ilang mga katanungan sa ating speaker at ibigyan tayo ng pagkakataon ni Doc Roger na saguti ang inyong mga katanungan. Sabi po ni, ano, ni Nika Gagno, nagaling nyo daw pong magpaliwanag, Dr. Roger. Yan. Siyempre, si Dr. Roger pa yan. Kuya JM, meron na po ba tayong mga katanungan wala sa ating uh, comment at uh, ating ano, YouTube? Sir Mark, uh... Sir Mark, wala pong katanungan. Mahi- Mahi- Lahat po ay thank you. Thank you, thank you daw po sa Roger. Yeah. Thank you, thank you po. Ganda Nahiya po. Nahiya silang magtanong, ma'am. Po, po, nahiya po sila kasi And... full pack, full pack po ang presentation yeah. ni Sir, ni Doc Roger. As always. Yeah. Ganda daw po, no? Yes, siyempre po. Thank you daw po mula kay RG Gabano. Yeah, thank you. At ang ganda daw po ng episode pa lang. Di ba? Full pack. Yes, full pack po niya. Sabi po ni Ate Leonie, thank you so much sir Roger. No matter, ang talagang nami-miss ko kay sir Roger, pag nagtotok siya, may mga kasamang kantay. Yan yung nami-miss ko eh, pag ano, face-to-face na, na seminar eh. Talagang, doon mo matatandaan si sir Roger. Kung wala na po tayo kat- Pero kumanta yes, po kumanta mo na kanina, di ba? Kumanta po kanina. Kumanta po si Sir si Doc Roger kanina. Oh, yes. Yes, kumanta po siya. Siyempre, ang hard. Hindi ko kaya ng ano, ano porte ni Sir Roger. Hindi kompleto, tama, Ma'am Mabit. Sana nga, yung uh, akin lang is, when, kasi kayo yung naka-attend ko, so I hope that maybe even in just informal conversations, you will be able to tell these things to other people. Kasi yun lang naman yung way of how we can spread the word by paying it forward. Eh? Like, for example, sa case Sir Mark, pwede niyang insert niyo na dun sa mga classes niya kung paano develop ng mga bata yung habit because that they, these, are, these are actually life-changing habits. No? Pag in-adopt mo ito, then you would become highly successful. Hindi ko nga in-expect eh, na hindi pa ako nakabasa sa book ni Stephen Covey or ni Sean Covey, for instance, na-realize ko na meron na pala siya doon. Meron na pala akong ginagaw na doon. Doon sa mga habits niya. Hindi lang ako aware na included siya doon habits. But no, kung ma-master mo, talagang you would live as a peaceful, successful life. Doon pa lang sa ulit. Yes. Be proactive. Talagang that that would really promote you know, a peaceful life. Kasi wala kang ka-stress, stress mo. Kung proactive ka. I can vouch na talagang si Miss Mavis, ganyan. Kung minsan, gusto na niyang mag-react doon sa mga ano ko. Pero grabe, as in, na ang nagagawa niya talagang ipong yung ano, this is, this is a very admirable virtue na being pro. Okay. We always see the other, the positive side of things. Parang, we always see the good in every person. Yun yung, yun yung again, yun yung essence. Tapos, lahat-lahat naman ng mga habits, di ba? Nagsisimula naman siya dun sa being proactive. Dala na lahat eh. Kung proactive ka, dala na yun. Yeah. Isa, ta- isa talaga sa model natin na proactive si Ma'am Mabit. At aside from Ma'am Mabit, siyempre si Doc Roger. Ang mas busy po si Sir Roger. Napaka-busy po ng schedule ni Dr. Roger sa kanyang pagsusut na mga uh, ang tawag dito, yung sa TV nila sa Sagay City. Opo, di ba? 
Pero pinagbigyan pa rin tayo nila mamapit. So, thank you very much talaga sa Roger. So, ma'am. <laughs> so, mabit, ibibigay na po natin yung ating uh, certificate of recognition sa ating uh, speaker na si Dr. Roger Machar. So, babasahin po ni Ma'am Mabit ang ating certificate of recognition. Ma'am Mabit, take it away. Opo, salamat po sa inyo. At muli, hindi po tayo binigo ni Kuki Roger and Lisa Roger sa ating pong gawa kay Kuki Roger kasi siya ay very busy talaga. So, let me read the content of the certificate of recognition. Organization for Industrial, Spiritual, and Cultural Advancement of the National Wisdom of Philippines Children's Forest Program presents the Certificate of Recognition to Roger Marzuela Rodomar, recognition for his undoubted support for the precious time rendered as a researcher in the 2020 RISCA Children's Forest Program second national webinar series. Nurturing good moral values among the children of an approach to new normal. So, episode one You and Time Creating Meaningful Learning at Home. Episode two You and Your Habits Fixing Your Eyes on the Road. So, it's September 23, 2020. Issued on September 23, 2020 at Quezon City, Metro Manila, Philippines. Signed with the President of Orisco Philippines, Mr. Jesse Rojas, and the Secretary General of Orisco International, Mr. Romino Marzucchi. So, Roger, nagsapoy itong papel na punong-puno po ng mga puso ng lahat po ng... So, QR code, nakasama mo po ang buong Orisco International sa papel po ito. Maraming salamat po. You're welcome. Thank you po. Thank you po. Maraming salamat po kayo, Rod. Thank you po sa Roger. Go lang tayo ng go. Apo. So we're done with episode 1 and episode 2. Mamaya po ay magkikita po tayo sa ganap na 1.30. Meron po tayong 1 hour break. Pwede na po tayong mag-launch at huwag po nating kakalimutan na mag-subscribe sa ating YouTube channel at pakitigla din po ang notification bell para sa update ng ating mga activities. Kamabit, meron pa po ba tayong other occupants? So, yun po ulit, magkita-kita po ulit tayo mga mm-hmm. F-130. At huwag pong kalimutan, ulitin ko po si Nato Tarwar, kaya tayo po ay mag-subscribe sa YouTube channel ng Wisp Mobility's Manila Office. At uh, makikita po ninyo lagi doon si Sir Roger. Hindi lamang po ang uh, OIS ka. So, Kuya Roger po ay uh, isang, kung siya po sinasabing pride ng sagay, it's one of the pride of OIS ka. Siyempre naman. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Roger. So, see you at 1 o'clock. Pero mag-exact, uh, exactly 1.30 mag-start ang ati as speaker. So, magre-ready tayo ng 1 o'clock. So, see you later.
人と共に働きながら安定した食料生産と農業発展を目指して活動現地にモデル農場を開設し農業の改良普及に努めましたこの経験からある教訓が見えてきたといいます当時を経験した第2代オイスカインターナショナル総裁中野よし子はこのように語っていますまず食,食べるものが大事だとそれを自分たちで作るということこれをあのそしてまあそれが自助努力っていうそういうつながっていくんですけど。自助努力自分たちの食べるものを持続的に作るためには自分たちで努力して作らなければならないと痛感しましたそのために農村の中で青年リーダーの育成に力を注ぐことにしたのですグラスルーツ自立に向けた人づくり1960年代後半オイスカは自立した青年リーダーを育てるためまず国内外に研修センターを設け独自の農業研修の中で人づくり活動を開始海外から研修生を受け入れるために日本でも西日本四国中部富山研修センターが開設され周辺地域の住民が参加する形での国際協力活動も始まりました。1969年には財団法人オイスカ産業開発協力団の設立が日本政府から認可されました現在は公益財団法人オイスカとして発展しています1974年6月初代総裁中野与之助王の請求に伴い中野よし子がオイスカインターナショナル第2代総裁に就任することになりましたしかしちょうどその頃からアジア諸国で青年たちによる反政府運動が無視できない展開を見せていましたアジアの将来に不安を抱いた中野総裁はある方向性を見いだしましたその若者の力をこのそんな政治活動じゃなくって今私どうも言ってるふるさとづくりになるんですけどコミュニティディベロップメント自分たちの地域のを良くする発展するそういうことに若いエネルギーを注ぐようにあのできないものかっていうことで始めたのがあの。青年フォーラムなんですよねアジア太平洋地域開発青年フォーラムアジアの青年たちをバンコクに呼び集め反政府運動に傾いていた彼らのパワーを農業の活性化へと導きある大きなプロジェクトを展開していくことになったのですラブグリーン木を植えることの大切さ。1970年代後半に入るとアジア各地で伐採された木材が日本などに大量に輸出され森林が減少しそのまま放置されたのですそのため洪水や干ばつにより安定した食料生産が危機に見舞われましたそこで1980年8回目の青年フォーラムがコロンボで開催されアジア太平洋緑化宣言を発信し植林活動を開始ラブグリーン運動の始まりでしたこれはあのもう間違ってなかったですねもう環境問題の始まりですからねそしてそれからですよもう植林植林植林って言ってまあ青年たちともうオイスカもそれにこう同じ。流れになってでうちもプロジェクトいろんな国にありますけどもあの職人をやるようになったオイスカは1980年日本国内で苗木一本の国際協力を立ち上げて
森林減少の危機にある途上国の現状を伝え全国規模で募金活動を展開しました日本から有志たちがアジア各地に出かけて地域住民と共に植林を行う動きが始まり農業ボランティアに続き植林ボランティアの活動も始まりましたしかし再び現実の厳しさに直面することとなったのです木を植えるとかね木を育てるっていうか意識全然ないあの日当日当もらう目的で来るもんですから貧困の方がもうあの大きいんですよね、まあ、そういうことで大人たちに「木を植えなさい」って言っても「植える」っていう意識あのいくらくれるという、まあ、そういうことになっちゃう木に対する意識って育たないそれで子どもの森へ行ったわけですよ。子どもの森計画子どもたちが緑を大切にする気持ちを育む。ラブグリーン運動で人々の価値観を徐々に変えていくことが大事だと痛感したオイスカは子どもの頃から自然と森に親しむことの大切さを学ばせる運動を始めましたこれが1991年に始まった子どもの森計画です子どもたち自身が苗木を植え育てていくことを実践して自然を愛する心緑を大切にする気持ちを養いながら自分たちの村地域そして自分たちの国の緑化を進めていこうという活動です子どもの森計画の一例を覗いてみましょうこちらは南インドのある小学校ですこの学校ではさまざまなクラブの中にオイスカラブグリーンクラブというものがあります子どもたちは学校の周りで植林活動を行っています地域の中心である学校に活動の拠点を置くことで活動が教師や親そしてコミュニティへと広がりを見せたのですパキスタン第二の都市ラホールこちらの小学校でも子どもの森計画は行われていましたは日本で1年間研修を受けたラナさんパキスタンの大学で環境学を学んでいたラナさんは日本で有機農業を学びましたいい研修を終えふるさとへ帰り今は地元の子どもたちに森の大切さを伝えていく活動を行っています。子どもたちは絵で森の大切さを表現しています。ああ、私大切と思いましたね。まあ西日本センターでもあいっぱい子どもたちが行きますね。行きますとちょっと農業のこととか環境のことを勉強しますね。だから。学校の子どもたちに教えますは一番大切と思いますね。だから、おいつかパケさんと私、えー、CFP のことと一緒にゴミのことあ、いつもここに行って、この、えー、よりプログラムをやりますね。子どもの森計画は2011年で20年目を迎え、27の国と地域で4000を超える学校が参加しています。この活動はアジアを越え太平洋地域南米アフリカへと広がりを見せていますふるさとづくり母なる地球は人類のふるさと子どもの森計画を続けることである良い変化が
タイの高校生の話に中野総裁は感激しました高校出たらあのど,こどこへ行くのって言って,言って大学行くって言ってで,で大学出たらその後どうするのって言って言ったらあの家へかあの元へふるさとへ帰ってそしてもっとあの子供たちに教えてもっといいふるさとにするんだってそういう答えがね返ってきて私本当に嬉しかったですねもういつかはこれだって思ったんですよねでそれが78人の高校生集めて私聞いたんですそしたらみんなが手を挙げるんですよねそうだそうだって言って。子供の森計画で地域を変えていくことができましたその教訓を得て大石川は21世紀に入り自分たちのふるさとづくりをしっかり行っていくことの重要性を感じました全ての人々がさまざまな違いを乗り越えて共存し地球上のあらゆる生命の基盤を守り育てる世界を目指して設立された大石川その理念を実現するためにこれからの未来人間の生活の根本となるふるさとを地道にしっかりと作っていきます本部を日本に置き「おいすか50年の歩み」。オイスカは本部を日本に置き現在27の国と地域に組織を持つ国際 NGO1961 年10月6日に設立され世界の空は一つ全ての人々がさまざまな違いを乗り越えて共存し地球上のあらゆる生命の基盤を守り育てる世界を目指して作られました。1995年には国連経済社会理事会より NGO として最高位の諮問資格であるジェネラルに認定され半世紀を経た現在はアジア太平洋南米地域を中心に農村地域開発や環境保全活動に力を入れ青年が地域のリーダーとなれるように研修を通して人づくりを行っています。はい、これすごいな、はいはいはい、すごく大きいですねこれ雪で作ったつまるですね、うん、100% 雪ですねこれは全部雪の業をやってみました、はい、それはワイナールのスペシャルだスペシャルですオイスカから学び立派な地域のリーダーとなった人たちは各国で活動していますそんなオイスカが誕生した背景とは第二次世界大戦が終わり広大な焼け野原を前にした日本国民が戦後復興へ向け一心不乱に突き進みましたその結果目覚ましい復興を遂げ高度経済成長期を迎えた日本は物質的にとても豊かになっていきましたそんな時代のさなか後にオイスカを創設する中野与之助王はある思いを抱きました日本人は物質的な豊かさを得ることはできたかもしれないがその代償として日本人が本来持っていた精神面の豊かさが見られなくなってきたのではと九州産業産業精神というのは快適的にあり精神的にありということであって。そうしてこれはいいようにできているものであります。この精神はすなわち宇宙の意志であるのである。人間としての大使命がこれであることを知らねばならないと思うのであります。えー、この産業というもの,の、そしてこの産業精神というものの本当のこれを理解すると。で、産業生活ということを行わなければいかない。その産業生活を行えば自然に、えー、その彼というものは樹になるで産業というものは種になる1961年5月から中野与之助王の呼びかけで世界各地の有識者を集めて
精神文化国際会議が開催されましたこれには多くの賛同者が出席この会議をきっかけとして人間の精神を豊かにすることを目指す精神文化国際機構が誕生しましたそれはやがてオイスカインターナショナルに発展し中野与之助王が初代総裁に就任することになったのですフーードファースト人が飢えることなく生きるために1960年代中頃アジア各地で干ばつが継続的に発生し何十万人もの餓死者が出ることになりましたそこでオイスカはまず食料を生み出す農業が大切だという考えのもと農業協力に着手したのです農業に精通した日本人のボランティアを募りインドを皮切りにフィリピンバングラデシュなどに派遣しました彼らは農村へ入り現地の人々と共に働きながら安定した食料生産と農業発展を目指して活動現地にモデル農場を開設し農業の改良普及に努めましたこの経験からある教訓が見えてきたといいます当時を経験した第2代オイスカインターナショナル総裁中野よし子はこのように語っていますまず食,食べるものが大事だとそれを自分たちで作るということ、まあ、これをあの。そしてまあそれが自助努力っていうそういうつながっていくんですけど自助努力自分たちの食べるものを持続的に作るためには自分たちで努力して作らなければならないと痛感しましたそのために農村の中で青年リーダーの育成に力を注ぐことにしたのですグラスルーツ自立に向けた人づくり1960年代後半オイスカは自立した青年リーダーを育てるためまず国内外に研修センターを設け独自の農業研修の中で人づくり活動を開始海外から研修生を受け入れるために日本でも西日本四国中部富山研修センターが開設され周辺地域の住民が参加する形での国際協力活動も始まりました1969年には財団法人オイスカ産業開発協力団の設立が日本政府から認可されました現在は公益財団法人オイスカとして発展しています1974年6月初代総裁中野与之助王の逝去に伴い中野よし子がオイスカインターナショナル第2代総裁に就任することになりましたしかしちょうどその頃からアジア諸国で青年たちによる反政府運動が無視できない展開を見せていましたアジアの将来に不安を抱いた中野総裁はある方向性を見いだしましたその若者の力をこのそんな政治活動じゃなくって今私どうも言ってるふるさとづくりになるんですけどコミュニティディベロップメント自分たちの地域のを良くする発展するそういうことに若いエネルギーを注ぐようにあのできないものかっていうことで始めたのが。あの青年フォーラムなんですよねアジア太平洋地域開発青年フォーラムアジアの青年たちをバンコクに呼び集め反政府運動に傾いていた彼らのパワーを農業の活性化へと導きある大きなプロジェクトを展開していくことになったのですラブグリーン木を植えることの大切さ1970年代後半に入ると
アジア各地で伐採された木材が日本などに大量に輸出され森林が減少しそのまま放置されたのですそのため洪水や干ばつにより安定した食料生産が危機に見舞われましたそこで1980年8回目の青年フォーラムがコロンボで開催されアジア太平洋緑化宣言を発信し植林活動を開始ラブグリーン運動の始まりでしたこれはあのもう間違ってなかったですねもう環境問題の始まりですからねそしてそれからですよもう植林植林植林って言ってまあ青年たちともうオイスカもそれにこう同じ流れになってでうちもプロジェクトいろんな国にありますけどもあの職人をやるようになったオイスカは1980年日本国内で苗木一本の国際協力を立ち上げて森林減少の危機にある途上国の現状を伝え全国規模で募金活動を展開しました。日本から有志たちがアジア各地に出かけて地域住民と共に植林を行う動きが始まり農業ボランティアに続き植林ボランティアの活動も始まりましたしかし再び現実の厳しさに直面することとなったのです木を植えるとかね木を育てるとか意識全然ないあの日当日当もらう目的で。来るもんですから貧困の方がもうあの大きいんですよね、まあ、そういうことで大人たちに「木を植えなさい」って言っても「植える」っていう意識あのいくらくれるという、まあ、そういうことになっちゃう木に対する意識って育たないそれで子どもの森へ行ったわけですよ。子どもの森計画子どもたちが緑を大切にする気持ちを育むラブグリーン運動で人々の価値観を徐々に変えていくことが大事だと痛感したオイスカは子どもの頃から自然と森に親しむことの大切さを学ばせる運動を始めましたこれが1991年に始まった「子どもの森計画」です子どもたち自身が苗木を植え育てていくことを実践して自然を愛する心緑を大切にする気持ちを養いながら自分たちの村地域そして自分たちの国の緑化を進めていこうという活動です。こちらは南インドのある小学校ですこの学校ではさまざまなクラブの中にオイスカラブグリーンクラブというものがありますこどもたちは学校の周りで植林活動を行っています地域の中心である学校に活動の拠点を置くことで活動が教師や親、そしてコミュニティへと広がりを見せたのです。パキスタン第二の都市ラホール。こちらの小学校でも子どもの森計画は行われていました。彼は日本で1年間研修を受けたラナさんパキスタンの大学で環境学を学んでいたラナさんは日本で有機農業を学びましたいい研修を終えふるさとへ帰り今は地元の子どもたちに森の大切さを伝えていく活動を行っています。子どもたちは絵で森の大切さを表現しています
私大切と思いましたね、まあ、西日本センターでもあいっぱい子供たちが行きますね行きますとちょっと農業のこととか環境のことを勉強しますねだから学校の子供たちに教えますは一番大切と思いますねだからアイスカパケさんと私、えー、CFP のことと一緒にゴミのことあいつもここに行ってこのよりプログラムがやりますね子どもの森計画は2011年で20年目を迎え27の国と地域で4000を超える学校が参加していますこの活動はアジアを超え太平洋地域南米アフリカへと広がりを見せていますふるさとづくり母なる地球は人類のふるさと子どもの森計画を続けることである良い変化がタイの高校生の話に中野総裁は感激しました高校出たらあのど「どこへ行くの?」って言って「また大学行く」って言ってで,で大学出たら「その後どうするの?」って言って言ったら。あの家へかあの元へふるさとへ帰ってそしてもっとあの子どもたちに教えてもっといいふるさとにするんだってそういう答えがね返ってきて私本当に嬉しかったですねもういつかはこれだって思ったんですよねでそれが78人の高校生集めて私聞いたんですそしたらみんなが手を挙げるんですよね「そうだそうだ」って言って。子供の森計画で地域を変えていくことができましたその曲を得て大塚は21世紀に入り自分たちのふるさとづくりをしっかり行っていくことの重要性を感じました全ての人々がさまざまな違いを乗り越えて共存し地球上のあらゆる生命の基盤を守り育てる世界を目指して設立された大塚その理念を実現するためにこれからの未来人間の生活の根本となるふるさとを地道にしっかりと作っていきます
さと今地球上ではさまざまな社会問題が起こり地球に住む我々人類の生活を脅かしていますそんな時代にオイスカはあることを目指しています。キーワードはふるさと作りですね。でふるさと、小さいふるさとから。国全体もふるさとだし。じゃあ世界人類のみんなの共通のふるさとは地球ですよね。まだ当分地球離れて。あの人類の住みかは。な、ないですから。<笑>オイスカは。人類共通のふるさとづくりのために3つのテーマを掲げました地域開発オイスカは人々がふるさとで持続的に生活していくための産業づくりを目指します国づくりの基礎は農業人が飢えることなく生きられるよう農業技術指導や人材の育成で地域開発を行うことにより持続可能なふるさとを作りますの再生保全が欠かせません人間は地球上の生命の一部であり地球上の命あるあらゆるものと共存していくことが大切ですそのためにオイスカはすべての生命と調和した社会を築いていくことを目指します森林の再生、保全はもちろん海岸のマングローブ植林やサンゴ礁の保全を行うことでより良い環境づくりを行っていきます教育ふるさとを大切にする人づくりのための教育も欠かせません教育は地域の産業発展に不可欠な要素となりますオイスカが考える教育は研修や体験活動を通して学ぶということですオイスカは農業などを通じた人材育成や子どもたちによる植林活動を継続していくことにより国づくりのリーダーとなる人材やふるさとを守り続ける人材を育てていきます地域開発、環境保全、教育オイスカはこの3つの要素で真のふるさとづくりを目指していきますそしてふるさとづくりによって未来を明るくすることができると信じています多様な生物と人間が共存していかないとやっぱりこの未来はありえないと、まあ、そういう観点からですねオイスカとしてはあの50年後もですねこのオイスカの定義するこのふるさとっていうね要するに地球は一つの、ね、人類のふるさとなんだと、まあ、そういう認識のもとにですね、まあ、世界各国に、えー、今オイスカのふるさとということをですね発信していこうと。リコじゃなくてリタリタをやるとね自分に返ってくるんですよね。あの決してそのあの損得じゃなくってねそういうことを私は活動と一緒に世界発信していきたい、うん、人類全体のふるさとは母なる地球です天を仰げば国境の壁がなくなり大自然の中で生かされていることへの感謝の心が浮かび上がります海川などの自然、人間、動植物、すべての命がつながり合って生きています。理想のふるさとを作る、それこそがオイスカの願いであります。
Hello po. Good afternoon, Mama Beth. Nakamute po yan. Good afternoon po, Mama Beth. Good afternoon sa ating mga estudyante at mga participants sa iba't ibang panig ng ating mga. Good afternoon po, Mama Beth. Good afternoon, Sir Mark. At sa ating mga participants. Oh. Oh. Kumusta yun po natin ang ating mga participants? Yes po. Na-excite na ako sa ating uh, third episode, Mama Beth. Ngayon po, acknowledge po muna natin ang ating mga kasama. Yes, sir. Nakaantabay po sa ating YouTube live stream. And sa mga kakapasok lamang po sa ating uh, YouTube live stream, mangyari lamang po na isulat natin ang ating mga type natin, ating mga pangalan, ang school natin, kung anong grade level tayo, at uh, region kung saan po tayo kami. So, good afternoon kay uh, Sil John Bumapak. Yan. Good afternoon daw po, Ma'am Mabit. Good afternoon, R.G. Labanon. Si Rhea Christine Lopez. Good afternoon po, watching from Catalino Gonzales Elementary School, Kapalonga, Camarines, North. Yan. Hello po, Ma'am. Good afternoon po sa inyo dyan. Good afternoon po kay Laika Abubo. Yan. So, maraming salamat po ating mga kasamahan, mga mga teachers, mga coordinators, kasama rin ang ating mga participants. Siyempre, hindi nakamahalagad na umatid ngayon. Ating mga sudyante, mula grade 5 hanggang grade 10, mga mga ganyan. That is Opel Bragado. Yan po. Watching from Sausau Elementary School, Davao de Oro. Yan. La layo ng kanilang ano ma, ma mamabit. Ang Opo, kanilang school. Davao. Okay. Yes, ang ating mga active participants mula sa Davao. Maski nung ating first national webinar po natin, mamamit, marami rin tayong mga teachers na umatid mula sa Sausau Elementary School. Yes, pakasalamat po kami sa inyo po pagbibigay ng oras para po sa gawain nito. Mga ma'am, salamat po. Shoutout na rin po doon sa principal na i-invite ang ating mga teachers na mag-join sa ating WISCA CM webinar series. Yan. Si Ella Abubo, good afternoon po. Still watching pa rin po. Yan. Good afternoon wow. po from Mabini Elementary School. Si Jas, si Jay Tamin, Asiatic. Yan. So, may mga kasamahan pa rin po tayong mga nanonood mula sa Yesmo, Orreña, Elementary School, Kapalonga, Camarines, Norte. Yan. Watching from ano ba, Mendoza, from Yesmo, Orreña, Grade 6, Pupil. Yan. A fruitful afternoon, wala kay Ma'am Gladys, open, lagado. Good afternoon po, Ma'am Gladys. Yan. Huwag po natin kakalimutan tayo ay mag-subscribe sa ating YouTube channel. I-type lamang po natin ang Uwiska Philippine at i-like lang po i-subscribe uh, lamang po natin at i-click po natin ang notification bell para po sa mga updates ng ating activities na Uwiska CFP program. Okay yes, po, sir. Mama Beth? Opo, so uh, ating pooling hinihiling sa ating pong mga participants na uh, pakisuyo po na ating pong i-subscribe subscribe po sa ating uh, YouTube channel at like din po ito. So may bumati po dito pa shout out po, shout out kay Joel, galing po kay Miss RG Dabanon. Good afternoon po, watching from Delphine MJ Terabes Elementary School po. Galing po kay Miss Carla Alejandra Alejo. Thank you po sa Quezon City po. Yes po, Maka so shout out po dyan. Thank <laughs> Kay Ma'am Regina Custodio, yan, taga-Delphine. 
pagka-division yes, namin sa Pugyan Mamang. Yes, so Ma'am Rihina, kami po ay inyong uh, bantayan at kami po ay makakarating sa inyo pong school bago po matapos sa buwan na ito. So please yes, expect us, kasama po si Sir Mark, syempre. Yan, si Sir Robert Lee Villanueva. Good afternoon, pa-shoutout po sa lahat ng participants ng Grade 5 Rizal ng Delphi M. Geraldes Elementary. Wow. Good afternoon, Sir Robert. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon po sa inyo. Yes, at magandang hapon po. Kaling po kay Mr. John Manuel Rubigan. Sir, magandang hapon po. Yan, dumadami na sila mamabit. Bumabit yes. po ang ating mga participants after natin ng ating lunch yes. break. Opo, so, so nakain ko po ito. Galing po kay Ma'am Ma or uh, Sir Arlan Melendres of, of uh, Danlagan Elementary School sa Padre Burgos, Quezon. Magandang hapon po. Thank you for watching. Good afternoon, Sir Arlan. Yan, si Ma'am Christine. Kaya at kasama na natin si Ate Christine. Yes. Good afternoon po yes. mula sa Benguer. Yes. Ati po pinakamasipag po. na coordinator ng Benguer. Yan, namimiss ko na yung luto ni Ma'am Christine na mga gulay. Yan. Good yes. afternoon po, Ma'am Christine. Good afternoon, good afternoon Ate Christine, ang iyong salad. Radish. Labano, Pickles. Yung labanos po. Opo. Opo labanos. At yung mga fresh, uh, fresh juices niya po na piniprepare. Yan. Good afternoon from Cantin, Villarasa. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon kay Chanel Lorraine Perlas. Yan. At Tara from Benguet National High School. Yan. So, may mga kasama tayong mga estudyante natin mula grade 5 hanggang grade 10 na junior high school student mula sa iba't ibang panig ng ating bansa. Yan. So, napakaswerte po ninyo dahil nakapag-join po tayo ng ating uh, national webinar series kung saan ang ating mga resource speakers ay talaga naman mga high profile at napakagagaling ng mga speakers na in-invite po ng uwings ka. Di ba mamaber? Yes, sir. At talaga pong binibigay natin ng mga magagaling sa mga magagaling ng mga speakers po para po sa kagalingan po, lalo na po ng aming mga learners, sa, lalo na po sa panahong ito. Yes, mamabit. Yung iba po sa atin, mga naka-attend sa ating uh, national uh, seminar sa Beba Biscaya, namimiss na nila ang Lopez Farm. Yan, kung saan, pwede silang makaikot doon sa Park Dr. Mario at yung swimming pool doon sa may taas ng bundok. Yes, sir. So, kung po pwede na po tayo, uh, ini-invite po namin ang lahat na makiisa po sa mga gawain at, at ang ating pong venue ay doon po sa tuktok ng bundok sa Barangay Kira, Aritao, Nueva, Vizcaya. Okay, so marami na po ba? Marami na po tayong mga participants para po sa katanungan at meron po tayong papremyo. So huwag pong kakalimutan, cellphone number, pangalan po ng school at syempre pangalan po ng kalahok. <coughs> Ready na ba kayo? Ready na ba kayo? Ready na ba kayo? Ayan, mamabit. Opo. So, sir, ready na po ba? Ready na po ba kayo? Ready na ba kayo? Para sa ating kong... Patanungan para sagutin. Yes po. At nakikita ko po ang ating mga participants ay nakaready na po ngayong hub na ito. So, no. babatiin po po din natin ang ating mga participants, ang ating mga teachers at mga coordinators. Nagpagandang hapon po and welcome back to our 2020 
Uwiska Children's Forest Program Second National Webinar Series with the theme Nurturing Good Moral Values Among the Children and Approach to New Normal. Yan po, mababit at ready-ready na ang ating mga participants. At ngayon po ay meron kami inihandang papremyo sa ating mga yes, uh, participants na naka naka-live stream sa ating YouTube channel. Okay? So, ipa-flash na po namin yung, yung, uh, yung ating mga katanungan. Ang gagawin lang po natin ay magsasagot lang tayo sa comment box. Ilalagay natin ang tamang sagot at ang inyong cellphone number. Ulitin ko, ilalagay ang tamang sagot at cellphone number. At ipa-flash natin at tatawagan natin, maski saan man po kayong panit ng ating bansa, ay tatawagan namin kayo. So, first question, Kuya Miggy. What does Japanese word Purosato mean? Ulitin ko ha. What does the Japanese word Purosato mean? A. Family B. Volunteerism C. Travel Letter D. Home Yan. Sige, meron kayong 5 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Okay, pa-plus natin ang tamang sagot, Kuya Miki. Ang tamang sagot ay letter D. Okay. Ang ibig sabihin ng kursato ay O. Date na natin sa ating live comment kung sino ang nakakuha ng tamang sagot. Yan. Letter D. Yan. Correct. Tatatawagan so, natin ito ha. Pag ready nyo yung mga cellphone. is na marami ako nakikita mga tamang sagot. Pero tatawag tayo ng isa. Marami nakita ko. So, paki-ready ang cellphone, paki-sagot, yung tawag ko. Kaya lang, kinancel. Pero sige, ibibigay na natin ang papremyo kay Ella Abubo. Correct. Okay. Sige, next question na tayo, Kuya Migi. Siya makontak. <laughs> next question. Where is the Owiska International Headquarters located? Yan. Titin ko. Where is the Owiska International Headquarters located? A. Kyoto, Japan. B. Nagoya, Japan. C. Tokyo, Japan. Letter D. Manila, Philippines. Meron kayong 5 seconds para sagutan. 5. Four. Two. One. The answer is letter. Tignan natin ang tamang sagot. Okay, natawagan natin ha. The answer is Tokyo, Japan. Last 2019, nabigyan naman ng pagkakataon na makapisik sa headquarters ng uh, Uwiska International sa Tokyo, Japan. So, tatawagan natin yung may tamang sagot. Sabi ko po sa inyo, ilalagay natin ang cellphone number kapag nagsagot po tayo sa ating mga katanungan. So, ito nakita ko. Ito pong kakanselin yung aking tawag, ha? At nakalive po tayo ngayon sa ating YouTube channel. Okay. So, yan. Sir Mark, tawagan po natin kung sinong nanalo. Apo ah, ma'am, ito po, sinatawagan nanalo, po ma'am. Yes sir, tawagan po si si Mark Samuel de la Trinidad. Ayan po, nagririnig na po. Ma'am, ma'am, mabit naririnig natin. Hello? Hello? Hello po, good afternoon. Nanalo po kayo dahil tama ang inyong sagot. Pwede ko po bang malaman kung ano pong pangalan ninyo? Hello? Ayan, ano pong pangalan natin? Ayan po. Taga saan po tayo? Marina Elementary School. Sa Camarines Norte, Ma'am Mabit! Ayan, congratulations po at nanalo po kayo mula sa Uwiska, Manila Office. Ayan. Ang headquarters po natin ay matatagpuan sa Tokyo, Japan. Thank you po, Ma'am. Ayan. Okay po, natawagan ko na Ma'am Mabit ang ating second winner 
At ang ating pangatlong tanong po ay si Ay, ma- si. Ah, ito po ang ating pangatlong tanong. Okay. Give three examples of plants and species. O, oh, maski sino ang pwedeng magsagot sa ating comment box. Okay? Paunahan po, sir. Paunahan. Sige. Huwag pong kalimutan ng inyo pong cellphone number. Kuya Miki, flash natin yung ano ha, yung sa comment nila. Pwede natin gawing banner dito at pangkawagan natin. Okay, pili tayo randomly ng ating mananalo na magbibigay ng tatlong example ng kanilang mga halaman sa kanilang mga, mga plant species. Lalong-lalo na ngayon, mamabit, usong-uso na ngayon ng mga plantito at plantita. Opo, sir. Ayan. Kaya pa po, kahit saan ka tumingin, eh, andyan po ang mga halaman. Ang mamahal na po ngayon ng mga halaman, binibenta na ngayon. Dati hindi pinapansin, eh, ang mamahal na po, binibenta online. Yes, sir. Ayan, may napili na po ba tayo na nagbigay ng tamang sagot? Tatawagan po natin. Ayan, tignan natin ito ha. 0907. 0, 10, 0, 10, 0, 10, 0, 10, 0, 10, 0, 10, 0, 10, 0, 10, 0, 10, 0, 10, 0, 10, 0, 10, 0, 10, 0, 10, 0, 10, 0, 10, 
Good afternoon. Good afternoon po. Nakamute po. Ma'am, excuse me po, ma'am. Nakamute po, ma'am. Okay, sir. Okay, very repeat ka din. Thank you. Thank you po. Okay. So, the objective, at the end of the presentation, you will be able to define COVID-19, enumerate measures to prevent this disease, Third, demonstrate proper hand washing and recognize ways to maintain personal hygiene. My discussion will focus on how to protect yourself and others against COVID-19. Next, please. Next, the book. This slide shows the current statistics of coronavirus in the world and in our country. I present this slide not to scare you, but to alarm you to be mindful on how you can protect yourselves and, uh, and others against this devastating pandemic disease. As of September 22, 2020, yesterday, the cases of active coronavirus in the world is 31,620,347 and in our country, 293,388. Next, please, Paul. Next slide. So what is COVID-19 coronavirus? Coronavirus are a group of contagious flu-like viruses. can be fatal, meaning it can cause death. COVID-19 is the disease caused by a new type of coronavirus that is spreading quickly around the world. Early symptoms include fever, cough, and difficulty in breathing similar to other flu illnesses. The characteristic of virus is that it needs to lead to a host in order to survive. So they cannot live without a host. So they can multiply once entering the cell of the body. So they are self-limiting, meaning it can uh, cure naturally and needs no treatment. So kahit di gamutin, but of course with a strong immune system so that our body will fight for it. So since this is a virus, you should not take antibiotic because antibiotic is for bacterial infection. The most affected system of our body is the respiratory system, which is the system responsible for our oxygenation, so ating paghinga. Next, please. Take the extra step to safety. This is to remind you that in the absence of vaccine, preventing its spread from person to person is vital to reduce the pandemic's impact on people's lives, health, livelihood, and the healthcare system. So it is important to protect ourselves and others, not to have the disease, as well as to prevent the spread of the microorganism and how to prevent COVID-19. The best way to prevent illness, this illness is to avoid being exposed to this virus. The virus is thought to spread mainly from one person to person between people who are in close contact with one another or within or about six feet. 
through respiratory droplet produced with an infected person's cough, sneeze, or talk. So, yung, may, yung mayroon COVID-19, yung ubo niya, yung kanyang lawi na tumalbog. This droplet can land in the mouth or nose of people who are nearby or possible be inhaled into the lungs. Some recent studies have suggested that COVID-19 may be spread by people who are not showing symptoms or what we call asymptomatic, but they are capable of transmitting the disease. People may also become infected but by touching their mouth, nose, or eyes after touching surfaces contaminated with the virus. The virus may survive on surfaces for a few hours or up to several days. Next, please. To spread, to prevent the spread of COVID-19, everyone should wash your hands open. Hand washing is key to preventing coronavirus. Hand washing is also known as hand hygiene. It's the act of cleaning hands for the purpose of removing soil, dirt, and microorganisms. Must be done often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. The time it takes to sing the happy birthday song twice. Washing hands with plain soap and plain water kills viruses, but only if done thoroughly and often. Okay, maghugas ng kamay, lalo na pag kayo ay nasa mga public places or nag-block uh, ka ng iyong ilong, umubo, o kung meron kang sipon. Next please po. So, mahalagang maghugas ng kamay bago kumain o mag-prepare ng food, bago humawak sa iyong mukha, bago pagkatapos gumamit ng banyo, nasa public places ka, yan, nabagay ko na kanina kung ikaw imubo o may sipon, pagkatapos mong hawakan ng iyong mask, okay, sa mga nanay, pagkatapos magpalit ng diaper ng anak, o pagkatapos mag-alaga ng mga may sakit, o pagkatapos humawak sa mga hayop o ating mga alaga sa bahay. Next po. Ayun pong video, ma'am. The video of hand washing. Wala, may inaipot. Kasi ito yung naipot. Ito yung kasi pinadala ko sa kanila. Kasi mahirap na pag ako nag, ano na ako magulo. Pag ako yung nag-share. Thank you. 
interlock and move the hands back and forth. Rub the fingertips against the palm of the opposite hand. And rub the wrist and doing vice versa. So continue this motion for 30 seconds for each hand. And rinse the hands. dry the hands and arms with a clean towel from the cleanest area and discard the towel in the appropriate container. Turn up the water and use a new paper towel to grasp the hand-operated controls. Okay, sana na, uh, natunan nyo ang tamang paghuhugas ng kamay. Sa paghuhugas ng kamay, gamit ang sabon at malinis na tubig ay mabisang paraan para maiwasan ang mga sakit. Ito ang unang uh, depensa ng katawan laban sa COVID-19. Ang malamig at mainit na tubig ay pareho lamang ang uh, kagalingan upang malinis ang ating mga kamay. Kung hindi available ang, uh, ang malinis na tubig at sabon, maaring gumamit ng hand sanitizer na may 60% alcohol. So ilagay ito sa ating kamay, irab sa ating mga kamay, ihaplas hanggang sa matuyo. Hindi maaari nitong palitan ang paghuhugas ng kamay kung ang uh, kamay natin ay mayroong mantika. Next po. So iwasan natin umawak sa ating mga mata, ilong at bibig, lalo't higit hindi pa tayo naguhugas ng kamay. Maaaring mailipat ng ating maduming kamay ang mikrobyo o virus sa ating mata, ilong at bibig. Next po. Iwasan din natin na lumapit o dumikit sa ibang tao. Sa ating bahay, iwasan dumikit hanggat maaari mayroon tayong pagitan na anim na uh, talampakan o isang metro. Sa labas ng ating bahay, panatilihin natin ang distansya o social distancing ng anim na purgada o isa hanggang dalawang metro sa ibang tao. At lumayo tayo sa mga taong mayroong karamdaman kahit hindi COVID-19. Next po. So takpan natin ang ating ilong at bibig sa pamagitan ng isang mas. Ito ay proteksyon natin sa mga taong may infection tulad ng COVID-19. Kinakailangan tayo magsuot lalo tigit sa mga public places. So, bawal ang paglalagay ng mas sa mga batang may dalawang taon pababa at sa mga taong nahihirapang huminga o 
nagkukonvulsyon o nagsisisures o yung mga ba, mga taong hindi kaya maglagay at magtanggal ng mas. So paano pag tatanggal ng ating mas? So pag ang ating mas ay nagamit na, so tatanggalin natin sa ganitong pamamaraan. So tanggalin mula sa tainga, hawakan lamang doon sa string, ipold pabaliktad para yung madumi ang nasa loob at ang nasa labas yung galing sa atin. And then itapon yung mas sa mga bata uh, sa basurahan. So itama ng maayos, hindi wag itatapong kung saan-saan. Next po. Sa paggamit ng face shield, so ang uh, control for disease prevention ay hindi ito nire-recommenda. Pero kung kinakailangan sa paggamit ng face shield, so dapat nakatakip ang buong mukha. Hindi pwede maging substitute ang face shield sa face mask. Next po. So, paano ba natin lilinitsin ang ating face shield? Yan. So, hugasan daw ito, pwedeng ilubog sa tubig na maligamgam, sabunan, balawa, okay, sabunan, pwede natin puskusin ng malambot na spans o tela o soft towel. Balawan, pwede rin natin linisin sa pamagitan ng mga antibacterial wipes o paggamit ng 70% isopropyl alcohol. So, wag linisin ang face shield gamit ng matatapang na panlinis. Next po. So, ang ating gobyerno, ang Interagency Task Force or IATF, ay nagsabi na gamitin ang face shield kung sakali tayo ay pumupunta sa mga public places tulad ng palengke, kaya simbahan at ang DOLE or Department of Labor and Employment ay nagsabi ng mandat o nag, nagkaroon ng mandatory order sa paggamit ng face shield sa mga uh, workplaces, lalo tigit sa mga pampublikong mga sasakyan. So, another slide, one who maintains cleanliness keep away diseases. So, ito ay nag remind sa atin na panatilihin natin malinis ang ating katawan. Next po. So, ano ba yung personal hygiene? So, sa sa pananatili nating malinis ang ating katawan, may iwasan nating magkalat ng sakit o makakuha ng sakit. Ito ay simpleng pamamaraan para protektahan natin ang ating sarili, ganun din ang ating pamilya para makaiwas sa, sa sakit, lalo't higit sa COVID-19. Paano natin mapapanatili ang kalinisan ng ating katawan? So, yung ating Regular na paliligo, pagpapalit ng damit, yan, part yan ng ating personal hygiene. So, importante para maiwasan natin ang COVID-19, huwag nating hawakan ng ating mukha, lalo tugit kung tayo galing sa labas. Huwag hawakan ng ating mata, ilong at bibig kung hindi pa tayo naguhugas ng ating kamay. Huwag tayong umubo o maglabas ng ating sipon gamit ang ating kamay. Kung sakali at walang panyo o tisyo at kayo'y uubo o maglalabas ng sipon, gamitin ang gitnang bahagi ng ating siko at huwag tayong magdura sa ating mga sahig o kalsada. Panatilihin natin palagi ang distansya sa ibang tao na isang metro. Gamitin lagi tayong gumamit ng face mask, lalo tigit kung tayo ay nasa labas ng ating tahanan. So ang face mask, pwede yung ating malinis na cloth, yung surgical mask, o yung 
uh, KM95 na nabibili, takpan natin ang ating uh, ilong o bibig kung tayo ay uubo. Itabong mabuti ang ginamit natin tissue sa pagpunas ng ating sipon sa mga tamang lalagyan tulad ng basurahan. At pagkatapos, kailangan agad tayong maghugas ng kamay gamit ang tubig at sabon sa loob ng 20 minuto tulad na pinakita kanina sa video. Kung walang sabon at tubig, so pwede nating gamitin ang 70% alcohol. So, kailangan din natin bantayan ang ating kalusugan sa araw-araw. Kailangan maging alerto tayo sa mga sintomas ng COVID-19 tulad ng lagnat, uh, sipon, ubo, nahihirapang huminga na ito ay mga sintomas related sa COVID-19. Lalo tigit kung ikaw ay madalas na lumalabas ng bahay sa pupunta ka sa iyong trabaho, so kailangan maging alerto ka sa mga sintomas ng COVID-19 at panatilihin yung ating social distancing. At maging alerto rin tayo sa mga sintomas ng sakit na ito sa ating mga kasambahay. At kung kinakailangan, dalhin natin sa pinakamalapit na health facility o hospital kung meron tayong kasamahan na nagmamanifest uh, ng mga sintomas ng COVID-19. At kung meron tayong mga thermometer sa ating bahay, so ugaliin natin kumuha ng ating temperatura lalo kung meron tayong masamang pakiramdam. Subalit, huwag kukuha ng ating temperatura kung ikaw ay kagagali silang sa exercise o kakukuha mo, kainom mo lang ng gamot tulad ng acetaminophen. So ito po yung mga aking mga pinagkunan. Maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig. So God bless you always. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Sally. Tanong sa mo. Mayroon tanong. Sa ating po mga participants, pwede po tayong mag-message, mag-comment para po sa ating katanungan. Kung wala pong katanungan, ay tayo po ay uh, pupunta, uh, ibibigay na po namin ang floor para po kay Professor Villanueva. Anong po? 30 seconds. Ipo natin, post a comment para po sa inyong mga questions, kasagutan, at maghihintay po si Dr. Abu. Wala pong katanungan? No. I think, Ma'am Mabit, wala pong mga katanungan. Nagpapasalamat sila sa ating resource speaker na si Dr. Abuy sa pag-discuss kung paano natin ma-maintain ang good hygiene, lalong-lalo ng COVID-19 pandemic. Yan. So, Maraming maraming salamat, Dr. Aboy.
na mamabit, tatawagin na po ba natin ang kasunod na speaker? Okay, Yan, so sabi po ni Ma'am Ano, ni... Sir? Thank you daw po. Marami, akong, marami po ako nakikita mga comments, Ma'am. Puro thank you kay Dr. Aboy po sa kanyang yes, pag-share ng na kanyang talk po. Sige po. Sige po. Sabi Sige. po ni uh, Mark Harry Mendoza, thank you po. Uh, Jay Samid Asiatico, yan. Thank you po, Ma'am Aboy. Yan. Wala naman kay Reyna Nahera. Thank you po. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yan. Wala kay Asterio Den Pio. Thanks, to For, uh, from uh, Prestasyon, Emilia Den Pio. Yun. Amin naman na. <laughs> Yan, Ma'am Abit. Okay. So, wala na po ba? So, kung wala na po, kung wala pong katanungan, ay tayo pinada ko na, ibigay mo po natin, tawagan po natin. So, ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Professor Michelle Villanueva. Ma'am. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to speak with you this afternoon regarding the topic of maintaining good hygiene. And in connection with the first uh, discussion, I will be discussing with you about the topic cleaning around the home. Okay? So, the title is cleaning and hygiene tips to help keep the COVID-19 virus out of your home. From doing laundry to preparing meals, everyday measures to help protect your family. So dito, itatakal natin ano-ano yung mga dapat natin gawin kapag ka tayo ay nasa bahay. Hindi porket po ay tayo nasa bahay lang, ay tayo ay totally safe against COVID-19. So we have to uh, know all the precautions precautionary measures para tayo ay maging safe at malabanan natin ang COVID-19 virus. Okay? So, let's start with the first topic. Cleaning around the home. Okay. Cleaning and disinfecting high-touch surfaces in your home frequently is an essential precaution to lessen the risk of infection. So, ibig sabihin, um, kailangan nating matutunan paano ba ang tamang paglilinis ng ating mga gamit sa bahay at ano-ano yung mga dapat nating uh, unahin binisin kapag ka tayo ay nasa ating mga kanya-kanyang bahay. Dapat alam natin na hindi lahat ng tahanan ay magkakapareho. Siyempre, uh, may, may kanya-kanya tayong mga gamit na uh, nasa sa ating bahay at um, dapat alam natin na uh, very, co uh, very common sa ating bahay ay ano nga ba? Uh, like yung doorknobs, um, yung tables, chairs, yan. So, paano natin bilinisin ang mga gamit natin sa ating bahay? Ano ba ang ating na uh, dapat natin gamitin. So, usually, gumagamit tayo ng sabon, tubig, and aside from that, bumibili tayo ng mga uh, disinfectant products. So, kapag ka bumili po tayo ng mga disinfectant products, ug ugaliin po natin na basahin yung mga instructions na nakalagay sa label ng mga ito in order for us to uh, protect ourselves from uh, contaminating ourselves din. So, kumbaga, para maprotektahan natin yung, yung ating mga sarili, alimbawa, kasi kapag gumamit tayo ng mga disinfectant products, may mga chemicals po yung kasama. Eh kung kayo po ay may open wound at hindi, na, hindi tayo gumamit ng mga protective gears like gloves, pwede po tayong makontaminate doon. So, kailangan talaga na uh, ugaliin natin magbasa ng mga instructions paano natin properly gagamitin ang mga uh, disinfectant products na ito. Next po. Yan. High touch surfaces to clean and disinfect. Every home is not the same, but common high touch surfaces 
include door handles, tables, chairs, handrails, kitchen and bathroom surfaces, tops, toilets, light switches, mobile phones, computers, tablets, keyboards, remote controls, game controllers, and favorite toys. So, yun. Kapag ito nga po, gaya ng nasabi ko kanina, uh, hindi tayo magkakapareho ng, taha, ng bahay, ano po, pero may mga common things na natatagpuan sa ating mga tahanan. So, lalo tigit kapag uh, tayo nasa ating bahay, um, ay may mga kasama tayo mga bata. Ano po? Bata at mga senior citizens. So, sila po yung isa sa mga uh, prone, pinaka-prone sa pagkakandak ng COVID-19 virus. So, much better na marunong tayo mag-disinfect ng mga uh, madalas natin hinahawakan or ginagamit. Ano po, para hindi natin ma-spread yung virus around our homes. Next. What to use to clean and disinfect? If a surface is unclean or dirty, initial action is to clean it with soap or detergent and water. Then use a disinfectant product having alcohol of around 70% or bleach, vinegar, and the natural products are not suggested. Why do you think so that vinegar and natural products are not suggested? Kasi po, uh, kaya hindi sinasuggest yung paggamit natin basta-basta ng suka sa ating bahay para lang madisinfect yung mga, ba mga bagay na meron tayo sa ating tahanan kasi hindi pa po nagkakaroon ng uh, scientific basis kung talaga bang ang suka and other natural products like yung kalamansi or lemon lemon juice etc wala pa pong scientific basis kung talaga pong ito ba ay talagang effective na nakapag uh, nakakapatay ng virus ng uh, like itong coronavirus na ito ano po so much better na gumamit tayo ng mga disinfectant products na commonly ay sinasuggest po ng national authority Yung ano bang halimbawa na uh, common natin ginagamit dito sa ating bansa, yung Domex, Clorox, uh, ano po ba, Lyso. Yun, mga ganun po. Basta lamang po, pagkagagamit tayo ng mga disinfectant products, always uh, make sure na binabasa natin yung kanilang instructions para tayo din po sa ating sarili ay maging um, safe. Yun, next po. How to disinfect? It is vital or significant not to wipe cleaning solutions off as soon as you're up, you've applied to a surface. Various disinfectant products such as wipes and sprays need to stay wet on surface or a number of minutes in order to be effective. Constantly read the directions to ensure you're using the products as suggested and to avoid damaging delicate items such as mobile phones and other electronic devices. Think through using wipeable covers. For okay. So, yun. Uh, lagi po nating tatandaan ha, kapag ka po gamamit tayo ng disinfectant, uh, wag po natin agad-agad uh, pupunasan. Hayaan po natin muna siyang matuyo. Kasi po, doon po natin malalaman ang effectivity ng isang product na ating ginamit. At wag po, wag po natin, uh, wag po agad-agad tayo mag-decide na tuyuin uh, all the way gamit ang basahan. Ano po, let it dry for a few minutes para po maging effective ang, ang disinfectant na ito. Next is the uh, cleaning clothes. It is presently uncertain how long the COVID-19 virus can endure on public, but several items for clothing, uh, for se several items of clothing have plastic and metal elements on which it might give for limited hours to several days. Okay, so since hindi natin alam ganon nga pa katagal na kadikit yung virus dun sa ating dam, halimbawa sa ating damit na ginamit. So, in order for us to keep safe, dapat kapag kahalibawa galing tayo sa labas, pumunta tayo sa office, sa bangko, o kung saan man, pag uuwi tayo ng bahay, ugaliin po natin na uh, tanggalin ang ating mga ginamit na halibawa yung sapatos o chinelas. Huwag na natin ipapasok pa sa ating bahay kasi po, yun ang magdadala ng virus papasok. Hindi natin kasi sure kung tayo ba ay may daladala ng virus sa ating katawan. So, para lang ma 
uh, maging safe ang lahat ng mga kasama natin sa bahay. Ugali natin sa labas pa lang, alisin na natin yung mga ginamit natin. Sapatos, uh, pati yung bag, at kung ano man yung, halimbawa, pumunta tayo ng grocery, iwan na rin natin dun sa labas, then it is in fact po natin yon And then, after that, uh, kagaya ko, may kasama po akong baby sa bahay namin. So, hindi na muna po ako dumidiretso sa sala namin o kaya sa kwarto, dumidiretso agad ako sa toilet o sa CR para mag-change uh, ng clothes. Uh, but before that, I make sure na maliligo po ulit ako. Kasi uh, napaka-delikado kapag uh, may kasama kang bata o di kaya po ay may mga senior citizen kang kasama sa bahay. Para lamang po ito sa safety. Ano po, mahirap kasi sa panahon ngayon na magka, magkaroon ng COVID-19. Hindi talaga biro ang pagkalat ng virus na ito. Yun po. Next. Next po. Yan. Doing laundry at home. Teka lang po ha. Doing laundry at home. Um, first is to clean bed sheets, towels, and clothes frequently to avoid contamination. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan uh, madalas tayong naglalaba ng ating mga pinaggamitan. Towel, uh, bed sheets, and clothes. So, huwag na natin patagalin pa yan ng ilang buwan bago natin labhan. Kasi uh, napakarami ng... Uh, Masamang na idudulot ang COVID-19 virus. So, para lamang maiwasan ang pag uh, uh, ma, uh, na tayo madamay, ugaliin natin na malinis ang lahat ng ating ginagamit sa loob ng ating tahanan. Pangalawa, don't shake dirty laundry to lessen the probability of scattering the virus through the air. So, ibig sabihin po nito, kung tayo ay halimbawa at magtatanggal ng ating damit na ginamit, huwag na natin kailang, huwag na natin iwagayway pa. Ano po? Diretso na po ito sa lagayan natin ng mga madiduming gamit o may, kung meron tayong laundry basket para hindi na kumalat sa ating paligid yung virus. Third, rinse items with soap and detergent using the warmest proper wa uh, warmest water setting and dry items completely. Both steps aid to kill the virus. So, ibig sabihin, Uh, paggagamit, paglalabhan uh, na natin ang ating mga damit na ginamit, gagamitan natin syempre ng soap and detergent at hindi lamang basta-basta running water. Ano po? Kasi hindi matatanggal ang germs kapag hindi natin ito ginamitan ng soap or suggested detergent. Fourth, wash your hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand rub straight away after Kapag tatapos na tayo maglaba, tayo naman sa sarili natin, maghugas din tayo ng ating mga kamay gamit ang soap and water. Kasi it is the best way to fight this kind of virus. And last is wash down or disinfect your laundry bag and hamper also. Consider packing laundry in disposable bags. So ipig sabihin... Uh, yung mga pagka meron tayo sa bahay na laundry basket, di ba meron yung, uh, ito yung cover pa rin na tela. Uh, hindi natin yung patatagalin din na uh, basta lang lagay tayo ng lagay ng mga madibigay damit. Kailangan ugaliin din po natin binisin o labhan yung ating mga pinaglalagyan ng mga madudumi para hindi doon mas stop yung virus or germs or bacteria kung ano man. Ano po? Okay, next. Doing laundry outside your home. So ito naman kapag ka tayo ay, kasi ngayon ay uso na yung mga laundry shops. Yung mga busy persons, yung mga workaholic, wala nang time maglabas sa kanilang bahay. So ipinabayad na lamang nila sa mga laundry shops para ito ay malabhan o malinis. If you want to use laundry facilities outside of your home, take practical provisions. Organize laundry before leaving your home to help diminish the amount of time you spend outside. So, ibig sabihin, bago tayo pumunta sa mga laundry shops, naka-organize na, nakaayos na yung mga dadali nating madidiming gamit para hindi tayo maubos ang oras sa pag-stay outside. Kasi pagka nagtagal pa tayo, maaari tayo maka-adapt ng virus. Then, try to get a time when there are fewer people. Uh, try to go at a time. 
when there are fewer people. Kung baga, lalabas lang tayo sa pagkapagkaalam natin na kukunti lamang ang mga dumalabas sa oras na yun sa public. And then maintain physical distance of at least one meter from other people. So in case lamang na maraming tao sa labas, tayo nagkataon na pumunta sa laundry shop. So ugaliin natin at isaisip na meron tayong social distancing of about one meter from others. Next. Doing laundry outside your home, wear disposable gloves if, if available. Disinfect the surfaces of all machines you use and don't touch your face. So, pagay ng nas na nabanggit kanina, no, ugaliin natin gumamit ng uh, disposable gloves if available. Tapos, i-disinfect natin yon yung mga ginamit natin machineries. Tapos, wag na wag tayong uh, hahawak sa ating mukha. Kasi, for or, for your information, um, pinakapangunahing uh, dinadapuan ng virus po ay yung ating, nasa ating mata, nasa ating ilong, at nasa ating bibig. Kaya po, isa sa mga pangunahing precautions po ay yung hindi natin paghawak agad sa ating mukha. Basta unahin natin muna ang madisinfect yung ating mga nasa pagibig at maghugas ng kamay. For indoor laundry facilities, wait outside for your laundry to finish if you can and for your laundry, for, for your laundry at home. Ibig sabihin, kapag ka nasa loob naman tayo, no, gumamit tayo ng mga uh, indoor laundry facilities, hayaan natin matuyo yun sa, sa labas. Ano, wag, ta, wag natin madaliin na ang yung tao dun, kuhanin agad natin. Ano, pag alam natin basta pa, let it dry. Okay? Next. Doing laundry outside your home, wash your hands with soap and water for or use an alcoholic, alcohol-based hand rub immediately afterwards. Uh, wash or disinfect your laundry bag, hamper, as well, consider storing laundry in disposable bags. Yun, pag pwede tayong gumamit ng mga, kung wala tayong laundry bag or laundry basket, pwede tayong gumamit ng pag, uh, mga disposable bags. Yung kapag uh, contaminated na yung mga nilagay natin dun sa laundry bag na yun, pwede rin natin i-dispose yun, yung disposable bags na yun. In, if in case wala tayong laundry bag sa bahay. If you don't have access to laundry facilities, and wash your clothes at home with soap and detergent, and then use warmest appropriate water. So, kung wala tayong access o hindi tayong makapagpalabas sa o makapunta sa mga laundry shops or facilities, di sa bahay na lang tayo maglaba, but then always use your uh, soap and detergent, such as the detergent, in order to wash your clothes properly and clean your clothes with warmest appropriate water. Okay, next. Handling and preparing food. Ayan. Ito po kasi usong-uso yung mga nagpapadeliver, ano, lalo na po ngayon sa panahon ng COVID-19, naglipa na po yung mga online selling. Ano, may mga charge pag magpapadeliver tayo ng pagkain sa bahay. While at present, there is no evidence of people catching the COVID-19 virus from food or food packaging, it may be possible that people can become infected by touching a surface or object contaminated by the virus and then touching their face. So, ibig sabihin po, hindi naman uh, porke tayo ay nagpa-deliver ng ating mga in-order na pagkain sa ating bahay. Hindi, hindi po automatic na makukuha natin yung virus dun sa ating mga in-order na pagkain. Maaari po kasi yung mga delivery man, sila yung nagpa-conduct ng virus at maaaring doon tayo mahawa. So, para makaiwas po tayo doon, gagamit po tayo ng mask, face shield, at saka po, uh, maintain po natin yung 1 meter distance para po hindi tayo magkahawahan ng virus. Yun po ang naisipahiwatid ng hunting and preparing po. Next. Yan. Uh, in connection with this, the superior risk comes from being in close contact with the other people while outdoor food spending or receiving a food delivery as receiving any delivery in areas with local transmission. So it's significant to keep at this uh, distance of at least one meter from others, wear a public mask in public settings, and regularly wash your hands. 
at all times, good hygiene is essential when handling food to avoid any foodborne illnesses. So, once na tayo ay nakakuha na nitong mga in-order natin, ano po, ugaliin po natin gumamit ng mga food utensils. Huwag po tayong basta-basta lamang kakain ng mga in-order natin pagkain without washing our hands properly para po maiwasan natin yung foodborne illnesses. Okay? Next. Food packaging and handling precautions. Eliminate food from ready-made containers, place on a clean, clean plate, and dispose of the container. So, ibig sabihin, kapag bumili po tayo ng mga pagkain outside or nag-order po tayo, di pa po usually nakalagay po yun sa mga um, containers or tubs, di ba po? Kapag ka na-receive na po natin ng inside our home, Ugaliin po natin na ilipat yung mga yung laman ng pagka uh, ng container na yun sa isang clean plate para po maiwasan natin yung contamination. Packaging like cans can be wiped clean with a disinfectant before being opened or stored. Ugaliin din po natin na uh, kunasan muna yung ating mga biniling uh, products or items. Halimbawa, galing tayo, galing naman sa grocery yun. Uh, may mga may mga germs yon of course so pagka lalo na pagbibili tayo ng mga in-can na, na inumin wag po natin basta-basta lamang didiretso yung ating bibig para uminom ng mga in-can or bottled water punasan po muna, muna natin ang surfaces ng mga ito para po maalis yung mga germs or virus na nakadikit doon sa item wash and package produce such as fruit and vegetables carefully under running water. Yan, kapag bumili naman po tayo ng mga vegetables at fruits sa outside, uh, ugaling po natin na hugasan ito. Hindi, hindi natin gagamitan of course ng sabon and detergent kasi pagkain ito. But then, dapat ay pagkahugasan natin ng mga pagkain and vegetables nasa running water. Ibig sabihin yung tuloy-tuloy yung flow ng tubig. Hindi po yung stagnant water na nakatambak lamang sa isang container. Hindi po natin yung gagamitin kasi po pagkain ng ating ihugasan. Then, wash your hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand rub closely afterwards. After all these things, ugaliin pa rin natin ang paghuhugas naman ng ating mga kamay gamit ang sabon at tubig. Next. General food hygiene, hygiene tips. Use separate chopping boards to prepare raw meat and fish. Kapag ka magluluto tayo ng pagkain sa loob ng ating tahanan, dapat hindi sama-sama ang lahat ng mga uh, ingredients. Ano, lalo na kapag ka may mga raw meat and fish, tapos iahalo natin sa gulay at kung ano pa man. Kapag ka mga, yung mga ilaw pa, ano po, lalo na yung meat and fish galing sa palengke, madulian, dapat may separate siyang lagayan. At saka, pag, pag gagamit din tayo ng shopping foods, ano po, para po hindi maghalo-halo yung mga germs. Then, cook food to the suggested temperature. Iwasan natin yung mga pagluluto ng uh, half cook. Ano po, kasi maaaring nag, mayroon pa rin siyang uh, ano po, mayroon pa rin siyang germs na hindi pa rin totally namamatay. So, kailangan siguraduhin natin lutong ma, 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 o mabuti yung ating kakainin. Whenever possible, keep perishable items refrigerated or frozen and pay attention to product expiry dates. So, yung mga kinakailangan natin uh, ilagay sa refrigerator, uh, ilagay natin ng separate containers din, hindi basta natin ipapasok sa ref, dapat may kanya-kanya siyang lagayan and of course, lagi natin ugaliin kung yan ba ay pwede pang kainin. Kasi kung hindi, maaaring due date na yan, expired na or panis na, tayo naman ang magkakaroon ng sakit. Next. General food hygiene tips. Aim to recycle or dispose of food waste and packaging in proper and sanitary manner. Avoiding build up with which could invest, invite uh, pest. Ibig sabihin, kapag ka hindi na natin kailangan yung mga packaging or wrappers na mga binili nating item, itapon natin sa tamang basurahan. 
wag nating basta lamang itatapon sa kung saan-saan kasi gaya ng pinaglagyan ng mga isda, ng karne, etc. Mabilis po yung dapuan ng langaw and other pest. Eh, saan ba, nang, saan ba dumadapo ang mga insektong ito? Kapag ka po ang isa sa mga kasamahan natin sa bahay natin ay may mga open wounds, tapos dadapuan din itong mga langaw na ito, maaaring dun mag-harvest, uh, magkaroon ng contamination at lalong lumalayo pagkakaroon ng sakit ng ating mga kasamahan sa bahay. So better, make sure na pag magkatapon tayo ng mga dispose, disposable materials natin, may cover din po ang ating basurahan. Ano po? Ugaliin na itapon sa tamang dalagyan at huwag sa kung saan saan. Then wash your hands with soap and water again for at least 20 seconds before eating and make sure others do the same. Ano po? Siguraduhin natin lahat ay marunong magbigas ng kanilang kamay. And always use clean utensils and cakes. Hindi po natin kinakailangang mag-sharing ng kutsara, ng pinidor, ng baso, ng plato. Dapat may kanya-kanya po tayong gamit kasi nga po yung maaaring maging uh, source ng virus ay yung, yung true uh, discharges like yung ating laway. Ano po? So dapat may kanya-kanya tayong ginagamit lalo na kapag tayo ay kumakain. Next. Next. Ayan. May video po akong uh, short video na pwede nyo mapanood regarding this cleaning, uh, cleaning around the home and maintaining good hygiene. How to clean and disinfect your home if someone has COVID-19. For common areas of the home. Each day, clean and disinfect high-touch surfaces and items. High-touch surfaces include tables, countertops, light switches, doorknobs, and cabinet handles. Put on disposable gloves. First, clean the surface with soap and water. Then, use a household disinfectant. Read the label to see how long you should keep the disinfectant on the surface. Have good airflow and ventilation. Follow instructions about rinsing off chemicals. Be sure to put products where children cannot reach them. To clean electronics, follow the manufacturer's instructions. Or use alcohol-based wipes or spray containing at least 70% alcohol. Wash dishes and utensils with soap and hot water or run them in a dishwasher. For sick areas or rooms of the home. A person who is sick should stay in a separate area or room and use a separate bathroom if possible. Only clean these areas if something gets soiled. This will help limit your contact. Have the person who is sick wear a mask. A caregiver may also wear a mask. Dedicate a lined trash can if available. Remove the gloves and wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. For more on cleaning and disinfecting your home for COVID-19, visit cdc.gov slash coronavirus. Tapos na yung ating video. Okay. So, why do we have to clean again and dis disinfect everything? In order for us to... Uh, we have to clean everything around our home in order for us to remove the germs and dirt from surfaces. And then, we have to disinfect uh, some items around our home because uh, using disinfectants has these chemicals to kill the germs. Okay po. So, that's all about my presentation for today. So, just always remember to be kind, be clean, and always take care of yourselves because the greatest wealth is our own health. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Professor Villanueva. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul.
So, ito yung mga practical na tips na dapat nating gawin, lalong-lalo na po ngayon, dahil talagang lumalaganap ang COVID-19 virus. Sana yung ating mga estudyante na sundan yung tips ni ma'am, na talagang ito yung dahil madalas nasa bahay tayo, kung minsan lalabas man tayo, kailangan gawin natin yung mga tips na sinadjust ni ma'am. So with that, thank you ma'am. So muli po, nire-request natin ang ating mga participants, ang ating mga estudyante na mag-comment kung meron tayong mga katanungan kay Ma'am Michelle Villanueva. And Ma'am... Sabi po nila, enjoy yung mga students. Sabi po ni Jawad Sulaiman. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. We learned a lot. Yeah. So, ma'am Mabit, from episode 1 to episode 3, parang napapansin ko walang mga katanungan ng ating mga estudyante. At sa palagay, ko, sa palagay ko po, talagang naiintindihan nila ng maayos ang ating uh, mga topic ngayong araw na ito. Yan, gagaling ng speakers natin, Ma'am Mabe. Ito po na talagang magbanag ka, ang pagkakagaling ko rin ng ating mga speakers, ang speakers for today. So, maraming salamat po, Dr. Aoy, Dr. Sarbin and Weka, at siya pala siyang mga po na si Dr. Roger Rocha. Maraming salamat po. Sir Mark, nasa pa po yes. tayo ng mga yes, comments sa ating participants bago po ang uh, ating yes, uh, uh, pagbibigyan. Sabi po ni Apo, uh, sabi po ni Sir Boyet, salamat po ma. Sabi po ni Sir Jonathan Pinke, galing ni Ma'am Michelle, maganda na, magaling pa. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Dapat po pala sir, nag-comment din ako sir. Sir, sir Pinke. <laughs> Magko-comment din ako sa uh, my classmate. <laughs> ah, classmate niyo po si Ma'am Michelle, Ma? Yes, classmate. Nakala ko classmate, Ma'am. Kaya po kami nag-greet na virtually for how many years for a very long, long wow. years. Imagine dahil po sa always na activity, kami po ay nag-baupang palad ni Ma'am Rosalinda Habol. Hello, classmate. Hmm. <laughs> Yan po, Ma'am. Maraming salamat po, Ma'am Michelle Villanueva. God bless po, malaki Madeline Rodriguez. KJ Eliana, thank you po, Ma'am Michelle. Thank you din po, malaki Siljon Pumapa. Kay Lady Lynn Tansin Kapirag, thank you, Ma'am Michelle. Ayan, so, nagpapasalamat ang ating mga participants, ang ating mga sudyante, ang mga teachers at mga coordinators sa pag-share ni Dr. Aboy at ni Professor Villanueva tungkol sa pag-maintain ng good hygiene ngayong COVID-19 pandemic. Ayan. So maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Ayan. Salamat. Dr. Moses T. Makalinaw, ang ating pong advisor din po sa UISCA, isa po sa ating masipag na partner sa UISCA. Maraming salamat po, sir. Ma'am Aboy at Ma'am... Hello, sir. Salamat po na maraming... And thank you po. And now to award the Certificate of Recognition to our speakers, I call on Ma'am Mabet to read the content. Ma'am Mabet? Opo, Sir Mark. So, sa akin pong uh, classmate, si Dr. Rosalinda A. Aboy, Augustan Aboy. So, let me read the content of the Certificate Organization for Industrial Spiritual and Cultural Advancement International WISCA Philippines Children's Forest Program presents the Certificate of Recognition to Rosalinda A. Abul in recognition for her undoubted support and precious time rendered to us to this first person in the 2020 WISCA Children's Forest Program's second national webinar series with the theme Nurturing good moral values among the children 
approach the new normal, episode 3, you versus COVID-19, maintaining good hygiene. On September 23, 2020, we should in September 23, 2020, at Quezon City, Metro Manila, Philippines, signed with the President of the Visco Philippines, Mr. Jesse Rojas, and the Secretary General of the Visco International, Mr. Fumio Pizzutri. Maraming salamat po. Congratulations po. At ganun din po ang uh, content ng Certificate of Recognition para po kay Ma'am, Professor Michelle C. Villanueva, signed by Mr. Jesse Rojas, our President of Wisco Philippines, and the Secretary General of Wisco International, Mr. Fumio K. Suki. Congratulations po at maraming salamat po. And thank you po sa ating dalawang speakers na nagagalingan at nagagandahang mga resource speakers. So maraming maraming salamat po mga ma'am. Thank you po. Maraming salamat po. Ma'am Sally. Thank you, Lynn. Thanks for the opportunity to share. Thank you. Thank you. And so we're done, Ma'am Mabit, sa ating episode 3. At magkikita-kita po muli tayo mamayang 3.30 ng hapon. Meron po tayong one-hour break. At huwag po natin kakalimutan na mag-subscribe sa ating YouTube channel. Just type Uwiska Philippines at itype na rin po natin or click natin ang notification bell para sa updates ng ating mga activities. Mamabet? Oh, maraming salamat po. Magkita-kita po tayo muli mamaya po bagong mag-3.30. At meron po ulit yes, tayo po. mga pag-games para po mag, magbibigay po ang ulis ka ng mga surprise uh, gift na patatanggap po ng ating mga manalayo. Maraming yes, salamat po. Din natin, yes, titignan din natin mga mabit kung sino ang may pinakamadaming participants wala yes, sa iba't ibang mga paaralan at iba't ibang mga probinsa yes, na umatin po sa ating uh, webinar series. So magkita-kita po tayo mamayang 3.30 ng hapon. Break time po muna tayo. At kung uh, pag-stay naman po kayo sa ating YouTube channel, mapapanood nyo po ang ilang mga video presentation na inanda sa ating ng Manila Office. Baka pa po tayo sa po po muna ang message po galing po sa Maritel TV. Maraming salamat po Ma'am Michelle si Villanueva and Ma'am Rosalina Ayaboy. Marami po kaming aral na natutunan at nagdag ka naman po para sa amin. Congratulations po sa inyo. God bless po. Ayan, salamat po. So excited na tayo mamabit para sa ating last and final episode ng ating webinar series. Yes sir, at dito po natin malalaman kung sino po ang Hindi tayo iniwan. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi tayo iniwan, ma'am. From 8.30 to 4.30. Walang po itong iwanan. Yes. Po itong iwanan. Marami ako nakikita, ma'am, mabit. From 8.30 to 4.30. Nandiyan kasama na. Yes, sir. So, yan. Uh, si Malalapot po natin si ang so. ating pong closing. Uh, yes, yes so, po. Sir, sir, Jawad Salayman. Nice to see you again. Mga kasamahan ko po sa Uwiska, kamusta po ang mga taga Mindanao? Sir uh, Jawad, at sa mga kasamahan po natin po yan sa, sa Marawi. Sana po yung makarating kami di yan. Actually, may balak po kami pumunta din na hindi na natuloy dahil po sa pangyayari ngayon sa aming po pandemic. Sir Jawad, pagdating po namin dyan, kita-kita po tayo. Yan, sabi po ni Ate Christy, ang ating mga estudyante sa Benguet ay ayun, na, 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 wala. Yun. The kids are listening attentively. So maraming maraming salamat sa ating mga estudyante sa Benguet. O 
Okay po, so magkita-kita po tayo mamayang 3.30. Panoorin po natin yung ilang mga video presentation na inanda sa atin ng Manila office. Okay. See you later! Sige ma'am Mabet, sige po. Maraming salamat po ulit sa Southern Luzon State University kina Dr. Macalino, kina Professor Villanueva, at kay Dr. Agul. Maraming salamat po ulit. Thank you po.
Mga bata, plant a tree. Get air for free. Welcome, mga bisita o bayong pag-abot sa Mungkayo Central Elementary School. Saan man ninyo? Biyaan ra ba ninyo? So, bubuan ninyo siya at kung dyan ninyo siya, no? Tagadlaw! I tell you, children, The moment you plant those trees, makapil good mo of the sa responsibility nga dapat ikaw po mismo sa imo ang kabatanon na akay na himong part alang sa tuang kalikasan. So at least once a week we will be visiting our trees kay para makita nato ang status sa growth nila. Dili niya may unang iskwilahan mga kong asa na yung mong risk of discipline na yung asa yung toko no so ang katong nga mga nanglabay na ko nga mga stasyon puro ito sila recipient o risk ka pero mas labay akong kalitay nga karong higa yun na naka as a school head is na experience yun ako no ito yung kining nahitabo nga kalihukan dari ining grupo ha May mo niya ko na siyang murag batawag na legacy, no? Dadanin po kami ng punong kahoy para po mailigtas ang ating inang kalikasan at naprotektahan po ang ating kalikasan. At nag naging tahanan din po ito ng mga iba't ibang ibon at insekto. At nagbibigay din po ito ng oxygen para tayo ay magmabuhay. Punong kahoy rin po ay nakatutulong po sa atin para tayo ay gamot din dahil ang punong kahoy nagbibigay sa atin ng gamot. Simula, ang area na to ay isang taniman ng mais. Tapos napakalaking area ang lilinisin ng mga bata araw-araw. Pagdating ng wiska, nag-offer sila na magbigay ng mga puno na para itanim. So, parang nasiyahan ang aming principal kasi... Ma, medyo maminos-minosan yung ano yung paglilinisan ng mga bata. So, sa pagdaan ng mga panahon, lumaki ang puno at napansin namin na parang malaking na itulong kasi kung napakainit ng panahon, lahat ng mga bata dito naglalaro sa ilalim ng mga puno. Ilahan daw ni Gitanong 1991-1993. Then, atong ihapon, hantog ka ron is mga 26 years na siya. So, nagtindog lang niya po siya ang mga katawahan yung hinakabinipisyo sa iyahang lihatan nga kabugnaw um, ang panit sa bunga sa mahogan yung lahang ginagamit sa ilahang pagluto. So, daghan sila nga gakulit sa so, niya. Nagapod o gakwa sa wild day. Araw nila hapong itanong sa ilahang yuta. Ang mga Japanese volunteer gaan si Dinti aron mutabang pagtanong ani dinhi gitawag gayud ni siya dinhi nga love green mini forest karon iwan po sa mga nauna po namin na ipatarim na sa malalaki na mga puno na kailangan na po lagyan ng building dahil sa dumadami na po yung populasyon ng kanang mga bata eh ginagamit na po sa mga kuha ng ating building at saka sa mga table cabinet ganyan po kaya napakalaki po ng tulong ng ating po mga puno na itinanim po na kasama natin dito ang mga hapon na sila po ang siyang sumuporta sa atin. Inga Children's Forest Program Coordinator, ako yung nakikipag-coordinate sa mga school activity. Pero marami kami activity sa mga schools like uh, replanting, uh, environmental workshop, and uh, environmental education. We 
nagpupunta kami sa mga school nagkakandak mga environmental education sa mga eskwelahan years ito na na realize na but that that is not so easy without funds coming from Japan ang mga tao dito na katulong ko na nagtanim nagprotect kaya naging gubat na rin to so bumabalik na ngayon yung mga ano mga wild birds wild chicken mga snakes dito na malapit nang maging ano uh, diverse ang lugar na ito so at the beginning uh, of the year 1991 we have only four provinces uh, 15 schools are participated but after 25 years past only in this philippines more than 336 provinces 1100 schools are participated ini-invite ko po lahat ng mga magulang mga anak nila uh, na magtanim po ng puno sa kapaligiran para po dumami po ang mga puno. Nagpapasalamat po kami dahil nagpili ang aming paaralan na maging kalahok sa Oilka International at sa lahat ng bumubuo nito. Yan. Hello. So magandang hapon po muli sa ating lahat, sa ating mga, especially sa ating mga participants, mga teachers at coordinators ng UWISCA. So nasa last episode na po tayo ng ating webinar series. Nire-request po namin lahat ng ating mga participants na mag-tune in na sa ating uh, live streaming sa ating YouTube channel. Sa mga naman sa mga estudyante naman na nanonood sa ating YouTube. Huwag nating kakalimutan na mag-subscribe sa ating YouTube channel at paki-like at paki-click ang notification bell. Para sa updates ng ating mga activities sa Uwiska CF. So, hello po muli and again, welcome back to our 2020 Uwiska Children's Forest Program Second National Webinar Series with the team Nurturing Good Moral Values Among the Children An Approach to New Normal. So, muli po, nagbabalik po ang ating uh, Uwiska uh, office. Ayan, kasama natin sila Kuya JM, sila Sir K, at si Mama Beth sa pag-organize nitong uh, event na ito. So, hayaan nyo po munang basahin ko ang ating mga participants na kasama natin ngayong hapon na ito. Yan, sabi ni Ma'am Irene, sana all makarating sa Japan. Hehehe. He, he. Yan. Pwede naman, Ma'am. Okay lang kami dito, Miss Mabit, Miss Mai, at lahat ng obis ka po po, sabi ni Ma'am Glenda Rendon. Yan. po sa lahat ng Uwiska family sa Nueva Ecija, sa mga taga sa na yan? Siklong Elementary School, sa mga bata, magulang at teacher na patuloy na nakikinig. Maraming salamat po. Yan, si Ate Norma, good afternoon po. Ayan, sir, watching din si Jersey from Lapu-Lapu National High School. So, si Jersey po yung ating 2019 uh, CFP Goodwill Ambassador na nakarating po sa Japan. Noong uh, last year, 2019, mapalad po siya dahil siya yung uh, napili ng Uwiska office na ipadala. Kasama si uh, Clifton mula naman sa Benjit. At kasama po namin yan, kami ni Ate Norma, bilang kanilang uh, guardian at CFP Goodwill Ambassador. So, siyempre, meron pa rin tayong inihanda na papremyo sa ating mga uh, participants. Yan. Lakas po na ulan dito sa Quezon, sabi ni Ate Norma Sarmiento. Yan. Hello po, Ate Christy. Yan. At sa lahat ng ating mga participants all over the Philippines, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. 
ilang araw na lamang po ay magbabalik pasok na ang uh, balik eskwela ang ating mga estudyante sa pampublikong paaralan. At ilang araw na lang din at malapit na ang Pasko. So, advance Merry Christmas sa ating lahat. Maski pandemic, kailangan maging Merry pa din ang ating Christmas. Yan. So, ngayon po ay ipa-plus po muli namin ang uh, mga katanungan. Ang gagawin lamang po natin ay ikat Ita-type natin or ilalagay natin sa comment box ang ating sagot at ang ating cellphone number para po makontak kayo. Lalong-lalo na po yung ating mga uh, mananalo ngayong hapon na to para sa ating last episode. So please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notification bell para ma-update sa mga bagong activities ng Oviska Children's Forest Program. So, ipa-flash na po natin ang ating unang-unang tanong para sa ating last episode. Kuya JM? Get ready po ah sa ating mga studyante, mga teachers, mga viewers natin. O oh, yan. So, una-una, dalawang beses ko pabasahin ang tanong. Countries where Uwiska Projects is or are located? A. Pakistan. B. Myanmar C. America D. All of the above Again, countries where Uwiska projects is or are located A. Pakistan B. Myanmar C. America And letter D. All of the above Makilagay po ang inyong mga sagot sa ating comment box at ilagay po natin ang ating cellphone number Para po pipili na po ang ating mga uh, technical working group mula sa Uwiska office. Ayan, nandiyan po sila ating may may. Ayan, gusto ko po munang i-acknowledge. Hello po, so proud to be a Uwiska volunteer from San Agustin Elementary School. Jackie Nico. Hello po. Ayan, si mama ni Jackie. Yan ang isa po ang naging tulay kung bakit nakilala ko si Ma'am Mabit at napunta ko sa Uwiska. Yes. Maraming maraming salamat po, Ma'am Josephine Merebeles. Naalala ko nung uh, 2014 or 15 Simpleng activity na gagawin sa school Magti-tree planting Tapos lahat ng mga parents at mga estudyante Binigyan ng libreng mga damit At nagtanim kami Maraming nag uh, sumali Pati mga teachers Pati ang aming principal So ang tamang sagot kuya JM Ay Letter Letter D All of the above yan. So lahat po yan Lahat ng mga bansa na yan ay matatagpuan ang Uwiska Projects. Okay? So, pipili po ang ating technical working group. Yan. Mula sa mga sumagot. Kung tama po yung inyong pagsagot. Yan. Nakita ko na si Maritel TV. Ano ba to? Channel ba to? Yan. Okay. So, congratulations po. Yan. Next naman. Next question po. Uwiska is involved in the following activities A. Tree planting B. Relief operations C. Organic farming D. Capacity building E. All of the above Again, Uwiska is involved in the following activities Tree planting Letter A. Letter B. Relief operations Letter C. Organic farming Letter D. Capacity building And letter E. All of the above Nakikita ko na mga sagot ninyo. Shout out sa aking pupil sa tabing dagat ngayon. Nagaabang ng webinar. Wow! Pakipicture na naman po at pakisend sa ating ano, technical working group. Si Cyril daw, nasa tabing dagat, nanonood ng webinar. Tsaka si Emiel Nicole sa Pico. O, ingat kayo dyan ha. Baka, ano ha, tangayin kayo ng ano. <laughs> Malakas na alon. Layo-layo kayo sa tubig. Yan. So, may mga nakikita na po akong sagot. Mga teachers sa SDO QC, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong suporta. Yan. So, the correct answer is letter Kuya JF Letter Letter E All of the above. Minakita ko mga tawang sagot. Letter E. All of the above. So, last natin. 
Yan, ipa-flash na muna natin siguro yung nanalo randomly. Pili tayo ng ano, ng uh, tamang sagot. Yan, si Jerome Carlos Suba. Yan, so, hintayin po natin yung uh, update message mula sa Uisca office. And last question po natin for our last episode. Aside from CFP, what is or are programs of OISCA? Ano pa yung mga programa po ng CFP? A. Capacity Building Program B. Environmental Conservation Program Letter C. Sustainable Community Program And letter D. All of the above Again, aside from CFP, what? Letter C. Sustainable Community Program And letter D. All of the above Yan, active na active ang ating, di ba? Proactive ang ating mga estudyante. And the correct answer is letter letter D. All of the above. So lahat po yan ay ginagawa na Uwiska CFP. Yan. So nalaman ko, kailangan pala maging proud tayo dito na sa maraming mga bansa na kasama ang, ang, ang maraming projects ng CFP. nag-originate po pala ang Children's Forest Program sa ating bansa, sa Pilipinas. At ngayon, marami na pong mga bansa ang nagko-continue ng mga proyekto na tungkol sa Children's Forest Program. Particularly, pagtatanim ng puno at mga environmental na um, dito seminar or webinar katulad ng ginagawa po natin ngayong hapon na ito. Ayan. So, congratulations po sa ating winner. Sino ang ating winner, Kuya JM? Ayan, si Sir Arlan Melendres. Nakasama rin natin yan sa ating first webinar series for uh, yung ating mga kasama natin, mga educators, nung uh, last September 3, 4, and 5. Ayan, so congratulations po, Sir Arlan. Ayan. So, ngayon naman po, tinatawagan ko si Ma'am Mabet para ipakilala ang ating... Uh, magpe-present ng isang intermission number. Mamabet? Yes, Sir Mark. Magandang hapon po ulit. So, uh, kakanta po, pagbibigyan po tayo ng isang intermission number. Jessica Iglesia, isa po siyang grade 6 pupil sa Dalagan Elementary School, Padre Burgos, Quezon Province. Alam po po, malapit sa ating po Nasa puso po ng ating speaker this afternoon, ang Padre Burgos sa Quezon Province. So, uh, Jessica, please, so, bigyan mo po kami ng isang... Ang pagdamay sa kapoy ng Diyan Ang 
Wow, ang galing naman ni Jessica, Ma'am Mabel. Yes, napagaling ni Jessica. Isang grade 6 pupil sa galing po sa Danlagan Elementary School. Salamat, Jessica. And thank you, Jessica. And now to introduce our last speaker for this webinar series, inatawagan ko pumuli ang aking partner, ang director ng Uwiska, Manila. Walang iba po di si Ma'am Mabel. Palakpakan po natin siya. <laughs> sa screen, si Sir Nelson. <laughs> okay, so our last speaker speaker this afternoon is presently a professor 12 at the Department of Forest Biological Sciences, College of Forestry and Natural Resources, University of the Philippines, Los Banos. Sir Nelson obtained his PhD in Environmental Biology in 2002 from Wardell University in Perth, Western Australia. He finished his MS Forestry in 1996 and BS Forestry in 1985, degrees at UPLB. He teaches courses such as forest botany, taxonomy of forest seed plants, plant physiology, fundamentals of forest ecology, introduction to protected area management, forest ecology, forest mycology, forest microbiology, and others. He is also a curator for Forest Punjang and Endomycorrhiza at UPLB's Museum of Natural History. Sir Nelson has served as consultant on various forestry-based projects and as terrestrial ecologists for environmental impact assessment and environmental monitoring of various organizations. Sir Nelson has been rendering services to Uwiska as one of our resource persons in environmental seminar workshop for three years. During these years, I witnessed that Sir Nelson also loves children as well as teaching them. Today, he will be sharing with us his expert's opinion entitled Enjoying the Art and Science of Backyard Gardening with Kids. So ladies and gentlemen, join me and let us welcome Dr. Nelson Manglilat Pampolina. Dom? Thank you, Mama Beth. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, GM, JM, and all of the staff of OISCA. Thank you very much again for this opportunity to be with the kids this time. Last uh, um, presentation was uh, with adults. This time is with kids. And thank you for this one. So kids, are you this, are you there now? Are kids listening? Of course they are, I suppose. Okay, uh, we now start because this is for you. Take a look at the title. It's enjoying the art. It's enjoying the science. Enjoying art and science of backyard gardening with you kids. So in today's discussion, we have uh, topics to discuss uh, in, on screen are about one, two, three, four, five, six. I hope you have the energy. Uh, the time now is 3.30. I suppose you have already uh, had a break a while ago, but... Uh, We'll find time so that uh, we shift off from uh, topics about ways to uh, protect ourselves from COVID to a topic by which we can uh, go away with COVID by enjoying uh, gardening. So we will level off first and then show you a video, then uh, discuss uh, basically what environment is and explain the science of uh, backyard gardening and informing you about its art and then let's see your role kids so in the next slide is uh, a map of the philippines 
Uh, I don't know who among you are from Luzon. How many are from Luzon? Uh, now, but I'm working now in Luzon. Now, I understand the Uwiska is across or working or partnering with schools and teachers across the Philippine archipelago. And uh, in this uh, regard, uh, your geographical locations is very important. Because this will uh, let us know, uh, aside from your locations, we will know how are you in your particular place. Okay? Because we know that uh, COVID right now, the center, the epicenter, aside from Manila, uh, are also in Mindanao and some in Visayas. You know? It has spread across uh, the country. You know? And I hope, or we hope, that uh, you are not affected, I mean, in terms of uh, uh, the infections. Now, we pray that uh, you are all safe, kids, with your family and with your teachers. Next. So, let's look at uh, the vision of Uwiska. Uh, I understand the reason why you're here. You are invited by Uwiska, but uh, let's uh, review, you know, uh, yung perspective ng Uwiska because they hold on their perspective that the universe is a source of all life. And they envision a world where all people harmoniously coexist by uh, transcending differences and work together to protect and nurture the ecological basis of all life on earth. So that's the vision of Uwiska. And the work together here, kasama dito ang mga kabataan. Na? The people here na, that work harmoniously with nature, ay tayo yon, kayong mga kabataan. Na? So we need to work together. At yung education, itong uh, ganitong klaseng uh, uh, pagpupulong o sabihin nating online na pag-uusap uh, ay isang paraan, isang paraan upang uh, tayo ay makakoop up at uh, makakoexist tayo sa nature and we can work together with the goal of protecting and nurturing our ecological basis, our environment, no? so that we can prolong our lives. So simula natin sa isang uh, video presentation ang ating uh, pag-uusap ngayon. Uh, JM, can I request you to uh, play the video? Okay, so itong video na to ay ating hiram sa source na gulayan, bulaklakan sa siyudad. Okay, maikli lamang ito, wala pa yatang limang minuto. Ay sana may room kayong mapulot dito sa palabas na ito. Okay, can you show it, JM? All right. Sa hirap ng buhay ngayon, lahat tayo ay naghahanap ng alternatibong mapagkukuhaan ng pagkain para sa araw-araw nating pangangailangan. Ang gulayan at bulaklakan ay nagtuturo kung paano magsimula ng inyong maliit na backyard garden. Dito rin sa center, sila ang nagpo-produce ng mga gulay gamit lamang ang mga recyclable materials bilang taniman at sarili nilang gawang compost mula naman sa mga nabubulok na basura ng kanilang barangay. Si David Balilia, isang agriculturist, ang namamahala ng proyektong ito. Ang project na ito at simula ito noong 1998. Actually, isa itong uh, barangay project. Isang urban garden dito sa buong Metro Manila na isang modelong at saka modernong pamamara ng pagtatanim sa kalunsuran. Pinakabasihan ng aming programa Yung pinakaligal na basihan ay ang Republic Act 9003. Ito yung Ecological Solid Waste Management Act. At uh, mayroong kaming uh, programa na tungkol nga sa paghihiwalay ng basura, yung segregation, at yung mga nabubulok na nakukulikta dito sa aming parangay, yun ang ginagawang pataba. At yun naman ang ginagamit dito. 
napaka-unique ng aming uh, garden dahil uh, iba-ibang disenyo ay nandito na kaya sa amin gaya ng sapo pwedeng pahiga pwedeng patindig, pwedeng pahangin so, dito wala nang dahilan para hindi makapagtanim kahit yan nakasimento kahit yan buhanginan, kahit yan batuhan kahit yan dinadana ng tubig pwede pa rin magtanim Sa tulong ng Asia Development Bank na isa katuparan ang proyekto ang pagtatayo ng kulayan at bulaklakan Ang proyektong ito ay may limang layunin. Una, upang maibsan ang kagutuman ng mga mamamayan. Pangalawa, mabawasan ang kahirapan ng Pilipino. Pangatlo, matugunan ang problema sa malnutrisyon. Pangapat, mabigyan ng solusyon ang lumalalang suliranin sa sanitasyon at kalusugan ng ating bayan. At panglima, Mabawasan ang itinatapo na basura bilang tugon sa climate change. May iba't ibang klase ng tanim sa gulayan at bulaklakan. Mayroong sibuyas, mustasa, techay, snake ampalaya, papaya, mga medicinal plants, at marami pang iba. Maraming advantages kung replicate ang proyektong ito. Itong urban gardening ay napakahalaga lalo dito sa Metro Manila dahil unang-una kung dito na nagpo-produce ng gulay sigurado kang malinis at sariwa dahil ikaw mismo ang nagpo-produce. Pangalawa, mura dahil wala na yung trade in handling na nagagastos. 70% ng budget natin ay napupunta sa pagkain. Napakalaking bagay ang sarili mo ng gulay na pag, sa pagkain mo araw-araw. Ngayon, ang, ang budget mo para doon sa gulay, iyon na ang parang savings mo sa araw-araw. Narito naman ang mga tips para sa inyong sariling urban garden. Una, gumawa ng sariling pataba o organic fertilizer. Yung biodegradable na materyales na mula sa kusina, instead na itatapon mo na yung mga reject na vegetables, reject na prutas, tapos tirang pagkain, gawin mo ng compost. Pangalawa, magtanim gamit ang mga non-biodegradable materials. Mga itatapon mo ng mga non-bio na materyales gaya ng bute, gaya ng gulong, yung mga styro na pwede mong taniman, uh, yun ang gagamitin mong tataniman. Gumawa ng planting medium. Yung mga acerola, orenola, mga plastics na iba-ibang klase, hanggat maaari na pwede mong taniman. At ang huli, maging matsaga sa pag-aalaga ng mga tanim. Mahalaga dyan ay yung pag-alaga, kailangan mayroong tiyaga na yun bang sa araw-araw may pagpapaunlakan mo ng kaunting oras para makaproduce ka ng magandang halaman, magandang gulay. Ang pagkakaroon ng backyard urban garden ay hindi lamang makakatulong sa inyong pang-araw-araw na mapagkukuna ng pagkain, kundi pati na rin sa pag-aalaga ng ating kalikasan. At kung patuloy ang paglaganap ng ganitong proyekto dito sa Metro Manila, maiibsa natin ang gutom, problema sa basura, at may improve ang living conditions ng mga mamamayang Pilipino. Okay. Thank you. Uh, dito ay uh, makikita natin ano sa uh, pinalabas na ito na kahalagahan ng gardening, no? Salamat uh, sa pinalabas na 'yon. At uh, nakausap natin si uh, Sir David uh, Malilig. No? Siya yung nagpasimuno uh, uh, doon sa programang yun. No? Gulayan, bulaklakan sa siyudad. So pwede nating gayahin ang uh, ginawa nila sa ating mga backyard, no? sa ating mga likod bahay o harap bahay. Bago natin na uh, uh, ipaliwanag ang lahat, siguro... Pag-aral muna tayo ng basic, no? Pag-aralan muna natin ano ba yung environment kung saan nakapaloob dito yung basic gardening. Okay, next slide. What is uh, environment? Okay. 
what is environment, o yung ano ba yung ating kapaligiran na tinatawag. Kanina, doon sa ipinakita sa video, nakita naman ninyo yung kapaligiran doon sa isang urban area. No? Nakita ninyo na uh, out of almost nothing, no? nagkaroon ng isang magandang kapaligiran. So ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng kapaligiran? Ang environment or surroundings uh, or condition nito is uh, a place. No? It's a place by which yung mga person, yung animal, yung mga plant, they live all together in that particular place, in that particular conditions. So they operate in an environment uh, as for them to, to try to survive, to grow and develop and reproduce. So yung environment ng mga halaman doon sa garden ay favorable na, na para sila ay magsitubo. So sa pamamaraan na ipinakita kanina kung paano ang gagawin na andon yung pagkalinga doon sa mga halaman, paggamit ng compost, paggawa ng compost, pagreduce ng mga waste na, upang yung kapaligiran doon ay mapanatiling maayos. At sa pamamagitan ng mga ganong uh, teknolo technology, ay napaganda nila yung kapaligiran. So yun yung kapaligiran, yung palibot, no? yung environment. Uh, so ang bahay ninyo ay mayroong environment. Ang kwarto ninyo ay ano, kung ano yung environment, ano yung paligid doon. Uh, magmamatter yon kung yung kapaligiran ninyo ay hindi favorable, hindi maayos. No? O di kaya ay uh, sabihin nating baka malungkot, o baka yun masaya, o baka yun ay uh, depende ano, sa palibot. Yan ang environment. Itong environment ay eh, pwedeng masira. No? Yung ating kapaligiran ay eh, pwedeng ma-degrade. In, uh, in other words, uh, it uh, can reduce yung strength, yung efficacy, or value nito. So kung halimbawa hindi favorable yung palibot, so pwedeng uh, hindi nakakainganyo. No? Yung value mo, for example, as a person, ay hindi ka-happy. No? Uh, so, yung environment can affect a person. At uh, yung governance or yung pamamahala ng environment ay mahalaga. So kung ikaw ay nakatira sa kwarto at may sarili kang kwarto sa iyong family o sa iyong uh, bakuran na hindi na ma-manage properly, na ma napapamahala ng maayos, no? sabihin natin magulo, and therefore, medyo magkakaroon din ng response ang katawan mo. No? So parang hindi ka happy. No? Unlike um, kung ang family ay masaya, maganda ang kapaligiran, maraming halaman, maayos ang pagkakalagay ng mga uh, gamit uh, sa labas at loob, maaliwalas, uh, maganda. So ang environment ay magiging favorable. So yung governance, yung pamamahala ng environment ay napakahalaga. Next. So ano ba yung mga bahagdan o components ng environment. Meron dito tatlo akong inilagay, yung physical, no, yung kaanyuan, yung biological, yung may buhay, at yung socio-political, no, yung uh, uh, kapaligirang sosyal. Okay? So itong tatlong ito ang uh, magsasaayos ng environment, no? Yung physical for example, marami kayong gamit pero kung ang mga gamit na yan ay hindi nalagay, nasa lansa ng maayos, na ilagay ng husto, na i-arrange ng proper, no? yung atmosphere doon sa loob ng bahay ay eh magiging uh, unfavorable kung halimbawa hindi maganda ang pagkaayos ng physical. No? So uh, sa buong uh, kabuoan ng ating uh, mundo, meron tayong tinatawag na atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere. Yung lithosphere, ito yung sa ilalim ng lupa. Yung hydrosphere, yun yung sa karagatan. At yung atmosphere, yun sa kalawakan. Okay? So, ang ating mga tahanan, ang ating mga bahay, ang ating community, ang ating backyard, ay nasa uh, biosphere. No? Kung saan, nandun yung ibabaw ng ating uh, biosphere. Ang biosphere ay isa ring parte ng physical na kung saan naandoon yung oxygen, mayroong available oxygen, a uh, favorable ang oxygen. So, ang uh, isang lugar na mahangin o maali maganda ang uh, ang uh, maaliwalas yung panahon 
ay favorable yung atmosphere dito. So, yun yung physical no? ng environment. So, yung mga tao, tayo, ang mga uh, tinatawag natin consumers, kasama na ang ibang mga hayop, ay part ng biological component. No? Yung mga tumutulong naman sa halimbawa, nabanggit kanina, yung composting, yung tumutulong sa pag-agnas o pag Uh, degrade ng mga litter, ng mga dumi, no? ay uh, involved dito yung mga bacteria, fungi, even virus. No? Kasama sila doon para i-decompose yung mga litter na yon. Sa tawag natin sila ay biological. Samantalang yung mga halaman, yung mga gulay, yung mga bulaklak, sila ay producers. They are meant to produce food. They are the one that captivate uh, energy from the sun. No? So, sa inyong grade 5 to 10, di ba, pinag-aaralan niyo yung photosynthesis. So, sila yung capable of fixing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So, when they fix carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, they process that carbon dioxide together with water that they absorb from roots and with sunlight, in the presence of sunlight, that uh, uh, transform uh, chemical energy No, using yung kanilang mga structures sa cells nila, they were able to produce sugar. Yung sugar, yun ay yung food. And there are many kinds of sugar. So, ito yung biological component ng environment. Samantalang yung sociopolitical naman ay yung mga tao sa palibot. Yung community natin. Yung ating uh, mamamayan. No? At ang gobyerno. Ito yung sociopolitical component. So, Kung paano pinamamahala ng inyong sitio, ng inyong porok, ng inyong uh, uh, munisipyo o barangay, ang inyong lugar, sila yung uh, part ng environment na political kasi sila yung nangangasiwa. At lalo na ngayon, mayroon tayong COVID, so sila yung nagkukontrol na para kung lockdown ay uh, uh, mag- mangasiwa no, sa mga tao. No? I-control yung pag Uh, ating mga movements, no? mamahagi ng no? mga pangangailangan ng tao, magpaalaala uh, uh, kung ano ang mga nararapat at hindi. So, governance yon, yun ay part ng environment. So, again, yung ating environment ay binubuo ng physical, ng biological, ng sociopolitical. Ang status ng ating environment sa ngayon, okay, next slide, ang status ng environment ay nasa degradation stage no ang ating environment kung mapapansin niyo ating kagubatan kagubatan sa buong Pilipinas ay about only about 20% no so malaki na ang kabawasan from about 90 noong pang mga before 18th century to about uh, 50 60 70 no dumating ang panahon na tayo ay nag export ng logs sa ibang bansa no hanggang naubos na So ngayon, baka mga less than 20% lang ang natitira sa ating mga kabundukan, sa ating mga virgin forest. No? So degraded na yung ating forest as part of our environment. And uh, this has altered no? not only the forest but the biodiversity within. Uh, kung kaya't ang ating Philippine Eagle ay kukunti na lamang. Ano? Ang Philippine Eagle ay yung hari ng ating mga uh, animals no? sa, sa food web sila yung nasa mataas na level. Sila ay indicator kung healthy pa yung forest. So, paubos na. Dahil paubos na rin ang kanilang tahanan, paunti na din sila. Kung kaya't ang government at ay ibang mga sectors ay gumagawa ng paraan kung paano may babalik yung ating mga natural resources, including itong mga biodiversity, just like yung Philippine Eagle, at saka yung mga endangered wildlife natin, and even endangered plants. No? So, Uh, at the moment, ang environment natin ay nasa degrading stage. At ang biodiversity is losing. No? So, yung interaction ng tao and therefore ng mga animals ay uh, naapektuhan. Kaya nga, ito, nagkaroon tayo ng COVID. Nagkaroon tayo nitong pandemic na to. At uh, base sa mga nire-report, ang mga virus, dahil ang virus ay isa lamang DNA, ano? isa ay DNA na Uh, kailangan niya ng host no? at ang host niya kalimitan ay plant or animals or even uh, microbes or even fungi mga host nila yan dyan sila nabubuhay so kung wala silang host hindi sila mabubuhay dahil sila according to report 
ay dahil, dahil daw galing sa mga wildlife, katulad ng bats, no? katulad ng uh, mga ganitong wildlife, uh, na papunta sila ngayon sa uh, community. No? Kung saan, sa ibang lugar, katulad ng na-report sa China, na kinakain yung mga bats. So there are possibilities na yung virus ay na-transfer sa tao because of that. So nagkaroon ng uh, pagka disturb no ng ating environment. So makikita mo yung transfer, yung pathway, yung transmission. So it all started nung 2019 kaya naging COVID-19 na discover siya nang uh, 2019 uh, sa China nagsimula sa Wuhan at uh, ngayon. So aabot na tayo ng almost half a year na tayo ay uh, uh, nagkukumahog kung paano na tayo makakaiwas kung paano maiisasayos ang lahat at affected na hindi lang tayo, hindi lang kayo, hindi lang ang Pilipinas at ito'y buong mundo, no? At pwede natin i-attribute ito. We can attribute this to our environment. We can attribute this to the loss of biodiversity, disturbance of biodiversity, loss of our forest, degrading ecosystems and the like. So, yan 'yon, no? Kaya nagkaroon tayong ganung viral infections. And these were all attributed to this, no? At uh, uh, yung susunod na, na slide, gusto nating ipakita dito yung illustration ng environment. No? So uh, sa kaliwang slides na kalagay doon ay from ridge to reef, magmula sa bundok hanggang sa dagat. No? Makikita mo yung color dito sa slides, yung green color, these are all uh, vegetation, these are forests, these are plants, no? communities of plants. Green. Yung bluish ay uh, nagre-represents ng aquatic. No? So yung mga green ay terrestrial or yung kalupaan. Yung blue ay yung katubigan. Magmula river hanggang sa papuntang karagatan. Okay, so yan ay yung environment. No? Yung uh, ating biological at saka physical magmula sa toktok ng bundok hanggang paibaba sa karagatan. Okay, nakalagay dyan sa mga bilog ang mga halimbawa ng mga makikita ninyo sa environment at saka mga halamang gubat at mga animals na no? so yan ang part ng environment so kung yan ay minamanage ng isang uh, pamahalaan yun yung governance no so at ang mga community surrounding ay uh, unsocial so sa kabilang uh, slide makikita mo yung community may mga bahay Mayroong nakikita nyo ba yung backyard, di ba? May bakod pa sila, iba't ibang bahay at uh, sa bandang iba katabi ay yung mga namumuhay na mga isda sa karagatan, no? Makikita mo yung color, bluish, greenish, uh, and very favorable, no, sa, sa ating mga sa mata. So, isa ito sa pagpapahayag sa inyo kung ano nga ba ang environment. So, pwede nating magamit ang environment sa labas ng bahay, sa loob ng bahay, uh, sa kalawakan ng uh, kung saan man na tayo naroon. For as long as na andyan yung atmosphere, yung lupa, uh, yung tubing, uh, lahat-lahat ng yon, yan ay matatawag nating environment. At kung uh, ano ang mga community doon, magiging part ng environment. Okay? So ngayon ay part pa rin tayo ng environment dahil kay malalayo, pero tayo ay pinagtagpo-tagpo dahil sa ating uh, online uh, uh, presentation. Uh, so, part pa rin ito ng environment. So, ang ating uh, communication at using internet no, ay part ng environment. So, katulad ngayon, uh, umuulan dito sa amin, ang iba kumukulog, ang ating environment ay pwedeng maapektuhan. Ang ating communication ay pwedeng maapektuhan. No? So, Again, I'm trying to emphasize what environment is, how it looks like, anong components, paano siya nagpa-function. Next slides is how do we uh, uh, how do we produce a good values for environment. So knowing what environment is, ano dapat ang ating maging moral values? Ano dapat ang ating ikinikilos? Kayo mga kabataan from grade 5 to 10, naghahanda kayo para sa inyong October 5 start ng classes bilang part ng environment, ano ang mga ginagawa ninyo? No? Alam nyo, mga kids, uh, ako'y nasa Luzon, 
nasa paanan ako ng bundok ng Makiling. Uh, ang family ko ay nasa Mindanao. Uh, meron ako mga kapatid at mga pamangkin, may mga bata pa. Ang ginawa ko ay uh, binigyan ko sila ng konting fund at uh, aking in-encourage yung mga high school at mga nagka-college sa amin na sila yung mag-serve na teacher. Habang naka-lockdown, at uh, nagbuo kami ng uh, school doon sa amin sa loob ng compound. So, naggawa kami ng favorable environment para yung mga kabataan, yung elementary, primary, kinder, hanggang high school ay magkaroon ng maliit na school. So, naggawa kami ng environment para sila ay makapag-review, makapaghanda para sa nalalapit na October 5. So, yon, no? Isang value formation, isang pamamaraan upang ang ating environment ay maging favorable. At ang mga nananahan dito ay mabuhay ng maayos. So, ano ba yung good values for our environment? Dito nakalagay, dapat mag-inform. No? Ito, ang ginagawa natin ngayon is inform. Nagdi-deliver ako ng mga information sa inyo. Enable. So, dapat nakakapacitate namin kayo. At uh, sana sa four episodes, episodes na ating ginagawa ngayon through the WISCA, ay nai-inspire kayo. Nai-encourage kayo. No? So, ito yung UN Environmental Program. Inform, enable, inspire. Gamitin natin ito. No? Pwede nyo itong gawin sa itong kapwa, sa family ninyo, sa kapwa nyo mag-aaral later on, lalo pag nag uh, back to normal tayo, or even through messaging. No? So you can inform, you can enable, and you can inspire. Kagaya halimbawa ng mga nasa kaliwa, uh, nakalagay doon, conserve water. No? That's a value. Conserve electricity. Minimize food waste. Mag-recycle, care for our animals, our pets, no? mga insects, uh, waste less paper, pick up trash, walk to places, try composting, keep learning about the earth, and inilagay ko yung plant in backyard garden, magtanim sa backyard. No? Uh, bakit ba backyard? Parang likod bahay lang. Ano? Hindi siguro. Ang ibig sabihin dito ng backyard kasi kalimitan yung Likod yung may space kalimitan. No? Pero sa panahon ngayon, ang space ay mahalaga. Ang uh, harapan ay backyard pa rin. So front yard, backyard, side yard. No? At mayroong mga technology ngayon, no? roof yard. No? Meron kayang ano, down yard, ilan ng bahay. Siguro, ano, for as long as there is light. Uh, tingnan natin mamaya. Ano? So yung next slide ay... Uh, Uh, i-define natin ano nga ba talaga ang backyard gardening. Kasi sabi ko doon sa huling slides, yung isang value ay magtanim sa backyard gardening. So ano ba yung backyard gardening? Yeah. So I emphasize that that's not just back, but even front, even sides, even roof, yeah. even inside house, or even under your house uh, if there is light. Yeah. So backyard gardening in a sense is The way to tend a garden, uh, probably as pastime, to beautify the place or the surroundings by raising food source no? to sustain your requirements with fresh flowers and green vegetable. So yan yung backyard gardening. Nasa, nakasanayan na na backyard gardening or in general it's gardening. It's gardening in a space. So mayroon itong time at mayroong space. No? Kasi hindi tuwing araw-araw o panapanahon, dry or wet, ay pwedeng mag-survive yung mga garden. No? Sa temperate countries, yung ating mga kababayan naninirahan sa ibang bansa, lalo na sa temperate, eh, nag-iipon sila ng binhe para padating ng uh, uh, period na hindi na we uh, wet or hindi na uh, snow, no? hindi na winter, eh, makakapagtanim sila no, sa kanilang backyard. Uh, ang mahalagang requirements, pangangailangan ng plant sa garden ay lima. No, nakalagay dyan, lima. Actually, ang basic ay apat. No? Kasi they can grow them by themselves. No? Kasi pag uh, tinignan mo kasi sa, sa creation, ano, if you have read the Bible, uh, lahat tayo ay na-create. Lahat tayo ay creations. No? Ang ating lumikha, ang creator, ay ang ating Diyos. No? So yung pagka-create niya, perfect. No? Lahat ay perfect. Ang imperfections ay nangyari dahil sa kasalanan ng tao. So if you're familiar sa Garden ng Eden, no? 
uh, nagkasala no na pina tinukso nung nung ahas no? so yun ang sin um doon nagsimula ang lahat and even up to now we are uh, being uh, we are suffering because of sin no? and uh, this is a curse no? so not unless we go back no we we accept uh, our our lord our christ our jesus no? as our personal lord and savior hindi talaga mababago ang ating mga ugali ang ating mga maling mga ginagawa kung hindi tayo susuko kung hindi tayo babalik sa kanya So yung ating uh, response ngayon sa mga nangyayari sa atin, this is because of greediness. So look, because of greediness, no, uh, hindi ma, 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 ma contain ng mga tao. Hindi sila contento. No? Kung kaya uh, pati yung mga malalayong mga namumuhay sa wildlife, eh tinitig advantage nila. Ano? Uh, meron namang paraan na tama dyan ng siyensa para yung mga wild animals can be domesticated. So, we don't have to collect and extract wild uh, things from the forest no? to explore and exploit them. There is a good science to manage and uh, domesticate them. So, sa backyard gardening, we can also uh, cultivate yung mga indigenous, yung mga native plants no? sa garden natin. No? Yung mga plantito-plantita, yung problema ngayon, tinan nyo, that's also a sin, di ba? yung pagnanakaw ng mga halaman no yung tinatawag nilang plant napper uh, bagong words na naman ito aside from plantito plantita so nagcreate ng bagong sin which is plant napper ninanakaw yung mga halaman okay para pagkakakitaan so sa maling paraan ang backyard gardening ay hindi ganyan dapat good value ang ating dapat ginagawa so ang basic requirements sa pagpapahatubo ng halaman ay araw No? Araw. So again, go back to creation. Nilikha ng Diyos ang araw dahil ito yung source ng buhay, yung araw. So lahat ay nangangailangan ng araw. Mapalag tayo sa ating tropical Philippines dahil alos uh, half of the day ay araw. No? Sa ibang bansa, alos one fourth lamang no? o konti ang araw. No? Sa kaya sila masayang sila, masaya sila pag nasikatan ng araw. Kaya pag pumupunta sila sa Pilipinas, talagang tuwan-tuwa sila kasi mayroon tayong maghapong araw. So, sunlight is a basic requirement for growth ng plants together with water. So, water is a universal solvent. Ang water is from the atmosphere pero galing din yan sa lupa. Again, go back to creation. Nakikita mo doon na na-create yung tubig. ba? Diba? So, sa inyong uh, science, tinuturo sa inyo yung hydrologic cycle, no? Kapag ka nag-evaporate ang water from the uh, ocean, from the uh, uh, terrestrial, so, pupunta sila sa alapaap at sila ay uh, nag-evaporate at makokondense, no? babagsak sila pag mabigat na as precipitation. So magiging water sila. At ang rainfall, sa, sa totoo lang, ay pataba. May nutrients yan siya. Huwag lamang rainfall or rain galing sa mga heavy polluted Uh, urban areas dahil meron na itong pollution, nagiging acidic yung uh, tubig ulan. Pero yung ulan galing sa mga forest, galing sa malinis na mga environment, maganda ang water nito dahil maganda ang nutrients nito. No? Yung ibang mga elements natin ay nasa alapaap, katulad ng nitrogen. No? So mataas ang nitrogen. Ang kailangan kasi ng halaman sa nutrient, pangatlong requirement, ay nitrogen, phosphorus at saka potassium. Ito yung macro, mal mga essential elements. Yung mga micro elements, yung mga maliliit na bahagdan lamang ang kailangan, katulad halimbawa ng manganese, ng mga copper, ng iron, mga ganyan, eh kailangan pero maliit lamang na bahagdan. No? So yung nitrogen, nasabi ko sa inyo kanina, nasa alapaap yun. No? Ang ibang mga halaman, ay, uh, they are capable no, of sequestering nitrogen. Yung mga kabote, no? pagka nag-lightning, katulad itong nakaraang mga tag-ulan, no? uh, kung pamilyar kayo sa mga kabote, no? yung mga uhong sa Bisaya, ay uh, nabubuhay sila dahil yung nitrogen ay uh, nafifix nila. Uh, pag nagkaroon ng lightning or rain, yung ibang elements ay uh, concentrated at nakaka-avail sila. No? So kung kaya 
nutrient ay mahalaga sa halaman. So, magandang pandilig ang tubig ulan, lalo't ito ay galing sa magandang source. Kaya sa paghalaman sa backyard, maganda rin tayong mayroong ipunan ng tubig. No? Mayroon tayong alulod sa ating bubong, pupunta sa ating uh, ipunan ng tubig, uh, pwedeng gamitin ito. Actually, pwede rin namang inumin. Dati naman talagang iniinom yan. No? Nagkaroon lang talaga tayo ng problema sa, as sa acid rain. No? Kung kaya't hindi na siya nagiging uh, masarap. Pero alam nyo, ako'y nan nanirahan sa Australia, ang mahal ng tubig ulan. Very special yung rainwater sa Australia. And that's It is a very special kind no, ng water source. So dito sa atin, pwede pa rin gawin yan. Eh, no? For as long as mayroon tayong forest. No? At ang lupa. So ang lupa ay dito nakatanim ang mga halaman. No? So apat, pero mahalaga yung caretaker. Sino yung caretaker? Tayo, kayo. No? Ang caretaker, yung mga galaga sa halaman. Ang mga galaga sa halaman, pagka alam nyo ang sinasabi din pag nag-aalaga tayo ng halaman, kailangan kakausapin nyo rin yung halaman. Why? Because when we speak, no, ito katulad tayo, nagsasarita ako ngayon, nag-give off ako, naglalabas ako ng carbon dioxide. So ang mga halaman, absorb nila yung carbon dioxide. No? Masaya sila pag marami ang carbon dioxide. Okay? Pero siyempre, pag polluted, pinifiltrate nila. Kaya lang, mayroon silang capacity hanggang may limit sila. No? Kung hanggang saan. Okay? Kaya mahalaga pag may halaman kasi talagang na-filter niya no, yung hangin. Okay, so yung caretaker dito, pag nagsalita, nag-give off siya ng CO2 at ang halaman matutuwa, mag-give off siya ng oxygen. So you now uh, inhale yung fresh air. Okay, so yun yung mga, mga kailangan sa pagpapatubo ng halaman. Kasama tayo doon, kasama ang tao bilang caretaker. Next slide is... Showing you the kinds of backyard or front or back or top or uh, anywhere gardens. No? So uh, on the first slide is a vegetable uh, herb garden. So ito namang uh, green na nakalagay sa lupa ay purus mga herbaceous, no? yung mga succulent, yung mga uh, pwedeng medicinal at saka vegetable. Yan ang halimbawa ng backyard. So kung may maliit kayong espasyo sa likod, sa harap, sa side, if you can have this kind, no? so, diretso sa lupa. No? That's your vegetable garden. Yung susunod ay mga bulaklak. No? That's your vegetable or flower beds. So, ito naman kung uh, minsan nakalagay naman sa mga paso. No? Sa kung maliit ang space natin, pwedeng nakapaso. Pero yung mga halaman kasi ay kailangan ng light. Mayroong full light, mayroong partial light, na portion lamang ang kailangan at mayroong some period. So sa gabi pwedeng hindi. So sa araw kailangan ilabas pero hindi naman palagi. No mayroong mga panahon na pwede mo naman dalin sa loob. Kaya pwede tayong mag-indoor plant, no? Meron din tayong garden sa loob ng bahay. So ito mga ipinapakita ko sa inyo ay sa labas. Yung next ay containerized garden. So mga nasa lalagyan. Kanina ipinakita klasik-klasing lalagyan ang mga uh, pwedeng uh, pagtaniman, you know? Sabi niya nga doon yung sako, nakahiga, nakalatag, nakabitin, nakadikit sa dingding, ang daming mga ano, ano daming mga paraan. Mayroon pang binanggit, arenola, so lahat na lamang. Those are container uh, form na pwede niyong paglagyan. Or elevated, no? your raised garden. So pwedeng naka-layer-layer no? for as long as kaya siya. Kaya mapapansin niyo sa urban areas, nasa wall, no? Actually, mayroong magandang architectural design ngayon. No? Yung architecture guard, architecturally designed building. No? Nasa wall, nasa rooftop, nasa bintana. Ano, talagang kung pwede nga ang ating katawan, eh, lagyan na din ng mga halaman, eh, siguro gagawin na din natin. Ano? Okay, so yun yung uh, uh, design, yun yung system, yun yung architecture. Ang next slides ay the... Uh, mga disenyo naman no, sa landscaping. So, pwedeng rock garden, pwedeng nasa water garden, pwedeng nasa uh, landscape. Ito ay isang halimbawa ng Japanese garden. So, pwede kayong yung bahay kubo garden. Uh, pwede nyong i-name after you. I have my Nelson's garden, mayroong uh, Mark's garden, JM's garden, uh, and so on and so forth. No? Uh, Ati Maya's garden. Uh, marami. Ano? So, pwede mayroong demonstration garden. So, yan ang iba't ibang klaseng garden. So, 
kung napo-provide natin yung uh, mahalang halagang requirement, mayroon tayong espasyo, uh, mayroon tayong will, mayroon tayong gusto na gagawin, mayroon tayong uh, mga materials, ay makakagawa tayo nito ng uh, ating uh, garden. Ano nga ba mga benefits nito? Kanina, nabanggit na no? sa uh, video, may mga benefits doon. No? Yung magagandang bulaklak, mayroong aesthetic value ito. No? So, uh, nakakapag-landscape ka. In fact, ano to? Income ito. No? Yung mga plantito-plantita, nagbebenta yan, o oh, earning yan, kita yan. Uh, so, meron ka pang... Uh, Uh, mga halamang pangbahay, meron ka pang gulay. No? At presko pa. Malinis pa. Okay? And when you do this, no, you beautify your background, your 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 palibot uh, ng bahay, your inside house, uh, you also reduce pollution. Remember, sabi natin kanina, ang uh, halaman ay mayroong hingahan. Mayroon siyang stomates. No? Sa stomates niya, pag yun ay bukas, pwede niyang i-absorb yung pollution. At pwede niyang ilabas yung fresh air. So, pwede niyang i-filter off. At na pagka kayo ay magsusuri ng halaman, you put that under the microscope and you'll notice that there are hairs on the surface of the leaf. Now, there are uh, leaves that are smooth, that are uh, with texture, na maraming mga buhok. May mga functions yung mga yun, no Yung iba can protect against harm. Yung iba naman can uh, keep uh, within your moisture. Uh, yung iba tumutulong para ma-filter no, yung mga hangin. So, again, you go back yung creation. So, that's how perfect creation is. That's how perfect God in creating everything. No? So, lahat ay may purpose. No? Parang ang purpose-driven life. So, lahat ay mayroong purpose. Kasama na din dito sa benefits ng gardening, na pwede mong ma-reduce yung pesticides, pwede mong ma-reduce yung fertilizers, no? pwede mong ma-reduce yung chemicals, in other words. Kasi sabi kanina doon sa video, ikaw nila ang gagawa ng sarili mong compost. No? May lupa ka lamang, meron kang mga konting espasyo, lalagyanan, meron kang mga naipong bagay-bagay pag ikaw ay naglilinis uh, na bahay, halimbawa ay pagkakain, yung mga kinainan, no? yung mga natirang uh, dahon, saging, at mga kung ano-ano pang mga part na yun na itatapon mo na as compost, isama mo lamang ito doon sa lupa at uh, bigyan ng uh, uh, mga microbes. Minsan, lalagay mga vermicular, yung mga, vermi, mga uhod or uh, earthworms. Uh, hayaan doon mag, uh, mag-decompose. No? Uh, pagtagal, after uh, some days or few weeks perhaps, eh meron ka ng compose. Ano? So may mga proseso din yon, And that will be another topic siguro ng, uh, ng uwis ka. But at this point, makita nyo sa slides na ang benefits ng gardening ay tumutulong tayo para ma-reduce yung pag-use ng mga chemicals. At ang iba pang benefits, of course, you, you learn, you now have the opportunity to learn. You uh, have a quality time no, with your family kasi pwedeng bonding na rin yun. Eh. Pag nagtatanim kayo, bonding na din. No? Yung mga plantito-plantita sa while they're do- doing such. So, sama, sana kasama kayong mga kids. And then, it's part of your bonding. So, there are many benefits. You know? In other words, amidst this lockdown, so, mayroon tayong pinagkakabalahan. So, ma-reduce yung stress. Ma-reduce yung anxiety. No? So, ibig sabihin, na-exercise ka pa. At ang iyong kapagkain ay galing pa sa malinis, malusog, uh, masarap, uh, readily available. Hindi ka nalalabas, hindi ka pa ma-expose. You know? So, kung meron kang mga uh, bahay kubo na gulayin, you know? kantahin nyo lang yung bahay kubo, alam nyo na kung ano yung mga dapat nyo itatanim. Samahan nyo pa ng mga uh, halamang uh, pang uh, garden. Okay? And that is the benefits of uh, the garden. Next slide, we now proceed to explaining to you the arts and science. No? So, yung mga pamamaraan kaninang nabanggit ay actually science na yun, no? Yung mga requirements, yung nutrients, yung light, yung water, yung soil, these are all science, no? Yung pamamaraan ng paglalagay para mas maging maaliw, maganda sa paningin, yun ang art, no? Yung paggamit ng mga bagay-bagay, ng mga iba't ibang mga pamamaraan, ng mga Basta na lamang patapuna pero ginawa pa ng paraan na nagagamit pa siya 
ay transforming those no those unusable to usable using art no? but you use science you use uh, objectively the practice of knowledge about these materials around us combining them all together in a garden so that we have a favorable environment so on the slides on the right is a very beautiful landscape you know yung uh, ano ba yan ano bang kulay ito pula ba o maroon and ba? parang uh, blind color ako ang tingin ko ay pula o parang uh, matinding pagkapula uh, violet ba yan ako baka mali ako tatawanan ako ng mga bet hindi ko ma-distinguish ngayon yung color ay uh, nasa sentro di ba uh, yung kulay na yung makulay tapos mayroong iba't ibang mga shapes mayroong rectangular mayroong circular mayroong parallel no iba't ibang mga shapes these are all arts no so you can form this kind sa inyong wall kung kakayanin ano kasi depende sa mga spaces ninyo no siguro sa Mindanao kaya eh kasi malawak pa eh and then sa Northern Luzon pero sa Metropolitan Manila talagang you will be challenged no you will you should be creative at this point kung paano mo gagamitin yung principles and techniques of plant cultivation so dito sa pinapakitang ito, hindi lamang ito mga uh, halamang pang-decorate, but rather mga gulayin ang iba dito. No? May mga talbos ng kamote at uh, mayroon pa ditong uh, mga alugbate. No? Mayroon ditong uh, ay presyo, mayroon ditong mga pechay, mustasa, and so on. So, you can manage. No? You can uh, design. No? Hindi lang ganitong circular. No? But rather showing you yung mga iba't ibang mga shapes. You can also form numbers, no? Pwedeng mga numbers 1 2 3 4 as sa loob nito, doon mo ilagay mga halaman mo, no? Pwedeng caricature ng mga favorite smileys ninyo, no? Uh, you can be creative as much as you like for as long as mayroong balance, no? And that will be the art and science. Okay. This time, ano ba ang magiging role ng kids? Uh, next slides. I role ng kids. Tingnan natin, no? Ano ba dapat ang role ng kids, no? Ang role ninyo dito nakalagay is to learn, to act and enjoy. At your age, no, dapat talaga laro-laro ganun eh. Laro taba, di ba? Uh, uh, paglalaro, no? Um, uh, pero dapat mo nang simulan sa learning, no? Dapat mag-aaral kayo ng husay. Dapat naghahanda kayo para sa inyong October 5 start ng classes. And sa gardening, marami na kayong mapapag-aralan. No? Sa kanina, tinuro natin paano mabuhay ang halaman. Uh, so plant has to grow, develop, survive, and reproduce. No? But uh, yung life cycle ng halaman, of course, may end yun. No? Ang buhay ng organisms, ang uh, life cycle nila mayroon ding maturity mayroon ding maturation and senescence no yung uh, ibig sabihin ay maaagnas din no mag manlalaglag din ang dahon at pag nalaglag balik sa lupa become nutrients and will be absorbed by plants and go back so that the particular plant will cycle so sa pagga-gardening you will learn many things no by reading uh surfing net and um, um uh, absorbing information from the internet no? and then practicing it in your garden no? from your study. You can also discover when you're growing your plants. No? Mapapansin ninyo, lumalaki yung halaman. Mapapansin ninyo na ang mga dahon nga, as I've said, nalalaglag. Tapos after a while, ay, uh, ang halaman, pag kinausap nyo, eh, sumisigla. No? Uh, nagbibigay siya ng mga iba't ibang mga parts, uh, iba't ibang mga colors, iba't ibang mga shapes. And uh, if you want to discover more, no mapapansin niyo kuha kayo ng kaputol na dahon lagay niyo sa slides lagay niyo sa microscope lalo na sa school kung nasa school kayo or mayroon kayong mga microscopic uh, ano diyan um, 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 instrument no mapapansin niyo at uh, ma-discover niyo no yung uh, creations no ng ating creator na nakakamangha kahit yung lupa no tingnan niyo yung mic sa microscope mamamangha kayo sa dami ng mga organisms na noon and later on, no, while you learn, you will invent. No, invent kayo ng bagay na, ah, pwede pala dito magtanim. Pwede pala siyang nakatagilid. Pwede pala siyang nakatayo. Pwede pala siyang nakabitin. No? Kasi ang mga 
plants, mayroon ding mga aerial plants, no? Like yung mga orchids, no? Na nabubuhay sila sa hangin lamang. Dahil sa hangin may moisture. May light, may moisture. So ang kanilang tinatamnan, ang kanilang um, base ay ang hangin, no? So therefore, yung role ninyo as a kid is to study, to discover and invent, no? While learning. Okay, next is act, no? When you act, you have your actions. No? Mayroon kayong pagkilos. So, of course, pag nandun kayo sa garden, you help your parents. You, have, you help your brother, your sisters, your father, your mother, your, your probably your grandmother, your grandparents. No? You help them in tending your plants, no? in growing, just like the kids here as shown. No? So, uh, he is, uh, in her, he, she is smiling no? uh, with the... Uh, uh spades uh spork and uh you know toy you know so she's acting in front uh, while enjoying no um and she's cooperating because probably she's being instructed and uh she's already practicing dahil meron siya doon throw well no uh, nagpa-practice na siya ng mga itinuro niya so ganito dapat ang mga kids no at your level 5 to 10 actually uh grade 5 to 10 that's before your high school Ibang level na ito, di ba? I mean, in terms of uh, of knowledge as compared sa kinder hanggang grade uh, 5. No? Ibang level ang uh, kayo. No? So, uh, medyo higher for them then. So, that means yung actions nyo, yung helping, yung cooperation, at yung practicing nitong mga science and art ay iba na, na, ibang level na. So, that should be the role of the kids. And lastly, dapat nag enjoy Sa panahon ngayong pandemic, kailangan nating uh, may panahon tayo to smile, to laugh, no, to joke. Uh, kaya nga sa Ecclesiastes, sabi doon, there's a time for everything. So, uh, ngayon ay panahon ng pandemic. So, panahon na tayo ay uh, nag-aalaga ng ating katawan, inaalagaan natin yung mga magulang natin, uh, nag-gardening tayo, panahon na tayo yung nagbabinding all together, um, so panahon ito ng ating uh, ding pagpapa pagkakapwa, uh, pagmamalasakit sa kapwa, pagtulong sa ating gobyerno, sa ating pamahalaan, panahon ng pagmamahalan, panahon na tayo ay natututong magdasal, panahon na tayo ay lalo sa inyong kabataan, no? Uh, laging ready. So kaya dapat nag enjoy no? So sa sa kid, no? Dapat uh, we when we enjoy, of course, we have to pray first. No? So, pagkagising sa umaga o bago maturo ng gabi, dapat matuto tayong magdasal para tayo ma-enjoy natin yung buhay. Ma-enjoy natin yung family. Okay? At uh, uh, para ma-enjoy natin yon, yon, kailangan natin mag magtanim bago tayo maglaro, bago tayo mag-play. So, we pray, we plant, and we play. No? So, yun yung role ng kids to enjoy life. So, we learn, we act, we enjoy. We learn to study, we learn to discover, we learn to invent, we act in helping, we act in cooperating, we act in practicing good morals, in practicing uh, uh, good uh, values. We enjoy to pray, we should enjoy to plant and make our own garden, and we enjoy play, playing no? as a kid. You enjoy playing as a kid. So that's the role of the kids. Okay? And uh, uh, that's it, mga kids. Uh, in 26 minutes, I hope I was able to relay information for you. Uh, maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig. Uh, sana hindi kayo natulog. Hindi ko kayo nakikita. Kaya hindi ko alam kung kayo nakikinig o kung kayo tulog. O I don't know. Sana naman ay hindi. Sa aking uh, panahon na ibinigay ng Uiska, ako ay uh, nagpapasalamat dahil nagkaroon ulit ako ng chance. Ano? Uh, sa totoo lang, ang hirap din namin dahil kami naghahanda, nakahanda at nagaayos ng aming mga learning materials para sa aming mga college at graduate students ngayon. So, magandang hapon. Maraming salamat, mga kabataan. Ang pag-asa ng bayan. Hello, Mark. Ayan, salamat. Maraming maraming salamat po, Dr. Nelson Pampolina. Hindi lang po ang ating mga estudyante ang natuto. Kami rin po mga teachers, mga coordinators ng OWISCA ay may natulot mula sa ating resource speaker ngayong hapon na to. Siyempre, ito si Sir Nelson ang nagbabahagi po sa OWISCA. 
yung mga bago tayong mga nalalaman na tututunan mula po sa kanya. So, once again, pigyan po natin si Sir Nelson ng virtual clap. Honestly, Sir Nelson, dati nung uh, uh, normal pa yung wala pang pandemic, yung wala pa pong COVID-19, wala rin akong hilig sa, ano, yung sa mga urban gardening, yung nagtatanim sa mga sa school. Pero yung sa bahay, pasok, punta sa school, and then, yun lang po yung parang routine. Pero itong yeah. nagkaroon na ng COVID-19, isa pala sa nakakatulong para mawala yung stress na kayo pagkabagot sa bahay yung pag-aalaga ng halaman. Kaya ako rin po ay isa na rin certified plantito. Yes. <laughs> Nakakabuhay na pala ako ng halaman maski yung kumpulmom na ano mga mga dahon-dahon dito pag pinag-iwahiwalay mo nabubuhay pala basta alagaan mo lang. At natutunan ko rin sa first webinar series natin mamapit na kailangan kapag natatanim tayo kakausapin natin yung mga halaman. Hindi lang basta diligan, hindi lang paarawan, kausapin din sila kasi talagang mas lalo silang uh, umuusbong, mas lalo silang yumayabo. Diba po? <laughs> Yan. So, ngayon mga mabit, hihingin na natin ang mga katanungan ng ating mga estudyante, ang ating mga participants mula sa Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Kung meron po tayong katanungan, Okay, Dr. Nelson Pampulina, pwede po natin i-chat or pwede po natin isulat or i-type doon sa ating comment box yung ating mga questions. At bibigyan po namin kayo ng 30 seconds para uh, mag-type po ng ating mga sagot. Ay mga tanong pala, sagot agad. <laughs> uh, Mark, habang hinihintay natin ang kalang mga katanungan, gusto ko magpasalamat na uh, nakalagay doon sa mga references ang pinagkuhan namin ng information. Una, of course, kay JM, my co-author. Siya yung ah. naghanda ng mga slides. <laughs> Oo. Alam mo yan, ay estudyante ko, pero teacher ko na siya ngayon. Siya ang nagturo sa akin yes. kung papa ako, no? Kung mag-connect sa inyo. <laughs> uh, teacher na rin si JM. And of course, uh, uh, ang pagpapasalamat ko sa Wiska, Tro, Kina, Ati Mabet, maraming maraming salamat sa opportunity na binibigay nyo na ako ay nakakapagbahagi, lalo na sa mga kabataan. Yes, sir. Maraming maraming salamat po talaga sa iyong pong malaking hambag. Hindi lamang po sa organisasyon, kundi po sa kasama natin na tinutuyong na matuto ang ating pong community para po sa kalikasan. At salamat din kay Mark sa kanyang pag-mamanage uh, nitong ating webinar. Palakpakan natin si Mark. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, meron po tayong mga katanungan. Sige po, Ma'am Ate. Katanungan, basahin po natin ang ilang mga mensahe para po kay Sir Nelson. Galing po kay Ma'am Bill. Pwede, Sir Nelson, bakit po kaya natutuyo ang mga tanim kong cherry tomatoes? Ano po okay. pala ito? Nasa harapan po siya ng aking bahay. Nakatanim po sa bottle ng mineral water. Alright, okay. Uh, nabanggit ko kanina ano yung mga kailangan, di ba? Sunlight, soil, water, nutrient, at ang mahalaga yung caretaker, di ba? So, tingnan mo yung mga components na yon. Alin kaya doon yung kulang? Ano? Baka kulang ang tubig o baka sobra? Baka naman sobra ang uh, araw kaya natutuyuan. Okay? Baka naman ang pagdidilig ay hindi tama sa panahon. O baka naman yung nutrient, yung pagkain sa lupa, ay hindi enough, hindi sustained. O baka yung lupa na inilagay ay hindi maganda. And, almost, uh, and uh, above all, ay yung pag sabi nga ni Mark kanina, kinakausap niya na pala ang halaman niya. So, paano mo tinitend? Anong tending, uh, ang, uh, anong smiley face mo sa halaman mo? Parang ganon. Uh, so, tingnan mo yung mga components na yon para mo maintindihan. Ano? Kasi, You yourself should also discover. You yourself should also uh, invent, ano? Uh, while learning, while reading. Of course, kaming mga expert ko, no? Uh, kasi hindi naman talaga ako fully expert, so kailangan din. Kasi on process pa rin yung learning, ano? Tuloy-tuloy yung pag-aaral. Ay, uh, kayo din, uh, on your own sa experience, ay uh, matututunan nyo yun, no? So, 
ang sagot ko doon, baka posible na somewhere yung mga uh, part na yon ay uh, hindi enough. No? Uh, if we want to go on detail, on to dig deeper, isa ring bahagi dito ay yung gene, yung genetics. Baka yung ating ginamit na binhi ay hindi suitable doon sa ating pinagtamnan. No? So, posible na yung genetic material noon ay hindi capable no, of, of growing. Kasi mayroon din kasing mga lugar kung saan sila favorable na tutubo. Okay? So, tingnan mo din yun. Uh, baka yun ang possible. I hope yes, na-answer po. ko yung sagot. Yes po. Yan po. Mayroon din po tayong katanungan. Salamat po. Salamat po, Dr. Nelson. Uh, may mga tanim ako na sitaw at sili. Madaming langgam, sir. Ano ang pwedeng spray sa kanila para mawala ang langgam po? Ngayon daw po. Madami daw pong tanim si Ma'am Irene na sitaw at sili. Kaya lang po maraming langgam. Ano pong pwedeng spray para mawala po yung langgam? Okay. Magandang katanungan yan. Ano? Kasi sa dami din na napupunta akong gardens, uh, ako, I grew up in Mindanao, ganyan din aking mga ginagawa sa farm. And I encounter ko rin yan. Ano? Uh, by nature, dapat... Uh, ang ating uh, ecosystem mahalaga na na-diversify. Kaya lang artificial na yung ating system, yung ating backyard, no? Marami ng disturbance. Therefore, yung mga ibang uh, life forms like ants, no, naghahanap din sila ng pagkain nila kasi na-disturb na sila, supposedly na sa forest sila eh. So, hanap din sila ng pagkain. So, ang napuntahan nila yung lugar mo, lugar nyo, no? And uh, yung ganitong presence nila ay minsan ang lalo na pagka large scale yung itatanim mo nagre-resort sa paggamit ng pesticides no? nagre-resort sa paggamit ng uh, mga chemicals at times yung mga binhi din natin masyado nagdi-demand ng mga imported materials no yun yung nagiging problem natin kaya dapat gamitin natin din yung ating natutunan sa, sa science no yung ating nature i-mimic natin yung nature so as much as possible yung pinagtamnan mo hangga't maari ay uh, namimimik mo yung forest na kung saan mayroon kang mga halaman din sa palibot at dinadiversify mo yung iyong cropping. Hindi siya monoculture, hindi puro sitaw, hindi puro, uh, dapat mayroon kang barrier in Akika nga. So ibig sabihin, in between your uh, ano your uh, sitaw, mayroon kang balag, dapat may tanim ka pang iba para yung mga insekto or ants ay nalilito sila or lilituhin mo rin sila bago sila magpalipat-lipat, no? pupunta sila sa halaman, hindi naman laki na kain. So, ibig sabihin, nagkakaroon ng barrier. Uh, in some practice, what they're doing uh, from their garden uh, with their house, yung mga waste, halimbawa, yung pinaglabhan o yung pinagsabunan, uh, tapos meron kang sili, uh, ginagawa nila, ini-spray yun. So, it works somehow. Kasi, alam naman natin, post-page yung, ano, yung uh, sabon. No? Mayroon siyang property na nakakasira din sa ibang life forms uh, at ang sili no mayroon itong uh, uh, init ano so itong mga ingredients na to can be one way no can be one way so you can practice uh, diversification ng crops and you can spray this kind of uh, ano uh, uh, materials no uh, kung halimbawa ang gagamit ka siguro ng mga chemicals na nabibili uh, maging masusi ka lang sa titingnan mo. Tingnan mo kung ano yung mga chemicals na nandoon. Kasi may mga chemicals kasi doon sa mga uh, ingredients niya at times na dangerous sa health. No? Halimbawa, mayroong mga uh, chemicals na heavy metals. No? May baka may mercury. So, hindi natin alam kasi. Eh, kasi may mga, uh, lalo na yung mga galing sa ibang bansa na uh, mataas yung mercury. Kasi yung mga heavy metals na tinatawag, ay pinapanatili na yung chemicals doon sa sa solution kaya nandoon sila para ma-retain ng matagal. Ang problema, delikado sa health. So, kung gagamit ka man noon, be careful, be watchful and uh, just read the ingredients kasi baka mayroong ganon. Ano? So, yun yung aking payo, tatlong payo sa iyo. Yan, thank you sir. Meron pa po ba tayong mga questions? Yan. Ayan, mamabit, parang wala na. Okay na po ang ating mga participants, ang ating mga 
uh, teachers at mga students na kasama natin sa ating episode 4. Okay. Ako sana Mark magtatanong. Ay, ay meron pa po ito po. Magkakaroon pa po ba ng Uwista Third National Webinar? Gusto ko po sanang mangyari, magyaya ng mas madaming pupils na mag-participate po mula sa aming school. Sige sir, a-update namin si Sir Robert, si Ma'am Ana, si Ma'am Melanie at si Sir Marvin. Mula yes, po yan ma'am sa ano sa Delphine Heraldes ah, uh, Elementary School. Oo po. Okay. So tutukan po natin, tutukan po ang YouTube channel ng Uwiska Philippines. Subscribe like at uh, ating po mga pages para po tayo manatili po well informed. At um, pag si Sir Nelson po available, ay sigurado po tayo magkakamera ng third webinar series with Sir Nelson. Sir? Yes, I, I will be always available for OISCA and for the kids yes, and for the teachers. Salamat, salamat po. Ayan, Ma'am Mabit, siguro po ibibigay na natin ang ating Certificate of Recognition kay Dr. Uh, Nelson Pampolina. Yes, sir. Ayan. Let me read the content of the certificate. Organization for Industrial, Spiritual, and Cultural Advancement International, WISCA Philippines Children's Forest Program presents the certificate of recognition to Nelson M. Pampulina in recognition for his undoubted support and precious time rendered as resource person in the 2020 WISCA Children's Forest Program second book. National Webinar Series, Nurturing Good Moral Values Among the Children, An Approach to New Normal. Episode 4, Improving the Art and Science of Backyard Gardening with Kids, on September 23, 2020. Issued on September 23, 2020 at Quezon City, Metro Manila, Philippines. Sign to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Nelson. Thank you, Mark. Or bago po tayo sa pag-backlash ay ating pong uh, bigyan din ng certificate of recognition ng mga nasa likod po kung bakit naging successful po ang ating mga pa-webinar. Certificate of recognition to Sir John Alvin K. In recognition to <laughs> technical support in the 2020 Uwiska Children's Forest Program Second National Webinar Series, Nurturing Good Moral Values Among the Children, An Approach to New Normal. On September 23, 2020, issued on September 23, 2020, at Quezon City, Metro Manila, Philippines. Signed by the President of the Philippines, Mr. Jetsi Rojas, and the Secretary General of the International, Mr. Fumio Kitsuki. Sir, salamat po at malakas po ang loob ng mga Okay, sir. To Mark Anthony Rubio Piralta in recognition for his undoubted support in precious time record as a webinar facilitator in the 2020 WISCA Children's Forest Program Second National Webinar Series, Nurturing Good Moral Values Among the Children and Approach to New Normal in the on September 23, 2020, issued on September 29, 2020, at Quezon City, Metro Manila, Philippines. Signed by the President of the Philippines, Mr. Ted Zero, and Mr. Director of the International, Mr. Fumigo Kisaki. 
Thank you, Mama Bet. Pakita po natin sa inyo Nelson at mga participants kung paano po gumawa ng paraan ang sabi nga po kung gusto ay lang ay may paraan. So uh, we really appreciate yung po, uh, kanila pamamaraan para po makinsa sa ating gawain ngayon upang marinig po ang ating mga mga magagaling na speakers. So pakita po natin ang kanilang mga na pamamaraan kung paano po sila nagkaroon ng uh, signal. gumawa ng paraan ng ating po mga kabataan para lang po tayo marating at magkasamasama. And uh, for announcement, bago po tayo mag-close, unahan ko na po, uh, pinapaalalahanan po namin ang ating po mga uh, ang ating po mga sasali po sa ating po poster making contest na ating po deadline ng October 15th 2020, so ito po ating uh, finalist for province, ipagalawa po kada kategorya. Category by age bracket, from 7 to 9 years old, uh, category 1, category 2, 10 to 12 years old, and category 3, from 13 to 15 years old. So sana po ay nakapagsimula na ang ating po mga, mga kabataan na interesado po ipakita ang kanila po kagalingan ng pagdinig nilang creative when it comes to art. Kasi po pakita nila po iyon. So, yung po ulit, palalo po October 15, ang hanggang October 15 po ang pagtanggap ng Western Manila Office sa inyo pong mga entry. Maraming salamat po. And finally, let's hear the closing remarks of our overall chair for this webinar series, Ma'am Maribet and Rebota. Ma'am Maribet? So, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to give all our, all our teachers, school children, resource speakers, and the WISA coordinators as a group. Congratulations for I believe that all of you have done well on the 2020 Pista Children's Forest Program Second National Webinar Series. It is my great pleasure that we had a fruitful communication of knowledge, though I think one day it's not enough to fully understand our theme, which is entitled Nurturing Good Moral Values Among the Children, an approach to new normal. Relevant topics related to the theme were presented by our knowledgeable and energetic speakers. So again, thank you po, salamat po, Sir Roger, Ma'am Rosalinda, Ma'am Michelle, and Sir Nelson. 
I observed the excellent presentations and the participation of our audience through the comment section. So I can conclude that the objectives of the webinar have been completely accomplished. In addition, your positive feedback revealed that we are ready to accomplish more. I hope that the lessons that you learned through our webinar series will help you a lot in your duties as learners, educators, community development workers, and as a parent can somehow guide us in the new normal. The interests of our learners or children are of paramount importance. Values that truly matter to us. They are what motivate our behavior. They ground our judgments about what is good or bad, desirable or undesirable. I would like to add a virtue that our former president, Dr. Yoshiko Nakano, a Japanese national who passed away last September 11, who empowered us the value of self-reliance. Self-reliance is the ability to depend on yourself to get things done and to meet your own needs. I'd like to introduce an exercise from Humboldt State University toward their lawyers and children, the personal mission statements. Ask a young person to think about who they are, what they represent, what they want to accomplish, and why. They encourage self-reliance by inviting the right to look inside themselves and seek their own values and beliefs. Then try to tell someone the following words taken from the BASC-3, Reynolds and Campos 2015-19. I am someone you can rely on. I can solve difficult problems by myself. If I have a problem, I can usually work it out. Others ask me to help them. I am dependable. My friends come to me for help. I am good at making decisions and I am reliable. For the participants who are new to our organization, I sincerely hope that you will continue to join in our future activities. Let us continue to cultivate the foundation of harmony with nature and ourselves in the hearts of our dear children and students. Finally, on behalf of the Wisconsin International, Wisconsin International Philippines Chapter and the WISCA Technical Trainees Alumni Association Philippines, I would like to express my deep respect and appreciation to all the participants for your positive participation and taking time out of your busy duties to attend the webinar series and to all our great resource speakers who shared information and experts' opinion. I would like to close my remarks and officially announce the end of the webinar, wishing the future prosperity of all the participants and resource speakers, and let us act and continue to act to nurture first ourselves and our families, our communities, our health and environment. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Congratulations! Yeah, maraming maraming salamat din po, Ma'am Abe. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Sa ating pong mga participants, meron po tayong ipa-flash na link para po na, para po matanggap natin ang ating mga digital certificate. Yes, sir. Sa mga nag-register po, wag po tayong uh, makakalimot mag-evaluate i Ipa-flash po at explain po ni Mama Bet, Mama Bet. Okay. So, ipa-flash po. Andito na po sa... Uh, andito po sa ating screen. So, we are now flash... Uh, it is already flash on the screen. The evaluation for me. So, andito po yon At pag inyo pong nakompleto na, nandun po sa dulo ng evaluation form, ang link po... Sa uh, email? I-email po. I-email po ang... Um, uh, kapag nakompleto po yung evaluation form at kapag yung email address ay amin pong i-email ang lahat po ng mga materials, powerpoint presentations galing po sa ating mga resource persons so, masaya po sila na ipamahagi ang kanilang pong mga 
materyales sa kanilang PowerPoint presentations para po marami po tayo maka, marami po matutunan. Marami sila. So, Mark? Yan. So, wag natin kung kakalimutan na screenshot yung ating uh, link na gagamitin po for evaluation po natin. At mamabit hanggang kailan po ang deadline ng pag, uh, pag-submit po ng evaluation form. September 25 okay. on Friday. So, patanggapin po namin ang uh, evaluation form, completed evaluation form. Maraming salamat All right. po. So, extended hanggang September 25 po ang ating evaluation form. So, sa mga nakinig ng mga participants natin, ang ating mga estudyante at mga teachers para po matanggap natin ng ating digital certificate, ay kindly uh, submit the evaluation form po sa nakaplash po na link na nakikita po natin sa ating screen. So, maraming maraming salamat po muli sa ating Ubisca family sa pag-conduct ng ganitong uh, national webinar series. Ayan. Salamat din kay Kuya JM. Ayan. At syempre, si Ma'am Mabit, bigyan naman po natin siya ng virtual clap. Maraming maraming salamat. At ang sabi nga po natin, hashtag, walang iwanan, we will beat this Wal together. Yes, hashtag. <laughs> Ayan. Sa lahat po ng mga nanalo, ipa-flash na lang po sa ating uh, official Facebook account at sa ating uh, Uwiska Manila Facebook. Yung mga winners po natin, nagkocontakin po tayo ng staff ng Uwiska uh, Office po. So muli po, maraming maraming salamat sa lahat ng mga teachers at mga estudyante natin na kasama natin mula 8.30 ng umaga hanggang ngayon pong hapon na ito. Maraming maraming salamat po mula sa Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Arigato! Gusaymas! Arigato! Gusaymas!